can't kill Michael Myers. It's impossible. This is what happens when you work to change things. You're being a little bitch. What do you fucking want from me? Get off my dick! You know, if you don't understand the situation, it's better sometimes not to speak and just be proven a complete imbecile in the matter. <laughs> okay, so... And the irony is... I think you a bitch. You want even if they keep their mouths shut, or if they open them... Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? Or are you, are you saying... It, what are you saying? Huh? They're proven complete imbeciles anyway. Right? I don't know. I don't. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, early. Hope everybody's awake. I know I'm not. <laughs> so I'm going to be trying to change that as we go along here. Um, this afternoon. Boy, it's been a while since we've done one this early. Anyway. Um enough enough bs um now it's time for this bs check it out good morning off from boston let's kick it off hey uh let's talk about this thing that's going on right now with ape uh this is a video showing that ape is still trading all right um <clears throat> um well no it's not no 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 it's not but uh okay whatever start from the beginning so i can give you guys a good understanding of how oh great what, let's uh, let's start at the beginning perfect so perfect release to the public on august of 2022 and uh august 2025 of the following year 2023 uh it was converted in, uh, into common stock and it was delisted right that means uh for retail institutional traders you cannot trade amc8 on in you know on like the primary exchanges right it was no, that means that you can't trade it anywhere because it literally does not exist anymore. It literally does not exist. You can't even pull up you can't even pull up the historical chart for it on something like Trading View. Not there no more. It's not here anymore. It no longer exists. But, however, however, what did they find? They found something. Oh boy. Delisted. Um, but the ticker was not. And this videographic evidence is more or less. Huh? What? The ticker was not. Okay. All right. Um, sure. Telling us that it still trades on American and European OTC markets. So delisting kind of refers to the removal of a stock from the, you know, primary exchanges, right? Um, but that doesn't mean it's done trading. What the fuck are you talking about, Al? You have no fucking clue what you're talking about. Yeah, it is delisted from the primary exchanges. Doesn't mean it can't throw. You are a fucking brain dead fucking moron. Okay? You're fucking brain dead. You have no motherfucking clue. And I am so fucking sick. So fucking sick and tired of hearing this fucking goon, this LARP, this fucking piece of shit sit here, view a fucking screenshot for two seconds without even looking at all of it. Oh, I'm yeah, we're going to look. He didn't, he didn't even fucking read this screenshot. This is one of the most egregious displays of brain dead dumbass fucking logic that we've seen in the last three fucking years. Just just wait. I know you guys have probably already seen it. <laughs> these trades, uh, these, uh, these securities, both Ape and AMC, they traded in parity. Right? So they're still connected um, to, to the uh, underlying security, which is Ape. Uh, I'm sorry, AMC Common. Um, and He can't even get the fucking background right. No, they didn't fucking trade in parity, you fucking dumbass. They did not trade in parity. <laughs> and there's not, and no, it's not still tied to Ape, I mean AMC. They can't even get fucking words straight. This is what happens when you talk out of your ass off the top. This is what happens when you talk off the top of your head and simultaneously out of your asshole. 
which for this fucking cocksucker are the same fucking location. Market facilitate buying and trading, buying and selling of their own inventories, right? Um, and if they hold a ton of AM, it's the same fucking thing on the regular exchanges. You dumb fuck. Yes, Citadel has an inventory. Citibank has an inventory. Everybody has a fucking inventory. Brokers have inventories. Your ape, they can still trade ape and decline the value or diminish the value nope. of AMC. Nope. Um, the underlying security. AMC and ape were never connected. They were never connected by any connecting <laughs> uh, link. The only reason that they were quote unquote trading in parity as he said <clears throat> was that the thinking was the market would value them equally because they were quote unquote the same security which I argued the whole time they're not the same security they're not the same security they'll never be the same price and they and it probably won't work out <laughs> the way that most people think it will and I know people made money on it on the arbitrage but you know it sure didn't go um, the way that everybody thought it would go let me just say that but anyway, um, but they were never linked. Like certain things are linked in the market. Like, um, I don't know, the, the futures are, uh, and the ETFs for the SPY, for example. Those are linked. If the futures go up, the SPY goes up. If the, if the SPY goes down, the futures go down. They're linked together. There's automatic trading, arbitrage trading that occurs to keep those things in parity. That's what it really means. So... That didn't exist here. I don't, I don't know if he's implying that it did. It sounds like he did because he's saying that you can affect the price of AMC by trading APE. Even now today, and I'm saying you couldn't even do that before because they were separate securities that were not linked in any way except they were both issued by the same issuer. That's the only link. Okay, I'm going to roll it back and then shut the fuck up and let this asshole dig his own grave here right um and if they hold a ton of amc or ape they can still trade ape and decline the value or diminish the value of amc um the underlying security that's usually how nope 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 now, we think this is happening in europe the impact is psychological right yes there is a price impact but there's a lot of it is psychological it creates fud they think people are selling and it has like this contagion effect um but what we do i'll tell you what creates the fud it's this motherfucker right here this is the fud this is the motherfucking fud and the the, the fact that he has the fucking gall the nerve the balls the fucking lack of insight to sit here and do this i mean <laughs> says it all it says it all folks continuing you know is it creating like a feedback loop that's affecting amc primary uh, amc stock in the oh a feedback market. loop yeah so right 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 you guys know about that due to manipulation or speculation in the otc right um that can be more or less perceived as a loss of confidence in amc overall value and that leads to sell-offs in the primary markets that's kind of how that works um, so these short sellers, why is he using the term primary markets? Do you not, I mean, this is all secondary. He has no clue. He doesn't even, he has no clue of the basic terminology. Al, you have no business doing this. You have no fucking business talking about this shit. You're a fucking clown. Market maker, um, and their portfolio managers, they're operating in both the primary and the OTC and we're supposed to react. Uh, and of course, it's buy and hold. That's the move. They don't understand the price movements, right? Um, but creating a feedback loop that can amplify the price movement. So a significant sell-off, right, say, in the delisted OTC, right? Uh, Manuel um, asks what happened to the Al and Jordan lawsuit. And um, a noisy Corax would be able to speak better to this. But I, the only thing I can say, because um, it's the only thing I know, well, the, recently we had a conversation about this and... Um, 
it seems that Al has asked for an extension, another extension. Um, he's already asked for one extension, which has not been granted by the court. I think that would take it to April, I think. So he's asking, he, he had already asked for an extension uh, to April, which is still outstanding, hasn't been granted by the court. In the meantime, though, as he's waiting for that <laughs> delay um, to be granted, he files for another extension uh, until June. So he has two, at least this is last I heard last week when I talked to Noisy Corax about it, because he's got the pacer. Um, he'll show up eventually here, I'm sure. Uh, and he can, you know, fill in a little bit more of these details. But basically, it seems like he's stalling. Al's stalling. That's what it seems like. trigger a sell-off in the primary markets as soon especially if they're seen as close substitutes the, thus causing the price to go down and it speak of the to buy and sell. devil <laughs> okay all right um you know we'll get the voice going here in just a little bit uh for anyone who wants to jump in um yeah me a couple minutes for the most part at the, at the preferred prices because it is otc and it's in a european market um so we're not gonna have that oh 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 it's otc and it's in a european market hmm. okay interesting all right Access to it. international otc yeah, i want you guys to be aware of that that's what that whole thing was about uh amc ape is still trading in foreign markets it's just what it is uh there's nothing anyone can really do about it because it's just the way it is um I think Fenra knows. I think the SEC knows. But they just choose. Come the fucking on, you fucking moron. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All fucking mighty. God damn it. Just what the fuck? Just how they're right. You know, it's just the way they are. Oh, it's just the way they are. Yeah, right. Like, just like yeah, you're an idiot. That's just the way you are. I I'm retarded. That's the way I am. You are fucking. You got to be fucking kidding me. This There's no way this could be real. I mean, obviously, the ape thing is not real. There's no way that this guy, Al, is for real. And I don't think it's a coincidence that his name, when you write it out, it looks like AI because of the lowercase l. And we've had discussions about this. This guy is fucking a computer simulation. There is nobody this fucking dumb. Okay, I, I realize there are people this dumb, but God damn, this is fucking stupid. That's all I'd say about that. Uh, I will say this much. That's all I have to say about that. Yeah, this is like Forrest Gump giving fucking stock advice in 2024. Go fuck yourself, Al, you fucking piece of shit. Uh, and, and going back to yesterday, we were supposed to do a live yesterday, and we needed a chance. Yeah, because <laughs> heavy on the A, not so much on the I. <laughs> maybe, maybe he, actually he's R-I, realistic ignorance. And everybody was working so we're going to try to get you guys alive uh very very soon oh good uh, i can't wait and what's happening here and uh, i think we brought up what happened yesterday with uh with 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 nope uh, don't even don't even fuck it don't even fucking say his goddamn fucking name i'm not ready for that fucking grifter yet okay anyway um yeah so this is fake this is completely false all this this is completely motherfucking fake and false well it's not even fake that's the thing. Sometimes we get these doctored screenshots. We get, um, I don't know, things that are cut off and that you can't see it. So it looks real. And so it's they're passing it off. This one is so blatant. It's so blatant. It's so egregious. It's so overt. It's so obvious. And you know, you know, I don't use that word. You know, I don't use that word. Obvious. But this is a clear 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 case of obvious ignorance and I and I say you know in when used in combination with that word ignorance uh, obvious is very very fitting here so um, yeah well that's what they say right that's what he says um, and um, let's see here
So, um, I'm going to pull this up here in just a moment. And it looks like Noisy Corax also made a video about it, uh, which I figured um, would be the case. Let me find that screenshot. Not the screenshot from the severe weather in, in Florida last night, but well, that was something, wasn't it? All right, well, we can just do it this way. We'll do it from Red, Red, Red Eat. We'll, we'll do it from the newly IPO'd company, Reddit. 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 Okay. Oops. Can I... Please just let me open this image in a new goddamn tab. Just the image, please. Ah. <laughs> That's what happens. Companies get on the stock exchange and they go to shit. It's gone to complete shit. Okay. That happened before... Um... <laughs> well, anyway. Check it out. Here's the first image. Here's what, here's what everybody saw. Like... On the tweet, hey, CEO Adam, I was curious if you would know why Ape is still trading. This is from this morning. Well, you got to wonder about that because, I mean, even even here, like, this, this tweet is from March 22nd, yesterday. <laughs> God damn it. Fucking yesterday. Okay, and they say, this is from this morning. Well, okay, first of all, I can't help but notice. I, I really can't help but notice these numbers that go across the bottom here. 1915, 1930, 1945, 20 o'clock. You know, the, 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 the less retarded among us would recognize these numbers as times in a 24-hour time schema. So 715, 730, 745, 8 o'clock which just so happens to be the end of the after-market session. And then another day starts right here because uh, 0415, which would be 415 a.m. So this would be the next day. Um, I'm not seeing anything uh, there on the new day at all. And this was posted at 1014 a.m., 415 had already passed. So they're showing the post market from some day, some day in the past, because these are evening hours. Um, nothing in the next morning session. So this looks like uh, kind of trading stops here. Actually, and it's, oh, it's not from this morning. It's from, at the very least, it's from last night. Um, okay, so that's already stupid. That's already dumb. Like, okay, no, it's not from this morning. These are evening times. This is a post-market chart. All right. But then we get the headshot. Here's the full fucking screenshot here. And then we zoom in here, courtesy of Noisy Corax, and we see, oh, what's that? The stock was delisted at 9.30 on uh, 3.22. Hmm. 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 You don't say. You don't say damn so then wait so then that means hmm so that means that it's not still trading that means that this is not from this morning he took the screen cap at 1014 Looking at this action from uh, pre-market on what previous, uh, whenever it was delisted, the, the last day it traded. I mean, 
doesn't anybody check this stuff? Doesn't anybody read anything? I mean, that's pretty clear. Delisted. Zero percent. Volume zero. Aha. Okay. So Noisy Corax is saying that this is delisted and um, this is the actual trading day irrelevant of when it was actually delisted. So this is not the, uh, the, obviously this is referring, okay, so it's referring to March 22nd, which was yesterday. Um, but yeah, that's kind of weird. Why would, why would you need today's date there? But whatever. In any case, it's delisted. I mean, when it, when in doubt, you know, the thing to do is check other resources. Like, you know, I don't know, Trading View, and you can't pull it up. You know, I, I mean, yeah, it pulls up something, but this is some kind of other security on some other market. I mean, you know, I mean, I can filter it here to United States only, and and it's not here. It's not here. So it's not there. It's not there. So there's a real headshot um, in the video, which I'm, I'm, I, f I feel like I'm being winked at here. So, you know, we'll, uh, oh, there's a big warning. Okay. All right. Well, let's see if we can find that, that warning in your vid. Oh, there it is. This stock has been delisted and is not available for trading. Hmm. So it appears to be directly underneath. Uh, well, actually, let's see. Oh, yeah, you can see it right here. You can actually see it. Okay, you can't see it here on the first one, but here... You can see it. See that orange right there? It's it's down there. It's small, but it's there. Here, I'll make it bigger. This is the kind of guy I am. <laughs> because I want everybody to see this. Here it is. See it back in there? See it in here? I don't know. See it right right in here. My cursor visible? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, yeah, it's right under it's right underneath this. I was curious if you would know why Ape is trading. This stock has been delisted and is not available for trading. Right there. Boom. Boom. So, yeah, I mean this is the point we're at. This is pretty much as bad as I've seen it. To be honest with y'all, but God. What a joke. So, should we watch the whole video? Should we watch the whole video? Fine. Good morning, off in Boston. Let's kick it off. Hey, uh, let's oh, nice. What's going on right now with eight? Uh, this is a video showing that eight is still trading. All right. Oh, really? Now I That's love it. it I love it. I've got the same screen cap here that I downloaded from Twitter, and it says on this Weeble page that was clearly taken from a phone up at the top delisted along with the time and date that this screen capture was taken and down at the bottom in big flashing orange text it says this stock has been delisted and is not available for trading so what was it that you said again uh this is a video showing that ape is still trading ape is still trading ape is still trading you lying piece of shit in fact for my desktop version you can see the last trading day for ape it is clearly demarcated on the chart and there is no trading past the conversion date it's even more clear on the hourly chart where you can see the exact day it stopped trading and I can even show you how this jackass Al from Boston is cribbing his notes from created the fake screenshot that he made he simply went to the one minute candle, hid the next day to show that the trading ended, 
and you have no context for what day this trading took place on, only the hourly timestamps creating a fake screenshot that makes it look like Ape is still trading when it isn't. And Weeble even clearly shows you it is not trading and warns you it isn't. But none of these people care about that. They care about selling you on this lie, this fabrication that they are trying to tell you so that they can continue with their conspiratorial claims. And fuck this Twitter user and fuck this fat fuck Al from Boston and his lying bullshit. I just wish that you had told us how you really felt. <laughs> I didn't feel like I was getting it. The true ire. No, I'm just kidding. All right. We're not commuting our life away anymore. We are live streaming on YouTube. So it must be Saturday. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Okay, voice chat's open, y'all. Uh, hopefully it works. <laughs> I, th I think it should. So we'll see. But as always, you know, bear with me on that. It's a give and take. Okay, so... Um, We'll just leave that there for any time. And then, uh, okay, so that's that's good. I mean, we've got that <sighs> ridiculous, absolutely absurd. Oh, Model 3, dude, uh, hmm, brought him up. He brought him up. He brought up the L word. Brought up the L word. Rest in hell. <laughs> So, I, I mean, I guess we need to address that, but, uh, yeah. We, go ahead, I hey. I don't know if I'll the whole stream, but I, I will say that I, I woke up this morning to that, and I'm like, there's no way. He could not have, have made that video trying to say that it's still trading. This is a, quite possibly a new low. <laughs> like <laughs> ladies and gentlemen we have with us uh noisy corax um and uh welcome and yes uh wow yeah i i mean this is the guy who has a lawsuit <laughs> this this guy is trying to run a lawsuit yeah what you described it accurately we're still in a, a holding period because federal courts move like molasses yeah he's we haven't heard back on the april extension which you know is about to become a moot point here and mm -hmm. new extension the only opposition to that extension we've seen is uh from the new york stock exchange and they basically said look we're already fully briefed and now he wants to change all the dates after he already fully briefed the court on this fuck off mm -hmm. right is did you do we have a copy of the whatever he filed for that? Um, yes, I do. Is it in the? Uh, I don't know if it was in Telegram or not, but it, it isn't. But I can pull it up one second so you can show it. Okay, I mean it's not going to cost you any money. I hope, but you're going to have to no, keep it. I already paid for it. It's just I. Oh, okay. Documents. They just have to find them. You know, we may have to. Uh, we may have to start a GoFundMe to to uh, fund your. Um, your pacer account with these idiots yeah my i mean pacer addiction it's not that you know i i never expect to make any money off of this um but i never also incurred any costs so you know it wasn't really a big deal but if i did incur any costs well i mean there's an emotional cost for sure having to put up with these but but you know you can't quantify that really so let me see if it's here in my intern I don't want images. I want documents. Stop with this shit. I'm not gonna so Model 3 dude says, I can't believe all the tears that are being shed over the sky. It's crazy. The victims truly have fell in love with their capture. Um, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. Um, and boy, you know, the thing that I noticed was uh, how, how much history has been revised here with this whole thing. Like... I mean, they love to do that anyway, right? About everything, 
regarding this whole situation, you know, go, whether it's we've been right at about everything. They love to say that. And it was just kind of a blanket, just reorganization of, of, of reality. But, um, you know, people saying stuff like, oh, Lou was a great man. Um, Lou cared about people. He was truly selfless. I mean, it sounded like I was reading about motherfucking Teresa with some of these comments. Okay. And I mean, a lot of people know that Lou, about his past. Some people don't. Some people know and don't care. Some people don't know and would care. So, um, it's, it's, it's a fucking weird situation. Plus this is all complicated by the fact that nobody, as far as I'm concerned, I, I, I have no actual evidence that the guy actually died and I'm sorry, but like, I don't believe in Russell's teapot. I, I can't put my faith behind something that I'm being asked to believe because a guy on Twitter named Elk Elk said, oh yeah, I talked to him. Well, it turns out, and then this other guy, Ben, uh, whatever that guy's last name is, I forget, Ben, uh, the younger guy, who said he was like, Lou's, Lou was like his adopted father or something, you know, father figure. Turns out the guy's a right-wing policy strategist, social media strategist, who works for Donald Trump. And, and, and other, you know, like, the, oh, he's a so GOP guy. On, so we got the QAnon to meme stock pipeline going. Uh, essentially, yeah. His name is uh, Benny. Well, whenever Lou would talk about Benny, that's who he was talking about. His name is uh, Ben Geller. And so, um, oh, shit. Ben Geller, if you look him up, I found him on Instagram. Um, not the TV character. Real Ben Geller. And, like, first of all, there's no mention of Lou at all, which is kind of weird if, like, Lou is, like, a, such a big part of this guy's life. Former New York legislator, political and media strategist, you know, and here's here pictures with Trump and all this stuff, and he's talking about, uh, you know, supporting the uh, January 6th rioters, and it's disgusting. You know, it's absolutely disgusting bullshit. That's who we're being asked to, to listen to? <laughs> no fucking way. Now, I'm not saying that it's fake or false. I'm just saying we don't know. We don't know. And then there's the issue of the obituary. There's the issue of this bullshit obituary. And now they don't even accept ad blockers on there. Oh, great. Well, and here's the anyway. Thing. Like we just got done. We just got done going over a video where Al blatantly lies. Right. It's really hard. I find it really incredulous to take seriously these people who have a history of just saying whatever they want to say. Yeah, they do. And that's, I mean, that's pretty much, look at this. I can't even, I, it's hard for me to even pull up this obituary now because it's so swamped with um, ads and, you know, redirects and all kinds of shit. I, I'm going to have to get in there real quick and hit the stop, I guess. Hopefully it won't. Um, I'm going to pull the <laughs> VPN is suggested for this site. Holy Oh my God. <laughs> there. Okay. I think I got it. All right. Well, we'll look at that in a minute, but you have the uh, document. Yeah. I just uploaded both of them. The first one, that three, uh, DI, uh, two Oh three is Al from Boston's motion. And then the one below it is the response. Okay. So what you're looking at here, let me get both of these in and then let me, I realize it would probably be easier for you to see it on mine. So let me share my screens. So you don't have to juggle everything. Uh, well, I, I thought it'd be easier for you since, you know, you're running the stream. So, and you'll probably want to enlarge it because the font is probably yeah. tiny. Oops. Um, yeah. Okay. So, oops, here's the first one. That one. Okay, so, yeah, so, Matt, Alec, Al, Matthew, blah, 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 against all these people, which I want you... I'm wanting to add more defendants. Jesus Christ, and I, not, at, like, at once we kind of see what this says, I wonder if you could address the reality of having this many defendants on here, but, um, and how that could bite him in the ass, but, 
Uh, mo- motion for further enlargement of time to amend complaint. Enlargement of time. Is that really, is that how they say it? Enlargement of time? Yeah. Uh, I'm just curious because I don't know. I know sometimes it's weird. Um, it's the correct terminology. Okay. In accordance with the principles outlined in the federal rules of civil, civil procedure, particularly 15A2 regarding the amendment of pleadings, the plaintiffs respectfully respectfully request this. This, if I could read, wait till you get to the excuses for why he wants an enlargement of time. And I, okay, and I, we can go through each one of those, and I can tell you why most of them are bullshit. Okay, uh, request the court grant a further enlargement of time until June first, twenty twenty four, for a filing for filing an amendment to the complaint. These rules underscore the court's capacity to ensure fairness and justice by allowing amendments and extensions when warranted by circumstances such as those presented by the plaintiffs. Good. I'm glad that they reminded the court of that. Um, Plaintiff proceeding pro se and respectfully requests this honorable court grant a further enlargement of time which to file the amendment, within which to file the amendment to the complaint. The court previously set a deadline of April 1st for this filing. Due to unforeseen and compelling circumstances, the plaintiffs respectfully seek an extension of this deadline at June 1st in support of this motion. Plaintiff Matthew states the following reasons for this request. One, unexpected health issue. Plaintiff Matthew, an honorably discharged, d- disabled Marine Corps veteran, is currently undergoing treatment for a not too serious but unexpected. But he won't specify, but he won't specify. Oh, boy. <laughs> He's undergoing treatment for a not too serious but unexpected health issue at the Veteran Administration Hospitals in Bedford and Jamaica Plain, Massachusetts. As a courtesy, we ask that the court takes this into consideration and all an extension, all an extension of time allow, supposed to be. If the court requires, Plaintiff Matthew can ask his current health care provider to contact the court and confirm this ongoing treatment. Despite his medical can I condition. Here for a second. Yes. Okay. Why is the court having to do your bitch work? Why can't you ask the court to redact your health records or provide redacted health records that show some sort of leap? Why is it the court's job to go check up on your bullshit claim for extension of time? I don't think it should, yeah. Despite his medical condition, Plaintiff Matthew is committed to diligently working on on the amending of the complaint, which is 80% complete, whilst receiving treatment. (laughs) Okay. There's, there's two things with this point. One, what I just, well, probably three. One, what I just said, okay, you can't specify the medical complaint and you can't give the court redacted medical documents suggesting that, you know, you have something going on. Yeah. And two, he's not the only pro se plaintiff. Jordan Affolter's on here with him. Is does Jordan just like is he in in a coma somewhere? Do you have him tied up in your basement? Is there some reason he can't proceed with this case without you? Right. What the fuck? What's the point of having two plaintiffs if you know you, they they both don't have to be there? You know. Yeah. Like. And what's so fucking important? Yeah. And three. And three. I know why they want the extension of time to the ju- to June. It's the same reason that Nel- uh, Nelson Willis wants his extension of time. It's because they're jerking around waiting for Ethan to finish his statement of facts and they're going to change the, they're going to amend the complaint to that. They're oh boy, MMTLP card where they're going to file their frivolous lawsuit in as many courts as they can. And okay, I I need to explain how I need to explain how this, this sorts of things work. Go for it. In a case like this, you would have a class action lawsuit or something like that. So you'd have one case in one court that'd be normally a federal court that has broad scope and would take care of everyone's problems in one go and would be judicially efficient and would, you know, deal with the court's time in a proper manner. However, because no sane lawyer wants to take up their retarded conspiracy claims, they have to file it pro se and individually as themselves only. Because of this, they can now abuse the system through a little bit of a loophole. Since you can't file a class action lawsuit without a lawyer because a non-legal person can't, you know, litigate on behalf of anyone else. Right. They're now abusing the system. Well, that means 
we can you know, what is what exactly what the MMTLP people did. We'll just file in a bunch of courts, waste the time of a bunch of federal courts, and hope if we shotgun a bunch of federal courts, we'll get one that takes our bullshit thing seriously. Well, if you know what happened with MMTLP, once one or two of the courts came down with a ruling, the others just basically copy pasted the others. Lol. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. But that's what I believe the strategy here is. Continue to stall for time till Ethan can finish his complaint. And they're just going to shotgun a bunch of courts. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, awaiting international documentation. The plaintiffs are in the process of securing critical documents and communications from several foreign stock exchanges, including those in Europe, UK. Okay. okay. Um, so, time to update you on time. Here. Time to update you on Brexit, Al. <laughs> but anyway, uh, no, that's that. What do you got there? Uh, he's waiting for information from Europe. Okay, so they filed this back in August. If you were waiting yeah. for information to file your complaint, why not wait till you had that information, dumb shit? Right, because wouldn't that inform... Stopping you from getting all the information and forming the best complaint you want to. But now you want to come back in here after already the defendants have filed and, and, the, and the court's been briefed? No, fuck you. Right, right, yeah. That's pretty ridiculous. I mean, besides what happens when you get... I mean, first of all, well, let me just let me go on the record and say I think this is bullshit. I, I doubt that they are actually waiting for information from Europe. Okay, oh, that's personally I just don't believe it because they these people lie all the time, right? They're just saying that just to make it seem like they have something so they can keep this thing going. Okay, so let's just assume for a minute that it is there is no information from from Europe that's coming in. Um, yeah. Um, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? <laughs> wouldn't it inform your complaint like? You're waiting for information. What about what if that information comes in and you analyze it and there's nothing? It actually disproves what you're trying to fight, what you're trying to, 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 to litigate. You know, what do you do then? Oops. Well, uh, time. yeah, we'll just strike that whole thing. So these documents are essential for the thorough preparation of our case. Why don't you have them already then? Why didn't you? Why didn't you? If they're so essential. Then why did why, how can you get this far and file two hundred fucking pages of garbage without it? Uh -huh. You can't. B -b -b Bingo. And so it's all bullshit and directly impact the amendment process of our complaint. Eh, too bad. So sad. Okay, number three. I didn't read this, but number three is exactly num my same complaints with number two. Okay, plaintiffs have a relatively large amount of data related to the causes of action that needs to be carefully reviewed and written into the complaint. Uh, okay, the plaintiffs received do this from the start. Right, received new data from various sources with very relevant information. It's not just relevant; it's very relevant information regarding the overall health of the company, as well pu unpublished trading data that was uncovered in the Mexican and other foreign stock market regarding Ape and AMC trading. Overall, the complaint is about 85% complete. I thought he said 80 in its current form, and this new evidence is much needed to qualify the 10B5 arguments. The new June 1st deadline would allow plaintiffs to make the document much more succinct and easier to understand, as opposing counsel had previously commented on clarity. Why? Oh, great. Yeah, what a fucking retard. I mean, that's something that a fucking yeah. kid says when he's writing his excuse for why he has to turn in his homework late. I was about ready to say that. <laughs> oh, my say, God. Like like the 10B5, like, okay, well, we need this to qualify the 10B5 complaints. Why didn't you do that from the start? You didn't know that you had a heightened pleading standard under the slurra until the defendants brought it up because you didn't do your own fucking research because you're fucking retarded. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Like, this is what pisses me off about this lawsuit. Al from Boston, who's supposedly done a year of law school, <laughs> has no fucking clue about basic bitch shit that I knew because I actually did the research. Right. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. Oh, my God. You know, and it's like, I don't know. Have you ever seen the TV show um, Better Call Saul? 
Um, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I, if, if I, you know, if I were a different kind of asshole, I would go ahead and I would, um, this is great. I would, I would get this sweatshirt. I would get, I would get this sweatshirt and send it to Al University of American Samoa Law School, which is where <laughs> Jimmy McGill, also known as Saul Goodman, went to law school. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, that's what that that's it's it's just like that comical. Okay, um, four backlog of documents is, is three and two. Okay, I'm not even gonna bother with it because it seems like it's. I mean, like it's them just trying to get more data. Why couldn't you just put that all under? It seems yeah, it seems like it's the same as international documentation. Okay, fine. Five, five compliance with legal standards. Plaintiffs are actively again. Actively ensuing that all amendments start. comply with the specificity requirements of the, okay, but yeah, th it, that should it should be it should comply with it when you file it, like oh my god, it's like they want every fucking uh, you know it's it's entitlement. He oh I should have more time because you know I'm a veteran. Well, good good for you. Stupid to do do what I should have done from the beginning. Right. Or I couldn't f find a fucking lawyer that would take the case. Huh? I wonder why. Why? Why couldn't you take a look, find a lawyer to take the case? Maybe because they understand that this is a bullshit case and that it would negatively impact their professional, you know, perf that would affect their professionality to take this case. They can't take this case. Yep. Because it's it's false, so request for enlargement of time, blah blah blah, amount of time requested. We already fucking said that. I mean, he just keeps repeating himself over and over. Conclusion. Okay, again, it's like the YouTube. It's like his YouTube channel. He files like it's his YouTube channel. He yeah. uses this very flowery flowery language, and he repeats himself over and over again because he thinks he can eventually convince you, like he does his YouTube video you know, viewers, that if he just says his bullshit enough times, if you if you repeat the same big lie, eventually everyone just has to agree with me, right? Yeah. I mean, that seems to be work. It seems to have worked. Yeah. So at least for a while. Um, boy, that's a really nice signature that Jordan Affolter has, though. That looks like it's almost a scripted font. It's so perfect. Yeah. Um, Especially with at the bottom where it's a straight line right on the yeah, that's, I mean, it's uncanny, like, how perfect that signature is. The A is cut off. Yeah, interesting. Hmm, weird. Um, okay. So, what was it say? Fairness here, I love that. Granting this motion would ensure that all parties have a fair opportunity to present their cases, thereby upholding the principles of justice and, pa and fairness that underpin our legal system. Oh, God. Hmm. All right. So that was what they filed. And then this the response is more succinct. Good. Um, and actually cites previous filings. So like, you know, you know, an actual lawyer did it. Right. Okay. Memorandum of New York Stock Exchange. I'm going to say nicey in opposition to plaintiff's motion for a further enlargement of time. Defendant, defendant nicey filed a motion to dismiss the amended complaint docket 38 that has been fully briefed and sub judice since december 26 2023 on january 19 2024 in response to three subsequent filings bearing on its fully briefed motion nicey followed a motion to strike docket 188 189 one of these one of the three filings nicey moved to strike was plaintiff's motion for general leave to amend the complaint docket 185 which was still pending when plaintiffs filed a motion, quote, for further enlargement of time to, to amend complaint, docket 203. Is that what we just read? 203? Yeah. Okay. So, as usual, plaintiffs did not comply with the court's local rule on meeting and conferencing, conferring before filing a motion. And plaintiffs yeah, they assert... Didn't, they didn't... See, whenever you file something, you are required by federal code of civil procedure to meet and confer with the opposing party to see if you can resolve the issue before wasting the court's fucking time. Right, right. He, ever since, ever since the beginning of this, he has failed to meet and confer 
with the defendants on any of his motions. Let me repeat that. He has failed to meet and confer with the defendants on any of his mm -hmm. motions. And that's why they say here, as usual, <laughs> as yeah. usual, love it. The, the court has failed to follow the rules of the court. As you here he goes again. The court has issued no ruling permitting any amendment. Plaintiffs long ago crossed the line, even for pro se litigants, into abusing this court's process and unduly prejudicing the defendants with repeated, duplicative, and inappropriate filings. Nicey respectfully refers the court to its motion to strike, docket 188 and 189, for the reasons it should disregard plaintiffs' latest improper filing. It has been three months since latest brief... improper filing. Is God. This hasn't been the only one. It has been a series of abuses. They've even said that they, if upon the motion to dismiss, if it's granted, they will be moving to make sure that Al from Boston cannot file litigation along these same lines against them ever again without leave of a court or a lawyer. That's great. Um, that would be truly justice. Um, yes, I know, right? It has been three months since briefing was completed on NICE's motion to dismiss, and none of plaintiff's subsequent filings have, have alleged or even suggested they could allege anything that would change the fact that their action against NICE is subject to dismissal with prejudice. Ref respectfully submitted, it's NICE. And never brought up again. It can never be that, brought that, up that, again. Right. That kills it. It's dead in the water. Sorry. Certificate of service electronically boom so yeah um is this, oh, this is to go over what al al wasted eight pages and then three pages they're like we've already went over this shit and he continues to not follow the rules of the court why are we still here right now even for pro se litigants lynn says even for pro se litigants that's them some words <laughs> like wow <laughs> you know, right? this is bad even for pro se litigants this is fucking dumb <laughs> that's court speak for can't get any dumber um now uh i got a couple questions here for you one is i i know we've probably talked about this and i just can't remember um mm -hmm. why is this being filed in massachusetts like how is that okay, possible that's where, that's where he lives right well, well there yes that's where he lives there has been some of these motions to dismiss that have had filings in them that says um, uh, the, some of the pre-filings where he was trying to get discovery or or freeze documents and stuff yeah. like this. A lot of the defendants said in them that we're responding to this to say that he can't do that. We're not saying we're subject to this jurisdiction, but we want to let the court know before they try and rule on this that this is not permissible. And then we go through their motions to dismiss a lot of the motions to dismiss is we have no business in the state of Massachusetts. We have not done anything by which the Massachusetts long arm status, the statutes would apply to us. This court is an improper jurisdiction. If he wants to sue us, he can come sue us in where our business actually resides. Mm -hmm. And the, the precedent and the precedent for that is that for you to sue a court, they had to have done something like say, Let's say GameStop has a store in Ohio where you live. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for them to be applicable to a, a Ohio court, the store doesn't count as a as as an excuse to pull them into Ohio court. Now, right. say there was something illegal, like they they sold you a, a faulty product or a, a, one of their employees did something, then you could maybe use the long arm stat statute to pull them into a court, maybe. Okay, but. It really depends on how the court rules on it and what the laws are. I'm not specific what the laws are to the state of Ohio. But there has to be some sort of <laughs> criminal activity that would make them make it applicable that an Ohio court would have jurisdiction. Otherwise, what falls uh, is the standard is what's called the nerve test. In other words, in order for a court to have jurisdiction, there has to be some nexus in which uh, in which a business like they have a headquarters there or it's the place they're incorporated in so uh, okay you can't just sue it because that's where you live you have to sue them in a jurisdiction that actually has jurisdiction over them and that would be either where their headquarters what state their headquarters is at or the state they're incorporated in 
Okay. You could sue AMC either in Kansas because its headquarters is in Leewood, or you could sue AMC in Delaware because that's where they're incorporated. Okay. Okay. So there's also, and this is a little bit different, but because you mentioned like problems with the product or something that you purchase. So there's also the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act, which mm-hmm. is, is a more of a, a protect consumer protection uh, statute that allows consumers to um, basically it governs warranties on consumer products. So if it doesn't require products to have warranties, um, but if it does have a warranty, it has to comply with the Magnuson Moss Magnuson Moss Warranty Act from 1975, which, as a, among other things, uh, specifies um, where and how actions have to be, you know, where they where they must be filed. So, for example, like um, if, if there's non-compliance with the warranty. Um, you know, or if it's a certain dollar amount, um, you know, then it goes to federal court. Uh, if it if it's a below a threshold, or a, you know, few no, like one one plaintiff only, then it would be only brought up in state court. So it it may 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 vary, you know, just on something like that. That's that's all I'm saying Correct. with that. It, it, I'm not, and I'm not sure. So I'm just saying for that one. You know, but this is consumer goods. Like if you buy a washing machine or something and it breaks and the, and the manufacturer won't take care of it and it's under warranty, you can sue them under the Magnus and Moss Warranty Act. Uh, but I also didn't notice something until I looked at it earlier when I was taking the screen clip for my video. But go to Al from Boston's page and see what his user avatar is now. You'll you'll get a laugh. Oh, God. Oh, what is that? Jesus. Is that supposed to be Jesus? Oh my God! Yes. What the fuck? <laughs> what a narcissistic piece of shit! Oh my God! And look, I mean, look at the top videos here. The debt lawyers are called in. Some thoughts and meanderings on Lou. Great. What's well, what I want to hear? Fucking owl meander about anything. Um, TD Ameritrade and Schwab he margin rating. All of his videos. Yeah. He fails to have a point in a lot of them. Uh, the, the TD Ameritrade and Schwab margin rating, which by the way, TD Ameritrade and Schwab are the same fucking broker. Now they're the same fucking business. They, they, they are one, but whatever, this is spoken from someone like him, obviously who does not use that broker, a brokerage platform. Otherwise he would know it. They've been transitioning for a year. Okay. Anyway, you, you, if you can't be a TD Ameritrade, uh, customer and not know <laughs> that that now it's Schwab. Like your username changed. Anyway, um, his interview with Patrick Byrne, the CEO of Overstock. This guy is a completely um, certifiable piece of shit. So yeah, he he is this uh, this guy. I mean, let me let me let me rephrase. Al is a complete piece of shit. Um, who you know, like his crown jewel is interviewing. Patrick Byrne, who is another certifiable piece of shit. So, anyway. Um, yeah. Wow. Cra- craziness. Found a thumbnail that wasn't just the AMC logo to put on there. Wow, you that was some heavy lifting there. Yeah, right. His interview with Doug Sifu. We just we were just talking. We were you and I were just talking about that the other day. Anyway, um, wow, yeah. So that's pretty bad. That's pretty terrible. Um, so just to be clear, let, let's, let's just make, make a, like a soundbite section here. Ape is not trading still. Uh, there, no. Ape is not trading. That's not true. It says so in the screen cap that the Twitter user provided, it is not trading anymore. Right. And, and let me just do this. This is just to be clear here. This, I, what I've got on the screen right now is Al's video. This is on his, his channel and i'll show that in an enlarged form right now the al from boston show okay we can see it right there clearly let me move the screen up just a little bit so i'm not we're still on his channel i'm not changing anything here just zooming in on the screenshot that happens to be visible on his video and um you know if i if i go up just a little bit oh yeah okay 
Wait, because it's it, it is flashing, right? It's not. Yeah. The the uh, orange. Yeah. Is that right there? Okay, yeah. So let me me centered back in. Available for trading. Here it is, right here, right in the center of the screen. Uh, has been delisted and it's not available for trading. And it's going to say like learn more. Well, it creates fun. Here, let me go back just a little bit. We can see the whole message. Yeah, and then I'll mute him so we don't need to hear his fucking ass. All right, here it's going to scroll by. Here, this stock has been delisted and is not available for trading. Learn more. You click tap there. Right there, right there. This is on his video. This is on his video that he's showing. Okay, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted to point out there. That's how ill prepared. That's how just ridiculous these these people are. They don't even they don't even look at the stuff before they parrot it. You know, and that is a problem. That is a problem. Now let me refresh this page and see it, what the newest comments are. See if anybody, anybody, please God. I know it's Saturday, but I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray to God. Please, somebody point it out. Uh, let's see here. I'm scrolling. Uh, AMC goes so deep. I think AMC. Oh, my goodness. It's Donahue. <laughs> oh, there he is. Crazy. They're allowed to do this and agree with you that they're fully. No, they're Right. They're so, fully aware that it's delisted and not trading anymore, you fucking piece of shit. Right, so am I gonna have to do some sort of follow up video on him too to like just show what a lying because he's the genesis point for this whole lie. He did a video, what was it, two weeks ago saying it was still trading that we tried to I think so, yeah. Fucking find it. Um so yeah, he I saw that he did a video, yeah, I haven't watched it yet. Um it's sad that we have to accept getting screwed over. Um, well, no. Uh holding for justice. Did the SEC come out and say to cease and desist trading of ape? Whatever happened to your lawsuit? When will someone be a whistleblower? Well, that that's a good question. You would think, okay, you would think if there's all this corruption and crime, it's fucking obvious, right? If if every day, as Donahue George says, they just engage in fraud, fraud and crime, and there isn't one goddamn brave soul that's that knows something that's willing to stand up and say, or even in the cover of night. You know, sub Rosa can, uh, you know, and come out with this information and be anonymous and get witness protection. There isn't one fucking person that would do that. Well, maybe then maybe just maybe, you know, especially with a whistleblower, you can get 15 to 30 percent of any claim that the SEC gets. Right. Like what? Why wouldn't you? Because there's no smoke. So there's no fire. But. You know, they've created the smoke screen that uh, it, with a smoke machine that makes it appear that there's smoke, but there's no fire. Anyway, b that's why you have no whistleblowers, because there's nothing to blow the whistle on. I mean, I've been, if anything, we're the whistleblowers blowing the whistle on these fucking lying, grifting pieces of shit. That's where the smoke and fire is. That's the real crime. That's the whole point of this series of videos. Anyway. It's not connect the dots. Don't don't even don't even say anything. Don't don't even think that, Manuel. <laughs> okay, right in line with FTX tokenized fakes. Yeah, well, I mean, oh my fucking god, we're going down. Oh. Here we go again. Like, okay, um, will AMC dilute again? Thanks to Bitcoin, I, the UK, like all uh, blah blah, shaking my damn head. Five thousand shares. This is really crappy. You and. Angelo from New York are the only ones still talking about AMC. It's over. We got cheated. Move on. Um, uh, hey, at least uh, at least someone's like yeah, but that they s one person said it. But look at the response. It's easy for you to say when your money's not involved. Nobody's moving on from nothing. Said no one. I'm still holding. So like one person saying you need to get over, go over it, and move on. Even if you say There's we got, so many, I'm okay with people saying so they got cheated. Stocks. I'm okay with people saying they got cheated, but I'm just looking at the ratio. It's three to one. Oh, yeah. Like, one person and says... The one, and he has no likes, and ever, all the other ones... Yeah, do. look at that. Three, six, nine, ten likes here. Zero likes. So it's really... It's, because it's a cult. It's really, it's 13 to one, then, in my eyes. You have these three, plus the upvotes. That's all positive to the one negative. And it is a cult. You know, that's the answer. But, I mean... That that just means it needs to be highlighted even more. Nobody calls them out. 
on on such a blatant no. obvious lie. It's That's ridiculous. Day. That is ridiculous. So I'm going to leave that up, and obviously some somebody's going to have to comment on that, whether it's me or someone here. Somebody will. Um, well, I tagged him in my video. I know I won't get a response because he's a coward and a fucking oh yeah shit. So for I, sure, I won't get a response from him. But he knows. Mm hmm. And look at this. So the dislikes, no dislikes, disabled by owner. Oh, he doesn't want to see the dislikes. Hmm. Oh, that's because too... he's a coward. He's a fucking bitch. Yeah. Just like yeah, just like Marantz. He's a fucking pussy. He yep. can't handle criticism at all. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> that goes without saying. Um, but I I'll 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 show you I'll show you something here. This um as I don't care. What do I have to hide? You know, it doesn't it doesn't matter to me. Um just to like just to be different, just to you know, show. Let's see here. Um does it show it still? Yeah, it does. Okay. Here's mine. Here's my YouTube studio. And here's the like and dislike. And, well, actually, they're mostly pretty good on the live streams. The videos, not so much. When I'm saying, most of mine are fine, even when I'm saying something bad about AMC. It's when you get into these really culty stocks, like you talk about NMTLP or, or some of these others, that that's when I really get the ratioed. Yeah, so nine, this is on videos, which I don't put out that many anymore, but 75, you know, 43. If you go back, uh, let's see, go back here. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty low. 80, 62, 64, uh, and 38, you know, not very popular. Uh, 31. Is this the right one? I'm pretty sure that mine if you uh, if you want to show that like it's the same sort of situation hang on here mostly good and then you'll find like these weird ones like like going after palantir or talking right, about hang. next bridge right, hang on a second that, here can i when it gets a little wonky hang on i'm gonna see how i can show that actually um I don't. I actually don't have a window or a source set up for that, but that would be cool to do. Um, I think I can do this one, and I'll do. Well, anyway, I've, we'll have to figure that out uh, at some other time. But yeah, 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 because that would be cool to be able to have you flip stuff up there. Uh, for sure, and it's totally doable. But anyway, um, yeah. So I, I, I don't really ever look at this um, comments here. And oh, look at that, man. Well, somebody he put in a uh, timestamp of everything. Wow, that's awesome. Core I, I wish that I could do. I like that. <laughs> Core X ray. Yeah. Right. <laughs> wow. Nice. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so just to, you know, put a bow on that one. Ape is not trading. It hasn't been trading. It says right on the freaking screenshot that they show, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just absurd. I mean, you, you just can't you, – you can make this stuff up, clearly, because they do. But it's, it's so – this is what I mean when I say that this shit debunks itself. There is nothing – that anybody needs to do except know how to read in order to debunk this particular fake point. It debunked itself. Now, Noisy Corax pointed it out. Uh, you know, even if it hadn't show, even if it hadn't displayed that on the screen, I mean, this one's particularly bad because it says it right there. You didn't have to do anything. You just had to look at it. Well, you know how many people didn't even look at it I mean, that's, that's the reality. These people aren't even looking at this shit. They're seeing the headlines. They're seeing the titles. They're seeing the posts. They're seeing the video titles. And they're like, oh, yep, see, I knew it. I knew it was without even looking at it. And, and they wonder why they've lost 90% of their fucking money. I mean, give me a fucking break. Are you kidding me? How does that jive? Content 
And these content creators count on their audience not fact checking them. Oh they yeah. Blindly accept what they say. I'm surprised that Al actually showed the whole thing. He must not have seen it either. You know, because sometimes the person who made the screenshot didn't even see it. Right, because if they did, why would you show it? And and this is the thing, and I've railed against. Be, go ahead. Because it's very deliberate. They went to the one minute, like I said, and then yeah, it, it was a, a deliberate attempt to deceive, but they didn't look at the full screenshot. But see, as far as I'm concerned. They didn't even need to, like, I could tell just based on the, the small screenshot from the tweet itself, like, where it's, uh, it doesn't show the whole thing. Um, where is it? Uh, the one that you showed. The one that you posted, right. I didn't, I mean, I didn't even, uh, I don't think I have it up anymore, but yeah. No, I, I saw that, and, well, actually, to be, truth be told, I saw Al's video title, and, and then I already knew, but that's you know neither here nor there that's different but yeah no i saw it because they said this is from this morning okay and i know that that's when they took the screenshot but the insinuation the the implication is that the the price action that's being shown was from this morning i mean but clearly it's from an aftermarket hour because i understand 24 hour time so that doesn't even make any sense it doesn't there because there's no trading indicated on that chart from any morning. It's evening trading. So that alone to me was enough. But I mean, yeah. Then then I found out that it actually says delisted. It's like wow. It's like free free fucking money. You're just giving me more. Holy shit. Um, twice it says delisted. Yeah, twice. twice. Uh, the top under the price. Amazing. And at the bottom. It's a. <laughs> that's amazing and it scrolls and it gives you a link to click more you know to learn more which of course i'm, I'm sure if, you know if i could find out from webull what percentage of people who saw that message clicked on it i bet it would be less than 10 less than 10 percent you know why why would they because because the ones that knew already knew they didn't they already knew they didn't need and the ones who didn't know didn't want to know and they didn't read it so boom yeah. All right, so moving on here. The next ridiculous thing that we have today. Um, well, maybe we just need some... How about this? This guy... I know Manuel got into a little bit of a fight with this guy. <laughs> Manas, Manas, Manas. I don't know if it's referenced in this or all, but this is from... At all, from, but this is from yesterday. And if, if you need to bounce at any point, uh, just, you know, just uh, obviously... Yeah say so but otherwise uh, I'm, I'm off today so i'll probably just me too but uh i can't uh, you know i i uh well i'm making dinner tonight so um <clears throat> i have to i can't be on for long you know super long but you know another hour or something like that anyway the, the meat is out coming to room temperature now anyway so i can't i gotta wait until that gets to the right thing so anyway Let's see what this guy, when I'm finally selling my AMC shares, when I'm finally selling my AMC shares. Cool, let's find out. So advise, I'm not a financial advisor, so don't basically think I set up these videos on the store for pure entertainment purposes only. <laughs> I wanna jump into, because I wanna address a couple of things like, <clears throat> when this thing, if it runs, and, and I'm not saying it will or won't, can, maybe can, uh -huh. can't, I don't know. But if AMC were to run, and everyone had to cover and there was a short squeeze and oh my god i want to you know kind of warn people maybe not even warn people but just just kind of give you an opinion um that i've considered myself so yes this technically with all the, the over okay this whole and, genre and the, the mess that's of, made. Uh, this this whole genre of doing these while you're driving while the car Car door open or no seatbelt, which I'm pretty sure what that buzzer is. is no yeah, seat that's no seatbelt. Yep. It's like, <laughs> no wonder these people lost 90% of their money. They're that right. fucking stupid. Right. Driving down the road, talking on their phone, no seatbelt. Recording a video. Yeah, like, God. I mean, and he's got the camera like in his lap or something too. Like, Normally they have it like on a vent, air vent hanger, or like coming from you know the, the console. Um, from one of those like suction stands. Right, exactly, a windshield thing or whatever. Um, 
at least then if you want to look at if you know if they do glance the camera you know you're basically still looking forward i i i haven't noticed if he's been looking down god i hope he isn't but anyway not not to be a safety bug or anything here but you know they're like it 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 would be unfortunate for anybody else to get in an accident <laughs> in this way um th- you know i'm but it wouldn't anyway um that was a bad attempt at an insult here but anyway <laughs> maybe it's okay if the apes don't wear their seat belts i don't know <laughs> run to easily over 10k a share oh just because whoa okay um what would the market cap okay. AMC be at 10 10 000 a share i, I don't know understand this play, ludicrous play, talk, but. We'll play that out a little bit i i need to step away for like 10 seconds i'll be right back let me get, let me go do the math on that because that sounds really stupid. How many shares outstanding are there of AMC? Let's 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 run some quick math on how stupid this base concept is before we even talk about can it happen? Okay, AMC has a share a free float of two hundred sixty two million. Okay, two hundred sixty two million times ten thousand. So you're looking at, okay, so then we need to times this by one million, three, four, five, six. You're looking at a market cap of, let's see here, 100,000 million, $2.6 trillion. Okay. You're looking at a market cap uh, that's that's like Tesla, a- Apple, up there numbers. Do you understand how fucking retarded that sounds. Do you have any concept of how stupid you sound that you think a theater company is going to go to a market cap of 2.6 trillion? 2.6 trillion? That's what you came up with? Holy shit. Um, now, call me crazy, but isn't that what NVIDIA is there? Well, they're 2.36 trillion. Yeah. As of like trading, you know, Friday or yeah. yesterday, whatever. And look right, uh, you know, I, I pulled a d- data zero, by the way, on NVIDIA here. Like I, I was like, oh, oh boy, you know, it looks like this might be, oh, yep. Yeah. And then it just went straight up from there. Good thing I wasn't trading it. <laughs> Good thing I didn't. Well, anyway, we'll get to him. Um, so, okay. So in order for that, and wait, uh, one last thing on there. What is the market cap? Currently, it is just over $1 billion. $2 million. Oh. oh. $1 billion. Yeah, market cap. I market cap. Sure that's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 262. It's uh, two, 262 times four, eh, essentially, which is $1.07 billion, Right? 262 million t- shares times $4.08. Wow, four dollars and eight cents. Um, that's dangerously close to three. And is the is the um, the the NYSE threshold is it one dollar or is it five dollars? Yeah, one 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 dollar. Okay, but mm-hmm. AMC was close, getting possibly close to that before, right? And which is why they did the well. I mean. Reverse split conversion was reverse helped the, with that. Yeah, yeah. The reverse yeah. split had to be happen because they needed to both the of the share counts to be under the max cap for the shares outstanding by the charter of incorporation. Right. And and and, and, and it, right, 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 right. Okay. Well, um, you know, one thing that's interesting too is like and, and this is we're on we're on a weekly chart here. I'll switch to a daily. This is a daily chart. Oh, I gotta move my line because it keeps going below it. Um I'm going to move this line over. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, right. So if you look here, um, the, I'm going to minimize the candles and put this this blue line in, in the middle here, uh, make that big. And so what this is, is, uh, of course, this is the OBV. Apes love the OBV. Let me just make it thicker and mice Have invisible. How they've changed the narrative on OBV. That, oh, they have? I haven't heard yeah, that. It used to be set... Because it used to be, you know, how it was up there at the top. They were saying that oh, nobody's wow, selling, nobody's nobody's sold because it the OBV is still the same and all right. that stuff, right? Despite Which is how OBV is calculated. But now that right. they come back down, now the new now the new story is it's back down where it was 
at the short squeeze, that means we're primed for another one. And so oh we, dear we, God! Wow, the you could you could snap your neck with with the the contrast in that narrative shift. Right. <laughs> you could, mm -hmm. <laughs> some whiplash on that one. Oh, you sure can. Um. So yeah. So, you know, and we know as you kind of alluded to there how the OBV is calculated. You know, you basically have two components. You have the direction of the line. Does the line go up or down on OBV? And you have the amount the line goes up or down. And the 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 direction of the line is determined by was the did the price go up or down that day? If the price went up, the line goes up. If the price went down, the line goes down. And the amount is directly proportional to the volume of the day, the total volume. So if the the price went up and there was a lot of volume, then the line, the OBV line is going to go up a lot. If there was a little, if the price went down and there was only a little volume, the, the line's going to go down, but only by a little bit. And so that's what we saw happen most of the time after the short squeeze areas of 2021. Well, the volume tapered off. So the OBV line didn't go anywhere because there was no volume. Now, the OBV line started moving when there was volume, which is a shocker because that's how it's calculated. So when we started getting all this volume come in here, like 18 million shares on a much smaller float now, um, uh, you know, yeah, your line starts to move. And now it's down, it's down, you know, pretty, pretty much, yeah, I guess, sort of like where it was uh, before the squeeze or whatever. But the problem is over here, um, and, and I don't really use OBV. I don't know. To my knowledge, it's not widely used by, I mean, you use it to confirm things and you can look for divergences and stuff, but it's not really accurate anyway. It, but it's interesting. In, in any case, it kind of gives you a perspective on, you know, okay, are, is this move line moving around a lot? Well, that means there's a lot of volume. I mean, that's kind of one thing you can glean from it, but, but the crucial difference over here is like, this is like, it's going up here. Like, this, and the price is going up here like so okay yeah we came up to this area and it stabilized and consolidated and it confirmed in the obv but you know the whole thing was like this was the this was the uptrend and and this was the excitement so that's cool but like over here um it's just like sliding down so yeah they, it doesn't surprise me that they uh changed the narrative on obv but you know yeah, this is one of the things that we've talked about for well since the channel began in 2021 um and then at some point we discovered that joe granville the father of obv the guy that created the obv indicator you know he also said something that was very very wise and that we've repeated over and over people are sick of hearing it if it's obvious it's obviously wrong in other words in the market if something appears so obvious that it's a sure thing it, it, it can't be, it, you know, it, it can't, we can't lose. It's a winning lottery ticket. It's obvious. It's probably not. It's probably obviously wrong. You're probably going to get crushed. And it's just so ironic that the apes would misuse the OBV indicator. And that guy also said that, which describes exactly what the apes did. Fascinating. It's fascinating. And it what it tells me, and I'll... I'll have a channel Donahue George with an I believe, I believe that it was a sign. And it, it got me right back on track. I was I was sliding back towards that bottle. No, just kidding. <laughs> but I was sliding back towards not wanting to be on the meme stocks. And I found that quote and it and it, you know, it renewed my faith that this this must be told. So anyway. If it's obvious, it's obviously wrong. And it was obvious for these people, and they were obviously wrong. Um, so, anyway. Um, here we go. You know, the way it is. But I, I just don't think anyone can ever let that happen. I think, you know, I think if this thing does run, I think you're hitting 3K, 5K a share, and that's going to cap. Uh, cap it up. But that's just my opinion. I could be way wrong, you know, so I'm not telling you to buy, sell, or hold at any price. But in my opinion, just be careful if this thing does squeak. Be careful. And things happen. Put your seatbelt on. Be, be alert. Oh, the irony of somebody telling you to be careful as his seatbelt chime warning ding goes off. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I was picking up on because I was like, is it the doors? I don't see any doors ajar. And, and no. And then I look at across his shoulder. I'm like, where's your seatbelt, bro? <laughs> right. Right. I mean, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's not the seatbelt chime. Maybe it's the, you know, warning. You're an idiot. You're losing. You're going to lose all your money. Maybe it's the pull your money out now while you still have any to pull out warning chime. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, man, the funny thing is in my car right now, I am a seatbelt wearer. I wear it always. Okay. I, and I don't know, it started happening a few months ago. The car doesn't think that I am. Plug in the seatbelt and... You know, I get the ding for about the first 15 minutes I'm driving. Um, and then eventually it goes away. But, yeah, I think it's a... I, I got I to gotta chase that one down. But anyway, so kind of the opposite problem. If I made videos from my car and actually used the camera, um, which <laughs> I couldn't do on my current phone, a long story, but anyway, um, yeah, you would see the seatbelt, but you'd hear the ding, which would be confusing, so... That's not why we don't do that. But anyway, I think it's the Moas, um, Moas imminent chime. <laughs> the fact that, you know, don't be super greedy, but also don't be super paper handed all at once. You know what I mean? There's, there's kind of a fine line. What? So I, that, and that's one of the. That window's passed. Down. Why I'm buying more shares, why I'm doing what I'm doing, because. If it gets to the point and I see it squeezing and let's just say somehow it this, gets like five hundred dollars and I can see, oh my god, it's a not continued issue I have with these people of like I was complaining about like uh it was mentioned on, on Reddit the uh the whole like we were talking about uh one of these other YouTube hucksters from the MMTLP community, Houston Wade, and he was saying like someone asked him, you know, is is, is there a chance for Moas? And he says well, there's possibly a chance for Moas. Right. It's kind of a 50-50. You know that generic boilerplate of, you know, I'm not going to tell you it isn't going to happen. Well, anything is possible, but... It's possible, yeah. Yeah, that kind of shit. And, and you know, they throw, you know, laurel wreaths at his fucking feet. And it's, it's the same thing here. It's like, how can pe how how do these people who constantly give the most boilerplate, milk toast bullshit, confirmation bias lines be taken with any credibility? He's basically saying, I'm not saying it'll mow ass, but if it does mow ass, it's like, fuck you. No, seriously, fuck you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree. And, you know, the problem is with that is, and I'll just say this, um, you know, the question is not whether something's possible or not. You know, really, I mean, I think this is what wise people or people who strive to be better and smarter, you know, come to this realization at some point. Like, it's not like if something it's not life is not the world is not binary. It's not. Is it possible or is it not possible? It is. What is the probability of this? And that is OK. But you, you still OK. What is the probability? And. Is there is there a greater chance that it will happen or a, a greater chance that it won't happen? And how do we weigh those? And can we look at factors on and both sides? Even, and not yeah. even just that, but like a lot of things Do that I don't know, I'm, I'm sure you probably brought up, but I've heard it brought up on a lot of the groups that I'm in is not just, you know, something could be probable, but or it could be have a certain amount of probability, but what's its probability compared to other outcomes? Because you've got to look at the opportunity cost, you know, yep. could I have been making more money in this time period than if I was in another investment and that potential of missing out on that opportunity, because I don't know, I was waiting to find the pot of gold at the end of the leprechaun's rainbow. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and we've, we have talked about opportunity costs a lot, actually, over the years. And it, it, you know what, what started that discussion for me was the thing that they would always say, they always say this, uh, that um, we have time on our side. It doesn't cost us anything to hold. But the hedge funds, it costs them money to borrow shares to short the stock. It cost you the opportunity and to the stock that, that you could have been invested in. Exactly. That was exactly what I said. 
I said, well, well, hold on a second here. You're saying it doesn't cost you anything? I don't know where you get that impression. Absolutely it costs you something. something. A little something called opportunity cost. And, I, you know, nobody understood and, it, but, you know, whatever. But, I mean, I thought it was a relevant point. I thought it was very relevant. Like, uh, yeah, this is, um, this is actually costing you a lot. And if you don't realize that, then, uh, you know, then <laughs> I don't know. Because but, if you look at the basic benchmark of, uh, of what everything's measured against, the risk-free rate, so what is it? Uh, I'm sure you could pull up the chart. Uh, how much AMC is down year to date? And U.S. Treasuries yield at 5%. So what is it? AMC has been down like 20% year to date. Um, U.S. Treasuries yeah. yield at 5 So that's an opportunity cost loss of 25%. Yeah, hang on. I'm I'm trying. Uh, I got to do something here real quick. So, uh, um, yeah. But anyway, I got it's just on the yield, not the face value. So right, right, right. A little bit less there because That's... if you subtract the face value loss, you probably had some losses holding bonds. But yeah, it depends on yeah. The maturity and what yet what you got. But yes, sir. Okay. All right. Continuing here. I gonna hold up because. They've got another scheme of their plan that I can sell at 500 and, you know, maybe keep a few shares just in case. I mean, obviously, when this comes down to it, it's kind of like almost like every man for himself. You got to just take care of what you got to take care of, you know? Obviously, uh, you know, we're all holding together. We hold for each other and, and whatever, but. Nope, 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 nope. No, that's not how the stock market works. Right. Um, I'm trying to think of what. I'm trying to think of a good analogy of what they they want it to be like. They want it to be like, but I can't think of an analogy where, you know, every, I don't know, like, it, uh, like a bunch of people who go in together on uh, season tickets for a sports team. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of some place where you would want every, like, I don't know. It, it doesn't make sense. Like. Really, to me, it really comes down to own because I mean, I hate to continue to circle around back. Yeah, it's, it's really, what it happened. It's really like going Did you to get church it? together and being like, if we all hold hands together and you know, you did? when, when okay. we all die, we'll go to heaven. It's it, that's what it feels like to me, like not impugning anyone's religious faith because I, 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 you know, I have my own personal faith, but it just, it just feels so like abstract like that we're all we're all in this together and we'll all make it to paradise in the end and it's just like mm -hmm. no. well i'm gonna Don't throw it like that sweetheart right and i'll say what you you know say the boilerplate answer that i seem to get anymore which is true i'm not complaining about it but it's a cult you know that 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 is a cult we're dealing with a cult um, and, uh, you know, maybe an MLM, maybe an MLM scheme, example, maybe like, uh, Amway or, uh, you know, I um, definitely say Moran definitely operates on the MLM model where he goes try and, and tries to say, if you get in, because he tries to pull people out of these other meme stocks and then put them into game stock and just be like, if you recruit more people that we'll all make money together. Right. Right. And it's sort of like, mm, yeah, uh, or I mean, this is a sort of, uh, you know, cult, um, definitely, and sort of MLM and everything kind of all together. Uh, all the best manipulation tricks in the book, Scientology, um, you know, because there is a there is a there is a complete belief structure. A religious flavored MLM. If I yeah, basically, one. yeah, yeah. I mean. The and, and ultimately, you know, you're trying to recruit more people, sell more books, you know, sell more auditing classes, you know, auditing sessions. I mean, it's and, and here we have buy more shares, buy and hold more shares, buy popcorn, buy movie tickets. I mean, I, there's probably there's there's at least at least a decent master's thesis right there for somebody who wants it <laughs> just waiting to be written. You know, um, it, it, finance, in finance, behavioral finance, psychology, anthropology. I mean, you could go any, you could go in a dozen different d disciplines and study this, I, I feel. You know, mathematics, 
some a, a master's mathematics student could absolutely write something that would show how uh, every one uh, every one of the assumptions that the apes mathematical when they say they want to use math is complete garbage and nonsense and how you can't reconstruct a data set from the limited information that they have which they claim that they can and it's like n- no all you have is an average <laughs> you have an average and then and a supposed number of shareholders from three years ago you can't tell me how many shares I have sorry you can't do it it does not it's not possible so anyway yeah. um, you know and, and even if you had a couple more data points like sorry. the median or something like that or the standard deviation of the of the distribution you could come up with a data set you could come up with a distribution that would satisfy the requirements but it wouldn't be unique in other words there's multiple combinations of shares per owner that would satisfy it so you'll never get to the correct value the correct numbers just never happen anyway the the point was they were trying to show that there's more shares than you know held than there are in existence but you can't show that you can't show that they wanted to take the total number of shareholders and multiply that by the average number of shares that everyone held according to Adam Aaron from whatever years ago and they came up with this astronomical figure and it's like yeah exactly yeah you did you, because that's not how it works you don't you literally do not have enough data to calculate that anyway and i believe me i i tried a million ways to do it can't be done and then they talked about a bimodal distribution and this guy supposedly had a phd in math and it's like come on no you don't okay see ya all right anyway continue let's continue here if it does come to a squeeze there's going to be people out there that that aren't as educated or there's going to be people in here that just really don't want to go through the 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 volatility there's going to be people that are just gonna get excited because they've never seen that type of money in their account so you know easily i think we could reach now this is a moas squeeze i know people are gonna come and talk shit but whatever if it if it squeezes and shorts cover i i, I honestly think it would hit about one and a half to three k maybe five k a share um but that that's kind of a hopeful, wishful, dreaming thought. So, oh, really? Okay. To say, like, look at GameStop. GameStop. You gotta be. You gotta be prepared. Okay. They always say this. You gotta be prepared. But what about being prepared if there is no squeeze? What about that preparation? What about you know? And that means like risk management, not over trading, not over allocate, like. Yeah, we, we, you got to be careful in case it runs to a million dollars, but don't worry, it's not going to go to zero. What the fuck are you talking about? And listen, he's now he's going to talk about what GameStop should have gone to. It should have gone to this. Oh, it should have, huh? But that that's kind of a hopeful, wishful, dreaming thought. So you've got to be prepared Delusional? To say, like, look at GameStop. GameStop usually should have hit about 1,500. Um, it, it got stopped around 400. So... You know, if, if I'm thinking that this thing should easily easily hit 10 or 10k, Again. what would then the maybe market 1500? Be? That's such fucking absurdity. Where would that 1500? Right, and they didn't have a big float, but still. And and the question is like, where does that money come from? I mean, you know, none of these clowns would be willing to buy a single share of these stocks at those prices. Not one. Not one of these fucking morons would ever, in a million years be willing to pay that much for one share of fucking AMC. And then they go, well, the, the shorts paid that and, and point at the, at the what was it, the, the Volkswagen squeeze or whatever. But, like, that was such a small, infinite, like, little slice of the entire price movement during one day. And these motherfuckers right. think that they can just keep resending the button. It, it, it like, that, right. they don't, they don't, they can't even comprehend how much of a freak black swan event what they did and what the black uh, and what happened with volkswagen and all these other scenarios it's fucking over right yeah although hey maybe after you know 
last Wednesday, maybe we're heading back to that type of regime. I don't know. I mean, I don't think so, but some people some people think so. Some people some people are convinced that that this is it and it's like okay. I mean, if we were heading back to that regime, the Fed would have would have like like the government would have been printing would have been giving direct payments to people, which they're not. Well, that, right, I yeah, no, that's not going to happen. We'd have Zerp again and right. like no. Clearly, we're not going back to that. We can't go back to that. But we're going back to something where Wall Street, well, we always go back to something where Wall Street gets their way. I think this is all just to stave off anything until after the election. That's all. I, I mean, I don't know how anybody can say that we're not – that. Re, I mean, we're just now starting to see the uh, inflation numbers tick up just now. And we've been talking about it for months because we see it. We've seen it for months, but because of the way it's calculated, it's delayed. You don't think that there's, I mean, I, I, it's, I don't even, I haven't even been thinking about it because this is like, I, I don't even, there's nothing to say. There's nothing, I, I don't know. There's no other, I don't know how to look at it to make it make sense. Besides, this is just because the market has to go up in an election year. It has to. That's fucking fact. It has to. There's been like twice two instances where it didn't so it will it has to but i mean does it have to does it have to i mean this is that that, and, and why have i been consistently on the wrong side of it because i don't believe it i don't believe it and i am not it's too obvious it's too obvious that's why i i'd rather just not even participate it's too obvious. That's it's too obvious. There's no way that this is real. There's no way that this many people are, are going to win. I just don't believe it. And it's the same with the MOAS. It's a lot clearer with the MOAS because it was such a fl- it was like a you know flash in the pan, and here we are three years later. Um, but I mean, shit. When when J.P. Morgan uh, chases at all time highs. And the CEO is coming out saying, oh, well, we might be heading into blah, blah, blah. You know there's some bullshit going on. Well, and – I would say to – Go ahead. That, yeah. That there's definitely bullshit coming because I've been looking at it a lot. I haven't been able to confirm it on everything. But a lot of the stocks that I've been following are looking at as possible weak stocks to, to hunt down like a hungry lion. Um, like – You've seen a, a a trend below average volume. Mm-hmm. Stock still goes up. Where's all yep. the stock pressure coming from? It's coming from the options market. Yeah, yeah. The options market is creating synthetic price pressure that's pushing yeah. stocks upward. You see it. You can see it very clearly with Palantir. Oh yeah, PL. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Look. The, look at that volume. volume look at that volume. Sauce. It's sauce. anemic. Yeah. Anemic volume. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Let's see here. Um. So yeah. I mean, uh, one last thing on that. Um. Which was I forget what I was gonna say on that. It was something. Yeah. I mean, every all volume is trailing off a little bit uh, everywhere, but um. Uh, shit. Um, Bitcoin. No, it wasn't Bitcoin. Although that's kind of telling too. But, uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Here, here we go. The other telltale sign. And, and I, you know, I've heard this from a lot of people and, 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 and I noticed it and I, I didn't see anybody saying it. I'm sure people are talking about it, but I just happen to notice it because I always am checking for this. If you look at the insider selling right now, it's through the fucking roof. Uh, Look, this is on Finviz. Okay, Finviz will show you latest insider trading. Latest. This is the latest. Okay, um, KULR, uh, TMC, Aries. Uh, yeah. SoundCloud. I mean, it's CRM. Uh, that's Salesforce. Dell. 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 Michael Dell just cashed out a hundred. Um, Close to three hundred million dollars. No, that's not Dell. Uh, Michael Dell. Michael Dell is somewhere here, though. He did, though. Where is he? The insider. Yeah. That own a lot of Dell. 
Yeah, but Michael Dell himself it was on the report too. Actually, I did see him. He cashed out. Coinbase. Oh yeah, Coinbase. Um, here, let me just do Top Insider. Here's Michael Dell, right at the top, two hundred and eleven million dollars last Wednesday. Wednesday. AIG. Wow, Chairman CEO per, uh, uh, Peter Zif. Zephano AIG there cashing out for a cool 25 million. Yep. Zuck. Meta. Zuck. Zuck cashed out uh, for about what? 66 million. Wouldn't that be funny if it added up to six, 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 six. <laughs> I knew he was a fucking dead. Oh, no. Wait, here's another 22 right there. So 88, 88, 100, basically 100 million, probably more than that. 100 million. Yeah. Um. So, let's see. AIG, yep, 25. There's another Zuckerberg one. Oh, yeah, 15, 15, 15. 15, 45 million right there. Another one right here. Another Michael Dell, 16 million. So, the point is, look at all that. He keeps going, and these are all from March. These are all yeah, recent. I thought he was about I thought he was about Bitcoin and, and his... Oh, yeah. Having all this Bitcoin. He cashed out twice. He did. Cool, he did. Nine mil. Yeah, 10 million in com combined. So you got all these fucking assholes. Here's Salesforce. Here's, um, I don't know, uh, all GitLab. Uh, you know, just whatever you want. Sp um, SPX Technologies. Mm-hmm. Instruments. TEX, isn't that there? Uh, where's that one? TEX. Uh, John Garrison. That's Terex Corporate. I don't know what that is. I, my, uh, but no, I don't know all these stickers. Snow. Snow. Here's another Michael Saylor for three million, and we're getting down into like you know, yeah. two million, three million here. But still, yeah, these are all from March. These are all from like the last week. I mean, I don't know what the total is. I, I download this and you know and add it up in Excel. But and, and sure, some of this is. Some of this is people cashing out to do things. But a lot of these, these high dollar ones, you know it's cashing out because they know the top is in. Right. And that's the point. That's that is the point. It, that is exactly the point. You know, th this is what smart money does. This is what smart money does while everyone cash out back over the summer, late summer, early fall after that last earnings report. Yeah. And and when do you see no, I mean, it's just a balance ownership slash corporate structure nah not really this is what smart money does they sell at the top they sell when everybody else is buying when everybody is being convinced right now that we're in a new bull market that's exactly what's happening we're being told constantly all day that this is this is it you know the fed's gonna cut and it's gonna be bullish well even that, even if the Fed does cut, it's not going to be bullish. But, and there's precedent, plenty of precedent for that. We said that a lot. Um, Fed rate cuts means that they finally figured out what everyone else knew. Yeah. And that's long-term. I, I mean. Ex expectations are declining. Not saying all those sales are for that reason, but sailors 100% and many others too. If there's one person I could not give more, uh, less of a fuck about is Michael fucking Sailor. So let me just say that. I don't care, but the point is, don't derail the point. The point is that this is the time when insiders are selling. That's a signal. Don't derail a signal. That's a signal, okay? I'm not gonna get red herring away from that, but this is NVIDIA here, okay? We're, this is NVIDIA. Look at, I mean, this is going back. This goes back, I mean, to last year, But here's really, all right, right here is where this year starts. You know, and I mean, 170 million. I mean, there's just a lot of selling. Same thing on Apple, I believe. Oh, yeah. I mean, not as bad, not as bad. Uh, AMD. I mean, it doesn't matter whichever one you want. There's no green here. Like, that's the point. There's no green. Nobody's buying. 
Um, they they generally don't anyway. But um, what about AMC? Sorry, Eric. I didn't mean to you know snap at you, but uh, this this is a point that need you know that I wish I just it's not something that people are going to talk about really. You're not going to hear anybody on on CNBC say these things probably. I don't think. Um, of course, we get all these option exercises, and these guys are doing everything on schedules. You know, when as soon as they can, as soon as they're vested, they take them out. Seems like. Anyway, um, we'll come back to that discussion. But was I'm trying to get through this video. The three thousand is is where I want to be at. But you know, you monitor it as it goes. So let's just say that it hits a thousand dollars, and I can see, oh my God, it's still going to go higher. Then I'm going to monitor the situation as it comes. You know, if I see a thousand, and I know. Oh the Jesus! The okay. The chart looks and the pattern looks and and just the news and everything's going then yeah then i'm gonna hold for longer but if i get to a thousand dollars and i can just see it's just oh my god i don't know or it's too gut-wrenching then yeah sell i'm gonna sell um but until that day comes until there's covering and it's just a giant rip um until we get over you know even over a hundred dollars once we get over a hundred oh jesus there, you know i think if so all right so he's not going to do anything until he sees covering okay i mean covering of what <laughs> my question i don't even know what the I'm, I'm gonna look here we're gonna look and see what the latest short interest data report is here uh from our buddy over on reddit the uh, vortex shill um closing bell here we go 14 percent. oh my god so high Oh my God! Oh, cost to borrow. Wow. Oh boy. Oh wow. Yeah. This guy's getting lazy. Every major metric up to end of week. <laughs> Have an awesome weekend. Yeah. This guy's getting tired. I would too. How much? How much can you grift on this shit? How? 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 You know? How much can you say the same thing over and over? I don't know. Ask me. That's what I've been doing for three years. Fourteen <laughs> percent. Oh boy. Oh boy, how many shares is that? That's um, 50, no, sorry, 37 and a half million shares. Is that what it says? Page not found. Okay. Page not, all right, whatever. 37.51 million, right? Yeah, that's it. Cool. doesn't really matter melty's crying a lot today why so bothered kiddos what is this amc zone I've seen this one amc zone hmm amc zone okay anyway what reddit page is this that you're on amc zone Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I got invited to that one by by someone. Okay, well, anyway. Yeah, so what we're seeing, well, look like, looks like we're seeing more splintering in um, the AMC Reddit community. It's another splinter group, it looks like, because you got AMC stock, AMC stocks, um, AMC Zone, you have, there's just a bunch of them. Of course, there's our favorite one. Um, GME Meltdown. <laughs> so, anyway. All right, so that's cool. We, we got we get the idea of this guy here. Um, I want to move to something here that, that is just, it's, you know, this is, oh, I always say this, but, uh, you know, it, this is absolutely ridiculous, okay? So, we have this guy. Bam Investor. Bam Investor. Jim uh, Savoldi. I'm waiting for this because I've never really... I, like The only time I've seen Bam is on Twitter before he blocked me because, you know... Of course. Like a lot of these people, they, they have no spine. Um, do I have time to talk about Trey? Yes. Well, I'll do that after... 
uh, Bam here. So, yeah, Trey's back in the news. Oh, boy. And I haven't even watched the Plain Bagel video, to be honest with you. I haven't even watched it. Uh, you know, it's like it's like that great line from Pee-wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> don't you want to see the movie, Pee-wee? Movie. I don't, I don't need a movie, Dottie. I've lived it. <laughs> I paraphrased there. But he doesn't need to see the movie because it's about him. He lived it. Well, yeah, same thing here. Uh, the Finfluencers, hey, baby, I've been following them longer than he has. Anyway, I also find it, well, anyway. <laughs> no comment on Plain Bagel right now. But, bam, investor. Behavioral analysis of markets. <laughs> okay, AMC stock update. Dark pool plus HFT smoking gun price manipulation. Let's go. Hey, this is Jim. It is 9.18 a.m. in San Francisco, California on March the 22nd. Please note that all discussions, analysis, and information presented are for general information on educational purposes only and should not be oh. financial or any other form of professional advice. So I'm going to start off with a real quick view of the Nemoy Terminal. Right, Dead in the water here. Yeah. The price can move back above the daily trigger, which is now at $4.43. I'll remove the uh, monthly trigger and the weekly trigger, and then we'll zoom in to this uh, sort of pinning period here and take a look at where we are right now. You guys can see that violet. I'll go ahead and go full screen. You guys can see that violet line, which is the hourly trigger, and the blue line, which is the daily trigger. And you can see how... Um, it's really triggered here today, I can the, tell. Yeah, right. God. Who are suppressing price have been able to turn this away. People who are suppressing oh. price, right, of course. We're going to get a lot of that. We're going to get a lot of theys. We're going to hear a lot of theys with no antecedent. Oh, I know that because we are, we're talking about dark pools, HFT smoking gun. Mm -hmm. Like how he censors gun because he's a bitch. Right. Oh, yeah. The logical. It's the YouTube algorithm. Right. No, it's not that you're being dunked on by the YouTube algorithm. It's that you're a fucking idiot. With 30,000 subscribers. 30,000 subscribers on this fucktard. Okay, now, but we're just, we're just paying attention to the logic here, okay? Well, because it, it, you're going to love it. Exactly where they need to time and time again, including... Exactly where they need... Like, like, there's uh, a specific... The mm -hmm. They need it to be at. Like what all of them. Time? All of them together, you know? That's the thing. All of the... All, they all need it. need it. All of them. Massive air quotes. Yep. Like, what the fuck is this? This is it. Once again, it goes back to this whole undefined, like boogeyman sort of thing. Uh, yeah, these the, the this thing that is so neb. They say all these nebulous things that mean fucking nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Yep. But but it doesn't uh, matter. It confirms the bias. Yep. Oh yeah. Um. Again, until we move above that. Um. Uh, daily trigger we're we're dead in the water i'm going to show you guys um some specifics about how they manipulated this especially last friday Mark oh great he's getting to specifics because there hasn't um, been a single fucking thing that's been specific in this video so oh just wait oh just wait until we get to those specifics it's 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 fantastic some of you may know I've, I've been capturing the time and sales and recording it every day for eight months now have you know well over a terabyte of um data okay and it's, on it's that allowed little me bit, to go through on, on things just a little bit i, I yep. know i'm interjecting a lot here but i'm That's fine. So glad that he's been logging that it's the only reason that i wish al from boston gets past the motion dismissed because i want to see this dumbass on a stand explaining himself in front of a real boy lawyer and yep. so, how exactly does this prove anything, Mr. Bam? Things after hours oh. and really <laughs> things and try to figure out what it is that they're doing to so easily manipulate the stock. And um, <sighs> they, I, I know most of the tricks at this point. I'm going to show one to you guys. He's going. He knows most of the tricks. He's going to show a specific trick. Let's watch this now. Oh, it's it's it's, uh, it's great. Let's, it's let's great. Gather around. Right gather around the clown. And what do we got here? What is this? A fuck? Some kind of weird roulette wheel or something? I don't know what the fuck. Like a dartboard? 
That's how he's picking these stocks. Let's just throw a dart. <laughs> it was really, really obvious. He probably oh! So, picking stocks if that's what he actually did. Did you hear what he just said? Back that up. Oh, my God. And... Um, and I know most of the tricks at this point. I'm going to show one to you guys right here. That's that was really, really obvious. So it's really, really obvious. It's so obvious that even an idiot so can see it. Obvious. Why? How does it I keep? Yeah. Incredulous. If it is so fucking obvious, how come no one? Like what? I. Ah. Uh, yep. I know. Okay, it's really obvious. Follow your whistleblower so, report if it's so fucking obvious. Oh, he does. He does every day, he said. If it's so obvious. I'm sure. I'm it's fine. so obvious that this idiot can see it, all right? We should be able to. You guys right here that's, that was really, really obvious. So um, what we're looking at here is I've pulled out round lot trades. Um, most of you know only round lot trades print to the tick. Uh, so so here's where he starts going off into some bullshit, you know, where he starts saying, well, most of you know this, and I don't know that. I don't know what he's talking about. I'll be the first to fucking say I have no idea what he's talking about right here, and I have not looked it up, and I'm not going to because it doesn't – Just we'll just, we'll just continue to watch, okay? We're just going to continue to watch, but you'll you'll see what I mean. By the way, also – Here's a guy who is analyzing data, okay? He's analyzing numbers, data, statistics, things like that. So what are we looking at? We're looking at a fucking WordPad document? He typed it into a WordPad document? Don't I mean... They, doesn't, doesn't Microsoft have a specific thing for data analysis? Yes, PowerPoint. It's called PowerPoint. It's called PowerPoint. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's, it's, it starts with an E, I think. Oh, God, what is it called? Right. Mm. Yeah. I just thought that was hilarious. Like, wait a minute. And, and I watched this in my car on the way home from work yesterday, and I thought, that's odd that he's got that in a Word document. And then I just pulled it up at home here, and I see, it's not even Word, it's WordPad. This motherfucker doesn't even have Office. <laughs> What a fucking cheapskate. Or he's not even using, like, that, that's open office. About what, that's just, yeah. Well, I mean, he could use open office and have their version of Excel, but it should tell right. you how cheap this motherfucker is. He can't spend the $10 a month to get fucking well, office. It's not even that. Microsoft it's like, why, why would you present this data this way? In why wouldn't way. you present it some, in, in a way that you can actually manipulate it and work with, not manipulate, I don't want to use that word, but you can you can move well, the data around. Let's right. Let's be honest here that he's going to give us a bunch of numbers and data, and I bet you the numbers yeah. are right. It's the asshole manipulating the numbers. Oh, yeah. Wrong. Of course, yeah. Here here we go. You know. Printed price. So he's talking about, all right, let, let's hear what he says here about round lot trades. Round lot trades. Um most of you know only round lot trades print to the tick. Uh, so if it doesn't print, if price discovery doesn't print to the tick, then it doesn't print really? to the charts. Really? Because I'm sitting here looking right. at Reddit from yesterday, and I see trades that are like 1, 25, 2, uh, 50, 8, 10, 2, 5, 3. Those aren't round lots. Round lots are 100 shares. Correct. Those Correct. Are round lots. Um, Everything prints to the ticket. Everything right. prints. Even your stupid fucking dark pool shit prints to well, fucking tape. Now, Shut up. Now, I, now, whole, and exactly, now, and which is what we're going to get to here. You know, you're, you, 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 you jumped the gun a little bit, but, uh, yeah, Manuel says Google, Google Sheets is as good as Excel. And, I, you know, better than in some I, ways. In, in, in some. Free. True, true, true. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't particularly like it, but that's just my. You know, I have a thing against Google, but, you know, it's a personal thing. But, yeah. But anyway, um, uh, yeah. So, yeah, you could have used any that. He could have used fucking uh, – if you, if, you, if you get a Microsoft account, you can use the online Excel, the online version of Excel for free. You can use it. You can save. You can do everything on it. You just have to run it on the web. So, anyway, it's, I, don't, I don't work for Microsoft, but you can. Um, there's so many ways to do this that would have been better. Yeah, there's also like free, there's like just Google like free Excel online, free spreadsheet online, and there's a million that come up like 
air table type stuff. But anyway, um, okay, now, um, here, he's saying round lot, okay. Um, and he's saying that they... Round lots print to the tape in right. fantasy land, but do continue. Now, he's also making a distinct, he's making a distinction of, of uh, round lot reflect, trades reflected in the data window and printed to the tick chart he even has a non-round lot trade in there that five i know is technically well not a round lot. and he'll what and are you talking about right and he'll 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 yeah he'll go through that you track and more importantly the charts that drive all of the technical indicators that people use um the majority of people use the off-the-shelf technical indicators and a lot of people have also built you know, their own homegrown algorithms um, that run off of or piggyback some of the different Oops. Um, out of the window. technical indicators that that are mostly momentum based. MACD, stochastics, RSI, um, all of those. So when these guys are able to dark pool trades at really strategic points in time. Uh-huh. Points, uh, so he's operating under this. This 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 misunderstanding assumption that um, dark pool trades are hidden, that they don't affect the price, yada yada yada. That's what he's coming to here. So I'm just gonna we're gonna let him just you know dig his grave. I mean, there's no there's no two ways about this. He's wrong. At really strategic points in time and points uh, of of price potential price discovery what happens is that they're gaming all of those technical indicators it's sort of a reverse engineering approach not that hard to do you just have to think like a criminal and um obviously someone out there or <laughs> mm -hmm. one to no one it, bitch doesn't it right yep jesus like criminals because they are criminals so real quickly here I started to take a look last Friday, um, March the 18th, pre-market. So this is starting at 628 my time. This is West Coast, USA. Add three hours for uh, New York. And I wanted to kind of look at round lot trading activity, pre-market, and then going into uh, the opening bell and after the opening bell. Obviously, you would think that you'd have much more, naturally have much more activity um, after the opening bell than you would have prior to the opening bell. Well, that's an assumption, and you would think is not a valid, uh, that, that's not a valid uh, statement to make. You would think, well, hmm, there's a lot of things that you would think in the market, right? Well, just because you would think doesn't mean that it should. And in fact, it's the you would thinks they get people caught in situations where they lose money. Oh yeah, you would think that Boeing would would Boeing's stock price would tank uh, because of X Y Z, or you would think that uh, that you know X Y Z would shoot to the moon because of blah blah blah. Just because you would think it would happen doesn't mean it will. And and why is he talking that way? He t he said he was going to show proof. Now he's thinking. Now he's saying, well, but but it seemed like there should be more trading after the bell, not before it. That's fucking weak. That is weak as fuck. Obviously, you would think that you'd have much more natural. And he starts it with a fucking obviously. God damn this motherfucker. Obviously, you would think that you'd have much more naturally have much more activity. Um, after the opening bell than you would have prior to the opening bell, and especially on a Friday options expiration and a... Not necessarily, not the way I see it. I mean, if you need to buy or sell a fuck ton of shares to square up some options, I mean, and that's the other thing which we'll get to is who's he talking about here? He's talking about it as, like, as, as if it's a unified group that's supposedly doing this, but that's ridiculous. So, but, I mean... Everybody knows, uh, you know, basically, I think that, you know, liquidity is lower uh, in the pre-market and aftermarket. There aren't as many participants. So that can be an advantage for, for you at times. There could be a points where that's a good thing. OK, so there are reasons why things are done the way they are. I'm not claiming to know why, but I'm just saying 
what you can sh- see is that okay, volume is a lot lower, liquidity is da 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 da. The spreads are da 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 da. Right? That those are parameters. Somebody made a choice. I'm taking advantage of these parameters. What's the problem? It's you. Anybody can trade at any fucking time. What is the problem? Well, we'll see. Especially on a monthly expiration. The price isn't doing so what in, they think it ex- exactly. They like That's bingo. Theory in, in, in reality, historically, you have a big, big volume and a lot of trading activity. So the some of the things I'm looking at are it's much more important to look at trading activity than absolute volume because it's, it's okay all right well that may be there may be some truth to that but one thing that he's not looking at here is price so that's a glaring omission from this whole discussion he's not he doesn't make he doesn't talk about price at all and i'm i'm sorry but the thing that determines whether somebody's going to buy or sell oftentimes is the price what price and and what price it's being offered at the bid correct exactly right like he talks about like he only cares about you know the what was the term he used that that you know relative volume trading activity volume. so the yeah, some the of the things activity, i'm looking at but like mm-hmm. but like that 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 isn't as important you know we, like we were talking about earlier you know the volume and the the lack of volume signals a lack of liquidity which messes with price discovery so like yeah dude like you're 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 not telling the full story to your audience and i know no. but right like, of course yeah okay yeah it's much more important to look at trading activity than absolute volume because it's it's when they choose to send um orders they choose yep. discoverable round lot orders trades rather into the lit exchange versus hiding them in the dark pool hiding them in the dark pool here's this language hiding them in the dark pool the only thing that's hidden in the dark pool is pending orders you fuck like uh, and they're not hidden who's doing them and, yeah, they're not they hidden go the tape. they they go to the tape and and what are those i mean oh, god damn it i mean let, let's keep we're not going to get through this let's keep let's keep going the ability to easily manipulate price so here we go uh this is starting at 628 and 21 but but uh, okay all right fine one second so that's the way you read that and here's a round lot trade of 300 shares uh at four dollars and 27 cents okay so he does have the price on there but Dropped like off. but this could be three fucking cells next to each other this could be a row here. These could be rows in a fucking spreadsheet. Yeah. Label each of the rows. So that, you know, uh, like larger numbers, like um, these down here are bigger and it's spaced out more. Well, uh, you know, they would be lined up. That's amazing what a modern fucking spreadsheet from 35 years ago could, could do for this guy. He probably has a fucking pad, of, one of those pads of paper with all the columns on it that bookkeepers used to use. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. It's ridiculous. Time. Those are a lot of fun. They are. They can't. Yes. No. I'm. But <laughs> I would show it on the screen at least. You know. Anyway. First to two here, and you can just see the the seconds here. Um, the hour minutes are gone. Here's the seconds. So Fucking again, white twenty one seconds. Yep. Okay. Um, but just look, look at all those ones that are in twenty one seconds all together, and then again at twenty six. Like, yeah, it's all fucking white noise. He well, he's going to address that, and he's got a theory on it. But yeah, more or less. But yeah, this is again during the same second round lot for a hundred shares, and then right here at twenty six seconds, so six twenty eight and twenty six seconds, uh, they hit the market pre market with uh, some high frequency trading, and you have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten trades during a single one second time stamp okay so okay round lot yeah right exactly so here's the thing he says they hit the market with some high frequency trading this all these all these 100 share lots whatever blah, 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 blah. and it's like dude who are they like how do you know exactly who this are you don't website. know Christian. Yep. This goes back to the West Christian lawsuit with Mullen, where they just 
print it off the, the NASDAQ thing and then attach it to the different brokers. And the brokers are like, we're doing this for all of our customers. Like they were like, right. So who's they? The they is our fucking customers, you dumb motherfucker. Right. Like this doesn't prove all these millions of shares that trade from all these thousands of investors. And you're singling out how many trades in a one second period. Who the fuck cares? You dumb piece of shit. Right. Right. Who exactly. Cares? Not to mention the fact you that cannot, you cannot define uh, intent from the tape. No, you no. And and shit. and you cannot determine who. On, on on whose behalf anyone is acting and you can't determine who was acting so you don't know the broker you don't know the broker's customer you don't know anything you know nothing you just know that at this moment these shares were traded for this price that's all you know and in this second in this one second um you know all of these orders all of these um you know, yeah, orders of 100 shares or whatever came through and they were all executed at roughly the same price. Now, here's the thing, too. They're not all at the same price. And one of them, one of them indicates, well, I'm going to go back and listen. To, I want to hear exactly what he says again, how he frames this. But there's one particular price, a lot either. One, one, two, one or two of them and this 1064. Right. But. Let me, let's go back. I want to hear how he talks about that again, just real quick. 99 shares, again, during the same second round. Because he says that these are round lot orders that are round lot trades that are reflected in, that, that are sent to the lit exchange. That's what he said. He said because only round lot print to the, to the uh, tick chart. So going off of what he said here, these should be, lit exchange so the all these like went to the new york stock exchange or you know whatever right okay just want to make sure 100 shares and then right here at 26 seconds so 628 and 26 seconds uh they hit the market pre-market with uh some high frequency trading and you have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten trades during a single one second time stamp Okay, so but they weren't all ten round, round lots. lots tr that's a lot. true. Ten round lots. Right, that's true. Lots trade, and they print to the time and sales. Right, only round lots print to the time and sales. Then you move down I here. here. I mean, that's that 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 is. I mean, okay. First of all, round that uh, that that statement only round lot trades print to time and sales is is it's incorrect that is old i just looked it up a few minutes ago odd lot trades started printing to the tape in 2013 2013 is when odd lot trades trades for less than 100 shares that link in started started trading uh printing to the tape yeah i will give you here it is on SIBO. um yeah Da, 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 da. Let me just uh, copy that. Copy. Paste. Okay, just pasted it in there. There you go. SIBO talking about it. Um, they're talking about it in 2021, but they say in 2013. Here it is. I'll put it on here too. Oops. I actually have made this small again. One second. Um, This is on SIBO, uh, Insights, whatever little e-zine they got here. In 2013, odd lots or orders less than 100 shares started printing to the tape. Since then, odd lots have become a significant component of the market. Yada, 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 Right? Talks all about it. Talks about liquidity. Talks about, you know, all the times of day. Just meme stocks. It's a good article. I'm not going to go through it because I, I, you know, just want to barrel through this garbage here, and then we talk about Trey, but yeah, so that that's verifiably wrong. Where the fuck is it? Here, okay, continuing. Seconds, thirty-three seconds, thirty-three seconds. Oh, yeah, and well, I'm just kidding. Seconds. All right, basically, what ends up happening is. You have 21 total round lot trades print to the data window and tick during a full two-minute period. 
But what I want to concentrate on is this, this statistic right here. During a single one-second timestamp, they trade 10 round lots. Okay. They. This is pre-market. The market in general. To opening bell. All of whom are manipulating it. So uh, every one of those, I mean, whether it was a, one entity or a group of people that were in cahoots, it was all manipulative, false trading, according to BAM. Now, the other problem here is this. Um, I like how he knows the intent of market participants by just looking at the tape. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's fabulous, isn't it? Yeah, because it all happened at the same time. It must be bad acting. 30, I just went back just a little bit here. All right. Basically, what ends up happening is you have 21 total round lot trades print to the data window and tick during a full two minute period. But what I want to concentrate on is this, this statistic right here. During a single one second timestamp, they trade 10 round lots. OK, this is pre-market. Now let's jump to opening bell. OK. We have at one second, at 6.30 and one second, we have this big bulge NYSE reported uh, volume and trade. Then we have this round lot right here. That one isn't a round, round lot. lot. N that isn't either. Right. Those aren't round lots. I don't, I don't know why. Lots are in series of 100. Don't know why he's saying that. Yeah, I don't know why he's saying that. Stop lying. I mean, it's it, it, right. Okay, this is one second after. This is four seconds after. Okay, these this one, two, three, four, five. These trades are called condition derivatively priced. They don't find their way onto the data window and into the tick chart. Okay, so now we've got five seconds without a. Wait, what, what did he say? Uh, why don't they? Condition derivatively wait, wait, so he's one, two, five three, seconds three, four, without a. Hold, yeah, hold on. I'm gonna go back. Cause without, oh, sorry. Let me just go back. We'll hear it again. And trade. Okay. Me, now let's jump to. This is at the market open. Okay. okay. We have at one second, at six thirty and one second. We have this big bulge NYSE reported uh, volume and trade. Then we have this round lot right here. One more round lot here. Okay, this is one second after. So he's considering anything over one hundred to be a round lot. But, but then he can he goes says 150, 461. Right. The next following five are not round lots. Well, hold on. He says yeah, why, dude. He says why. I don't know what what he says though. After okay, these this one two three four five these trades are called condition derivatively priced. They don't find their way onto the data window. Why not? The tick chart. Okay. I don't. I don't know what that means. Derivatively priced. Um, but you don't show the chart to prove that. Number one. Number two. What was the spread at that time? Right. Like, this is all stuff that's missing from his bullshit data analysis. This goes back to what I said earlier that the numbers aren't wrong. It's the asshole manipulating the numbers. Yeah. Uh, um. I'm giving you the full information. Okay, that's SEC Rule 611B7, which I'm looking up right now. It's regulation, Reg NMS. Um, what, what did I say? I said 611B7. Um, 611B. These goddamn fucking regulations here. Um, 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 um. Oh, oh, okay. It's an average price transaction, VWAP. So there are order types that can be uh, executed at the average price or the VWAP. And it's called benchmark prices rather than current quoted prices, such as volume weighted average price transactions and other types of average price transactions, rule 611B7. So uh, um, so it's not really relevant, I guess, to, to what we're talking about. 
Okay, so those don't. Okay, fine. And and also, if you look, the the price is lower. It's four twenty. So, um, but <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Now we've got five seconds without a single round lot trade, printing to the time and sales with a tick. Okay, so he's got five seconds with no round lot trade printing to time and sales tick chart. Okay, then? Then we have at eight seconds after the open, we have this 400 share round lot. At 10 seconds after the open, we have this 322 share. So, Okay, again, not a round lot because it's 322, but I mean, so the thing is, if, if it, like he's considering it a round lot because it's 300, but what about the other 22? Like, is that, that's not considered, anyway. Yeah. There's another problem with this particular entry though. Look at the price on this. I don't know if you can see it. 4.2199, okay? Now, this, what this tells me is that this is a dark pool trade. Why? Well, because if it's a lit exchange transaction, you will not have any sub penny executions. Uh, that is um, rule um, SEC rule six twelve. It's called the sub penny rule. Um, it is a it's a rule that allows brokers and dealers to trade in the unregular the uh, the uh, dark pools wholesale wholesale. Um, Wholesale exchanges like Citadel, private, you know, what they do. Their ECNs. Um, basically, uh, participants uh, who display the bid or offer the provided, are provided the rebate in exchange for providing liquidity. It's capped at 0.3 cents. Subpenny trading occurs when a market participant in an undisplayed market center, such as a dark pool, steps ahead of a displayed limit order by a fraction of a cent and captures the spread. When the buyer receives it, while the buyer receives a better deal, the seller misses out on the opportunity to fill the order and the liquidity provider does not receive a rebate. So retail brokers accept subpenny orders because they're allowed to secure the best possible price for their client, even if the trade is not on an exchange or ECN and the access fees included in the broker's commission. So um, basically the rule, uh, the subpenny rule, states that the minimum price increments for stocks over $1 must be one cent and stocks under $1 can be increment by 0 0.0001 cents, $1, sorry, 0 0.0001 dollars. So one ten thousandths of a dollar, I guess. I don't know. Um, the, the rule banned subpenny quoting, not subpenny trading, okay, so the practice of subpenny trading persisted following the new rule in the off exchange markets. Now, this is important because what's he saying here? What is he saying? He's saying that this, this these were lit exchange trades. And I'm saying it can't be. And he's saying that dark pool trains don't print to the tape. It, right. Non so that non hmm. round lot trades don't print to the tape. So he's but contradicting yeah, himself. Yeah. Right. But yet, somehow, here we have it. Okay? It can't, sub penny trading cannot happen in a displayed market. It does not. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not going to be displayed. This is the, this is the you know, confusing thing. Because it will be displayed once it has executed on the time and sales tape. You will see it. That's why he sees it. So he's wrong about dark pool trades and uh, what, what would he call them? The uh, round lot trades, not printing to the tape. Non round odd lot trades print to the tape and dark pool trades print to the tape. That's why we see the sub penny transaction here. Um, round lot, odd lot, irrelevant now. Fucking irrelevant. Sorry, dude. You're back in 2012. They started showing them in 2013. You're wrong. Read a book, stay current, read the news, do some fucking research, because you're wrong. Secondly, dark pool is not hidden. It's printed to the tape. It affects the price. Stop fucking grifting about it. The only thing is it's not shown as a pending order in a limit book. That's the only thing. 
But, I mean, these dark pool trades that come from retail investors, I don't really think they stay on a, a book for very long. They get covered. All right. House. Hang on a sec. I love how on 350 Sorry. Or he stops giving us the price information. Um, yeah, sorry. I dinner logistics here. Um yeah, no problem. Okay. Um now say that again. I'm sorry. I love how on the 315 2024 stuff he stops giving us the price quotes. Yeah. Right. Okay, I'm going to continue here, but I just want to make that clear that this all is garbage, basically. It's all garbage. Um, you know, because he says here, well, anyway, continuing. Only four total round lot trades are posted to the lit exchange during the first 11 seconds of trading on a Friday monthly options expiration. Okay. So he, again, his whole beef here, now all this other bullshit, whatever aside, his problem is that he feels like there should be more trades. There's not enough trades, and so something's off. Mm, that is the weakest argument I've ever heard. I mean, that's so fucking weak. Remember, they printed 10 round lots in a one-second time period pre-market, but yet... Because market participants traded at that point. Because that's... Because, so what? So fucking what? The first 11 seconds of trading, there were only four round lot trades posted, okay? So they're dark pooling all of the buying pressure. Um, motherfucker <laughs> oops this is what happens when you get fired up and don't check the screen to make sure you're not muted um so lol yeah um so basically what, what what he's saying here uh he's assuming that all of these are sell orders i mean he hasn't shown us that that these are all sell orders he hasn't shown us that any of them are uh he said that all of the buy orders are dark pooled that's because that's a that's a verb now to dark pool something. I know Lynn's going to love that one. So uh, again, I'm not going to I'm not interested in disproving Russell's teapot because nobody has shown anything here. I'm not going to go to a time and sales window and show that these are likely a combination of buy and sell orders. I'm not going to, but um, I, I, it would be interesting maybe. But I, I don't I just don't care to. Anyway. Um, Assumption after assumption after assumption. Same thing as always. And only showing in the lit exchange what they want to show to prevent any true price discovery. So, they, you know, this is really... How does that prevent price discovery? Yeah. I'm not sure how. Um, and you're showing... Right. He's showing dark pool trades here with these sub penny prints, so I don't... It's, it's so, so fucking ignorant. Like this guy, he thinks he's so fucking smart. Like this is a narcissist. He thinks that he's he's so smart. He doesn't think that anybody will fucking double check anything he's doing. He puts it in an, a fucking hard to read format. You know, I mean, it's he doesn't. Intentional. Exactly. He doesn't give you access to the document itself. Like what the fuck? What a clown. What a fucking clown. All right.
practically an impossibility if you're thinking in terms of natural. Okay, uh, this is great. Any true price well, discovery. So, you know, but, this but is really an impossibility if you're thinking in terms of natural. Of right. He's tools are price discovery between market participants. Yeah. What 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 are you trying to say here? Because you're full of shit. I mean, and and right, and how many people actually? How many how many traders or investors in general are going to look at the level two order book before they place a trade? Anyway, they want to buy something or they want to sell something. They know what the price is. We know what the price is. The NBBO. It, you might get a better fill. You might not get a better fill. You know, I, I mean, what is the issue? I don't understand what the issue is. There is no issue. It's, it's, it's people have learned about these details before they've even learned what the fucking basic point is, which is to buy and sell things and make profit. Like, that's the problem. They get hung up on all these fucking details about plumbing and electrical wiring and circuits, and they forget oh, this is a copy machine. I'm supposed to make copies on it, like, or whatever. They, 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 they can't see the forest for the fucking leaves on the trees. They can't see, they've lost the plot, in other words. All right. You know, this is really an impossibility if you're thinking in terms of natural um, human trading activity. Well, we know it's mostly not human. It's a good thing we know that. It's a good thing we know that it's most, what, 60, 70, 80% automated trading. We know that. And it's not illegal. And it's not, you know, that's just the way it is. When you place a trade with your broker, there is no human that involved. It's completely automatic. Your broker uses a computer system to receive that order, send it to their market maker or whoever, and it's handled automatically. That's not, there's no intervention by a fucking human. So sue the fucking exchange then. Like, what, what the fuck? Of course it's not going to reflect human. Or it's like a quant fund or a hedge fund or something that's trading based off of prices or moving averages or something or news algorithms or whatever. So what? What's the problem? Oh, right. The price isn't doing what you wanted it to do. That's, so it must be illegal. Got it. Fuck you. Um... And especially on an options expiration. Oh, yeah. I mean, so. Matt, like, I want to play that just this, what he just said and again as a whole. And then I'm going to say one last thing about how fucking retarded it is. This is really an impossibility if you're thinking in terms of natural um, human trading activity. Um, and especially on an options expiration. Spoken by someone who has no fucking clue whatsoever and we we've talked about or at least i don't know if i've talked about it on your channel but i've talked about it with other people that mm -hmm. up the, oh and especially on an options uh on on you know an options expiration date well yeah that's kind of the point you have all these these options and and liquidity dries up because people are either trading or selling these options or getting ready to you know execute on these options like to be to with such confidence state how ignorant you are of market mechanics is wow way to say the quiet part out loud right exactly and that's what i was going to say like to sit there and say oh this is a uh, very unnatural especially on an option expiration it's like well do you realize what happens when people buy and sell contracts like there's there are automatic functions that these market makers have that handle the hedging uh, of, of the contracts. And when people unwind their contracts, when they sell them or they close their positions, those hedges get undone. That's inherently not triggered by, I mean, I guess ultimately it is triggered by a human, but uh, you know, it's not like somebody sat there and said, okay, I wanna trade 500 shares. It's that somebody closed a contract, cl somebody closed five contracts at the money or whatever. Anyway, I'm going to continue here because I got somebody else in the room talking. So, in addition to, you know, this huge smoking gun, which compares, you know, 10 round lots in one second to only four round lots in Ten. 11 seconds well, not after the bell round lots rings, anyway. the following Monday, March the 18th, 
We had 175 total round lot trades during the first 11 seconds. Because there's new options being executed, you dumb fuck. It's right. New week, new weekly options. Oh my God, you're so fucking retarded. It hurts so, my head. And I don't have I know. alcohol Pretty to staggering. handle. You're fucking here's, stupidity. Here's what they do if they want to attack. Um, they, if they want to attack with, you know, what some people they, call ladder attacks. You know, I've, I've shown you guys burst basket <laughs> selling activity and bid bombing selling. Yeah, that's, um, I mean, you know, he knows exactly what he's doing with this. This is all dog whistle. It's all dog whistles. You know, it's all fucking dog whistles, ladder attacks and bid bombing and shit. All right, continuing. Activity um, and just stepping price down, 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 pounding with high frequency trading. What I found is that um, to really make it even easier to pound the market to the downs, AMC to the downside specifically, um, is that they will will have a lull in prints to the tick. Um, I like how he had to redirect they're, they're himself unnatural. because he tried to suggest that right. it's a market thing, that they do it to the whole market. Wow, you know what? I sure would like to see that. You know, you look at, at NASDAQ or the S&P. Man, they're really pounding it to the downside. Oh, yeah, right. it's been rallying since last the beginning of this year. Right. But, oh, yeah, they're, they're totally fucking pounding it to the downside. I, oh. I, you know what? I noticed the same fucking thing last night when I was driving home and I was watching this video. I was like, oh, yep, I'm going to make a note of that right there. <laughs> so you caught it, too. <laughs> what a clown. Lengths of time to not see a single round lot uh, print to the tick. And so... That's sort of a red flag that they're they're dark pooling uh, trade during that period. Then they'll follow it up with aggressive high frequency trading um, on down ticks to really gain that advantage and manipulate price. Again, to downside. this is the only so, reason that I wish <laughs> that Al from Boston would get past a motion to dismiss because I want to see him on a stand be grilled and exposed for what a fucking fraud he is in a federal court yep this is terrible pulls here that i pulled um again from 315 trading um dark pooling and high frequency trading selling attacks so um remember we only had a tiny number of round lots that were printing during the first 11 seconds of trading um on march the 15th here's why so you have a full six seconds with no ticks printing. Then once you, you move into 15 seconds into the open, we had this four second period. Then again, they follow it up. This is like, you know, hanging out the left jab. And then this is they, the right cross. I'm a little right late here. on that. High frequency trading, 23 trades in, a one, in one second on down tick. Then here's another. Yep. Ten full seconds with not a single round lot printing to the tick. Prove okay. Clearly, prove that that moving, is anything uh, manipulative. What proof do you have? Right. Other right. Than your own suppositions. You have nothing. Fucking nothing. No. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. What more can you say? I mean, he, he's starting with a conclusion and trying to find evidence that he can mold and meld to fit. To an audience that is too ignorant to ask questions. That that is what I see here. It's not that they're too ignorant to ask questions. Well they, they just they just don't, right. For whatever reason, yeah, right. They, he knows that they won't ask questions. Ignorant, whatever. Retarded, I don't know. Don't care. But they're not asking. Um actual intended buying activity in <laughs> Lynn. <laughs> five seconds. Here's 14 seconds, and you can see the time period here, 6.30 and 36 seconds, 6.31 and, and 48 seconds to 52 seconds, 51 to 05 of the next minute. Well, he, and he, then, he, how um, he has time to do his laundry uh, you know, is he clearly doesn't do his laundry. Seconds, his mom um, still does it for him. Right, at least she doesn't have to take it. That's how that laundry She doesn't have to take it far to his bedroom, which is right around the corner from the, the <laughs> washer in the basement. <laughs> Oh, my God. Yep. Of not having any prints um, is, is a, you know, it's an easy tell what they're doing there. Now, here's where they follow up with the high frequency. Uh, 
at 6, 36, and 11 seconds, 52 trades in one second, all down tick. There's 31 so trades fat. in one like, second, all down ticks he, at 28 seconds uh, after, uh, 37 oh, seconds after. Oh, according to him, according to him, they're all right. down ticks, but he doesn't show his data. Again, it's not the data that's lying. It's the asshole giving it to you. Right, in the context in which he's framing it, you know, like, I mean, why are you not showing the actual time and sales window here? Like, anytime I've referenced time and sales, and I have before. Time and sales window and the spread. Right, which, the, you know, if you use a good, offer. if you and, it, and if you use, like, I don't know, to Fidelity's, for example, would show, it would show the spread that was in effect at the time the trade was executed. So you could look across the line, it would tell you the price it was executed at, tell you the the uh, the exchange, it would tell you the the uh, the the, uh, the bid price, the ask price at the time, not now, but what was it then? You know, uh, the bid size, the ask size, the exchange, the bid exchange, the ask exchange. You know, it would tell you all that. So you all you you look at it and say, okay, yeah, this was executed at the ask. So that was a buy. This was executed at the bid. That was a sell. This was executed in the middle. So that was a dark pool trade. We don't really know. We can't tell, you know, and, and it was very clear. Why wouldn't you show that? I don't know. Good question. The reason why he won't show that is because he's a deceptive piece of shit. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Um, 46 trades in one second on a down tick. So, again, these are all um, your, your dark pooling here creating this uh, artificial lull. Uh, oh, okay, but you're not, so you, you're pointing to the place where there's no round, quote, supposedly no round lot trades printing to the lit exchange tape, which is the only, there's only one tape, but um, which includes dark pool. But now he's going back and saying in those lulls there, that's when they were dark pooling. Okay, we'll show that then. Show us the tape. Show us the off-exchange executions. That's all it is. It's off-exchange. But he won't do that. I don't know. Because he thinks they're not on the tape? I don't know exactly. I don't know. I don't get it. This guy is like living in like 1996. That's the sense I get from this guy. If he's not intentionally grifting, which I think he's doing. But I think his, his le level of understanding is like mid-90s. Like, things are different now. I mean, not that much, not that much different. Retail investors are still idiots and, you know, everything like that. But and, and psychology is still psychology and, you know, the fundamentals of the market and all that haven't changed. But the technology and the way we interface with it has and the feedback we get from it also has like off exchange trades being reported to the uh, consolidated tape as of 2013 so get with the times buddy pounding with um you know this could be burst basket or bid bombing whatever but they're all uh down what, to what even do these terms one mean? second so does he have a citation for the definition for his terms does he explain his terms does it like what no. does this shit mean Other no than whatever he says it means. i don't i don't know but i heard i think he mentioned seller boxing before so if that gives you any sense of the where these terms come from they come from, like, you know, They're fucking meaningless. They're stock no stocktips.com circa 1999, okay? Like, yeah. Anyway, continuing here. Obviously, 52 trades in one second is, is high frequency, and, and, and so are those. Nope. Well, um, sir. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Did you hear what he just said? <laughs> Listen to this. Yeah. Listen. Uh, down tick trades in a single one second. So obviously, 52 trades in one second is is high frequency, and and, and so are those. How do we? You know, hmm, 52 trades are are high because there were 52 trades at the same exact time. Um. Now I, I'm just I, you know, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't there more than 52 people that are participating in the stock market at any given time? Like. You know. So imagine that I, I, it's, it's just crazy. Like nobody else was trading, but some high frequency trader fired off 52. I mean, it's crazy. Like, 
that that they would it's like Moses parting the Red Sea, you know, for these hedgies to come in and do their all of their trades at one time like that. Or or it's, you know, a few from here, a few from there, or one from 52 participants. We don't fucking know. That's the point here. We don't no. And so you to sit in there and say, yeah, it's it's high frequency trades. Well, what was the price it was executed at? Uh, he doesn't even say. This goes back. He doesn't even show. Yeah. So and this goes back to what we said earlier. You can't determine intentionality from the tape and you can't determine which market participant made that order and what customers of that particular market participant, if it's done beneficially for another person. From the tape, right? It's it. All it's telling you. He is, but yeah. He's fucking no, AMC Nostradamus over here. He can tell you what's going on by just looking at the fucking tape. Right, and at the 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 most that we can glean from this, which is not much, because it doesn't even tell us if these are buying or selling of shares. You know, so we don't even know that much. But assuming that you could know that much. You know, you might be able to you could you could come up with a few possibilities like, OK, this is a sell order. OK, so somebody is selling shares. Somebody's closing a position or somebody's opening a short position or, you know, somebody's taking profit or somebody's uh, cutting a loss or a, a option hedge is hedging or de hedging. Those are the choices. Like there's not that many. Really, at the end of the day, the choices are this. Somebody's buying or somebody's selling. Beyond that, why? It doesn't matter. You don't, and you're absolutely right. You can't tell intentionality, but it doesn't even matter, even if you could. That broker is selling shares on behalf of a customer. That's it. Some, some broker is said, I got a customer that wants to buy this, so give me, ten, give me whatever of them. That's it. That's all you know. So how, how in the fuck you can read this out of it? I mean, it, it goes beyond Nostradamus. I mean, this is, this is like some, I don't know. Who is that one fucking like Oracle guy? Uh, not, not Larry, not, uh, not that Oracle, not Ellison. Um, oh, he's like a new age guru. Um, Bash Bashar? <laughs> Does anybody here know Bashar? Okay, Lynn might, I don't know. Anyway, continuing. Good Lord. Um, there's the final note there. It's uh, I went back and I looked on, on Monday, compared uh, the trading activity as far as round lot prints to the tick, and we had 175 round lot trades. Yeah, like those those aren't round on lot trades. No, no, they're not. Um, <sighs> 175 total round lot trades during first 11 seconds on Monday compared to eight on Friday. Oh boy, wow. Big difference in those numbers. Okay, let's see what he says. Um, March the 18th compared to just eight on the Friday. And that's the, that's a, in 11 seconds. But remember where this thing looked really bad was there were only four round lot trades in the first. Um, again, again, this I goes back to eight seconds. This goes back to be. what we started at the beginning of this. Like this is a dude Listen to the white noise VCR tape and hearing go ghosts speak to him in his fucking, you know, living room on his VHS tape. Fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Typo. But you guys get, get my point that um, it's unrealistic to have more trading activity that prints the tick pre-market, right, t t two minutes before the opening bell. So that's his thesis. Um, Here's his thesis. Then you have. Here's the thing, though, that makes that thesis so fucking stupid is most pre market trading is not done by institutional investors. It's done by retail. Well, not not to mint. Not only that, um, <laughs> you know, if you're a market maker and you're dealing with, you know, mm -hmm. hedging and unhedging and, and managing a, a managing a book, you know, managing an inventory. Um, from what I understand, you know, you may, you may have some of that hedging and de-hedging taking place at various times, yeah. you know, because they're looking not only at that security, but across 
their whole portfolio of securities that they're making markets on in the options market. So even though options aren't trading at that time, you're going to get some of that activity as, you know, they set up the position for the day because, you know, of course, yeah, it is an option expiration day. They need to be prepared. And you'll have that outsized trade not only in price, but in, you know, what shares are being traded because the liquidity, the amount of shares available, because again, it's, it's off, it's, it's after hours or pre-market trading. So most of the people that, that run these institutions or run the big firms, they've gone home for the day already. They're not yeah. trading. And so these trades are being executed in low liquidity environments, which they don't want to participate anyway, because lower liquidity, as we know, distorts price discovery. Yeah. So like, why well, it, it, I mean, and at the end of the day, I mean, you know, even in even simpler terms, I mean, it, it results in law, you know, it results in bad, essentially bad deals for, yeah, for retail investors. You, you automatically lose money once you buy it. You've automat- you've already lost more money because the bid price is lower. The bid price is so much lower that, you know, I mean, now you need it to go up even more, basically, to, to, to recover. Also why you see these huge spikes on these meme stocks in after hours and pre-market. Yes. Because when you have a lower liquidity, it's much easier for some jackass on his computer to manipulate the price by putting in a, a huge bid or ask and shoving up the price. Right. Because the order book is a lot thinner. Market. Yeah. Yeah. And as soon as you get to, to regular market hours, <gasps> the price goes back to where it was. It doesn't. Suddenly, right. Crime. Yeah. No, it's because liquidity reentered the market and price discovery corrected from your bullshit manipulation of the market. Correct. So um, I'm just trying to see here if I don't know what um, I am on Thinkorswim here. I don't know what their time in sales. I know it's not great, but um, where in the fuck? I guess I can't get it. I don't know. Anyway, well, I think you can in like the uh, think back historical section, whatever on demand. But if I remember correctly, I don't think theirs was as detailed as, as Fidelity's was. Uh, maybe it's in the charts. Anyway, um, yeah, let's continue here with this. In the same time period after uh, the opening bell rings. So that's what I have from my side, you guys. Again, um, until and unless price can move above this daily trigger, which is slowly declining, um, we're dead in the water here, and you can see they're just, um, you can see by the daily velocity there, they're, they're just ping-ponging and pinning. They're ping-ponging and pinning. Render the hourly velocity. They, they're just wedging yep. us and pinning us and um, really, really trying hard to prevent any upside price discovery. Oh, boy. The main takeaway is that they're dark pooling. I, I hate to be buying. this asshole, but mm-hmm. we're getting close to the end here, so I'm just going to say it. I'm going to be the asshole for you this time. If you take this guy's advice at, 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 and execute trades on it or, or have your investment theory based on it, you deserve to fucking lose all your money. I mean, I don't I don't see any. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with that, you know, saying that. But, yeah, <laughs> that's that cuts through the grease right there. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. For the soundbite here, like, yeah, this guy is, this guy is so far off. This guy is so far off. I I mean, you know, the fact that he has 30,000 subscribers blows my mind. But, of course, if you come on, if you only pop on every couple months or something and come out with some ridiculous garbage like this, uh, I guess it works. But I'm going to refresh the page. I'm curious to see what the newest comments say. If there's anybody, please, Jesus, if there's anybody. Excellent work, Jim. Oh, okay. Excellent work. Thank you for documenting the fraud. Imagine thinking that you can document fucking financial fraud from a time and sales window. Yeah, like the SEC has come out and said, hey, guys, uh, guess what? We can't even analyze this high-frequency data the way that we should be able to. We don't have the technology to even keep up with it. That's the SEC, and, and Jim fucking Savoldi in a basement in San Francisco thinks that he can? What? Like, what? Off of a consumer retail fucking trading platform. 
give me a fucking break. Like, for real. While, while not being able to even do basic data analysis because he refuses to use Excel or anything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in, or open office, you know, or whatever. Fuck, I don't care. Use a Lotus 1, 2, 3 on DOS for all I care. I mean, that would be cool, actually. That would be kind of hip. But, all right, that's it. I'm doing the next. My next stream is coming strictly from DOS. Text command line only. I'm just kidding. Um... Is there any news channels? It would be, but I don't know if it's... Is there any news channels that want to cover this? No. They know that they will be blackballed. Hey, hey. <laughs> listen to this. Uh, listen to this. They know that they will be blackballed on Wall Street like me if they open their mouth. <laughs> oh, Mr. Persecuted. Mr. Persecuted Jim oh, Savoldi. Oh, the poor put upon and, and persecuted baggy who just wow. can't fucking get a job on Wall Street because he's fucking retarded. <laughs> Sorry if I just blew out a bunch of people's eardrums. That's all right. I just really... It can't be as bad as that phone call we looked at last time. So, <laughs> um, at least I'm not like I thought she tried to devour a fucking mic. Uh, uh, Miriam, you're not listening to me. That's still not even slobbering all over my phone. That's still not your your microphone is too nice. So you got to use like an iPhone uh, headset or something. <laughs> Think like a criminal. Um, how far will they drop it? Yeah, a lot of these people, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Jesus, Jim, above and beyond, a saint for retail. A saint for retail. Did you see Boss Blunt and the 2.3 million AMC tokens across three new crypto exchanges? Let's see. I talked about tokenized stocks over a year ago, and all these guys shit all over me. Okay. There's, there's an Ethan, there's yep. an Ethan name drop. <clears throat> Especially Big Gums. Blunt has kicked me, has blocked me like all of the others, so I can't keep up with their stuff, even if I wanted to, which I don't. Well, you could make another account like I did, fucked hard. <laughs> This is the same guy. Yeah, whatever. Those guys didn't even register their shares after Aton, and those guys busted their asses to set up the AMC Project Popcorn dot com site. Oh yeah, right. They did a lot of work going on on Wix dot com to set up their right janky fucking website. So they didn't even bother to register their shares. Oh my god. Oh, oh, he's not even talking about direct registering. He's just talking about in their little log thing, yeah. their little Wix site that they, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. this thing. Oh, wow, look, they got, they got 3 million, oh, wow, 400 participants. 402. They got uh, quite a few to go. Oh, man. Verified share owners. Join the verified share own. oh, look, here is the names. Names and fucking e handles links this is a list of bag holders bag holder list oh farewell to mr brew mr lou bravo uh-huh wow this is writ written better than the fucking supposed uh, obituary wait hold on a second i gotta see something here lou is not name is not on this list he didn't register his shares on here so why are you talking about him he didn't he didn't believe in this shit he wasn't a fan of that. Otherwise, he would have put his name on it. Anyway. Ah, but you're a, you're obliged to you know to to talk about the patron state of bag holding. Oh my God. Okay, now I gotta find this. Um, We're writing his what what is it called when they write the story of the saint? They're they're they're. Uh, oh yeah. They're, they're um, busily trying to write their his. Uh, God, there's there's a. There's I don't know, I, and I'm a recover. I'm there we go. Oh, uh, okay. As a recovering Catholic, I can say I did not know that term. So. <laughs> Neither until I learned Ladies about and gentlemen, it. some YouTuber used the word. Right. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm. I'm not watching this video. We creatively call. Whoop 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 whoop. Now, but he, I think he talks about Trey in here, and that's what I need to find. Yes, Does anybody know where it's at? He he did a a, a back and forth with Trey. In DMs, is is it this first one right here? Uh, maybe where he talks about AMC. The first There's a highlighted by of the CFA them. report, the misinterpretation of a finfluencer's level of expertise. 
The CFA report found that roughly a third of content analyzed. Per now, is this, what is a CFA report? I, I skipped past all of that shit. Maybe I shouldn't have skipped it, but. I've not heard about that, but it, that'd be interesting to look at, I bet. Well, I, the, so the Australian version of the SEC came out with a report. Uh, and I don't know if this is the same one. No, this is, uh, okay. I don't know. So Australia has already, Australia has already kind of moving on this, moved on this. One they, in three Ameri Ameri uh, Americans uh, are, are, what was it, not considered financially yeah, literate? Yeah, basically. That's I thought. Yeah. Okay. Reject conventional finance wisdom and instead subscribe to a more speculative theory or belief that if we all do a certain thing, we're all going to make it. And if we get more people to buy it, the value goes up, right? If everyone holds, then yes. Oh. That high. Unfortunately, while some influencers have really built their audience around these ideas and even become impromptu poster boys for these movements at times, they haven't often worked out. Take AMC, for example. Much like GameStop, it was a heavily short. Okay, I'm just breaking this up so that I don't get accused of copyright infringement here and commenting on it to keep it in a fair use context. Um, okay, so here's where he starts talking about AMC and let's see where Trey's mentioned. ...struggling business that saw its stock price shoot up in value in early 2021, leading YouTubers like Trey's Trades, who had made a massive bet on the position, to suddenly find themselves in the limelight, with Trey himself in a way becoming the leader of the so-called AMC ape army. They call themselves that, I didn't make that up. Trey continued to post trading videos and even showed up on news channels to discuss AMC, ultimately arguing that AMC was on the cusp of a massive short squeeze. That never happened. The stock is down 98% from its peak and even roughly 50% from before the meme stocks rally. And Trey's channel went radio silent on the topic. I decided to reach out and ask him what had happened. And he responded. As time passed and I learned Okay, real quick here, um, before we get into this, yeah. I want to say one thing. He, Richard, said that um, he was... You say something, and then I've got something. Okay, so uh, he, he kind of glossed over it a little bit. He kind of just painted with too wide of a brush for my... So just to clarify, Trey was pumping this. He was pumping it before... He was pumping it after January and before June and after June 2021. But he was pumping it up to the run-up in June. So if you consider that to be the squeeze, which we do, right? I mean, we, we, that was the squeeze. Um, the squeeze did come, and Richard said it never came. So what happened, here's where Richard didn't quite get, the, you know, and maybe he did. I don't know. I know I glossed through it here, but I'm just saying. Trey continued pumping it after the squeeze. That's really what happened. That's not what Richard said, but that's what happened. Trey was pumping it. Trey was pumping it. Trey was pumping it. It squeezed, and Trey kept pumping it and telling people that that wasn't the squeeze. That's different in my mind than a squeeze never coming. It's actually worse. But I'm just that's I just want to clarify that. Yep. Go ahead. And I will say that while he does a good job, you know, going over a lot of the points of this. You have to understand that he's a CFA from, I believe, Canada, and he generally deals with general financial topics. Yes. So yeah. his understanding of the situation may not be as in depth as we are, who've been. In other words, he's in other words, he's actually smart about this stuff and doesn't spend all of his time on it. Unlike us, right? I got it. Noted. Okay. What else? Also, what What was your thing? Yeah. Go ahead. My thing is like, what a concept. Uh, if you're going to do a documentary on a subject, why don't you give them a DM and ask them some questions? I know I went over the uh, number one cuck, as I like to call him, and his supposed air quotes documentary series, you know, the AMC, the, the crime of the century thing uh, on my channel. And I pointed this out in my comment section. It's like, wow, what a concept. If you wanted to get some information from Trey, at the very least to make the, the, the documentary balance to get his side of the story, or maybe discover something, which is going to be important and come up later in this video, why don't you go talk to the subject of your video? And as someone who has no presence on YouTube up to this point, it would have been very easy to approach him and go, hey, 
dude, you could you could we maybe have a discussion about this whole AMC squeeze thing? I'm kind of doing a video on it. I wanted to get your take and your thoughts and some of the things you did and, and wanted to understand it better. But he didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Instead, <clears throat> he made his bullshit documentary, whereas where we're going to find out from Plain Bagel, there is some key points in what Trey says here that he got because he simply asked. Right. Okay. Yeah, good point. <clears throat> okay, so let me go back here, skip me this section. And ask him what had happened. And he responded. As time passed and I learned more, I realized I was wrong about a lot of my um, should we just read the whole message here instead of just what he's highlighting? Or maybe we can go back and do that. I don't know. So I can comment for sure, man. I started talking about AMC originally because I had felt like retail had an edge against some of the big Wall Street names and wanted to feel like I was contributing to the little guy winning. As time passed and I learned more, I realized I was wrong about a lot of my understanding of the market and understanding of how retail influences things. The culture that I had helped create around AMC, in my opinion, was not a very healthy one. And when I stepped away from everything, I didn't know how to address that culture without ruining my image in other people's minds. I cared a lot about what others thought of me, so I opted, so opted to just step away from everything instead of address it. I had also grown pretty mentally unstable because of poor financial decisions and budgeting in my own life, and I felt like I needed to recenter my value of money and what a dollar is actually worth. And I'll hold it there and let Richard take back over and we'll, we'll get to the rest of the message. Yeah. Understanding of the market. For Manuel. <laughs> and understanding of how retail influences things. The culture that I had helped create around AMC, in my opinion, was not a very healthy one. And when I stepped away from everything, I didn't know how to address that culture without ruining my image in other people's I'm not going to skip over it. So that I wasn't fueling. All right. Here it is. Here we go, Manny. I had also grown pretty mentally unstable because of poor financial decisions and budgeting in my own life, and I felt that I needed to recenter my value of money and what a dollar is actually worth. Since I stopped, I've been working as a server at a restaurant and living a pretty simple life. The videos I posted are actually still up. They're just unlisted and can be found under the playlists tab. I unlisted them so that I wasn't fueling more of the unhealthy understanding of the market that I unfortunately helped create. I guess to simplify my answer, I just felt like my eyes were bigger than my stomach. I don't see how that relevant, it's relevant, a relevant analogy here at all. And I put more on my plate than I could handle. Um, no, you were just an asshole. So I stepped back to get my shit together. No, yeah. he, he became a total fucking dick. Like. It's no. You can pick out the points you that. It sounds like he's saying, oh, my eyes were bigger than my stomach, so I ordered two hamburgers and I only ate half of one. No, that's not what happened. I think the more important thing in there is he said he was concerned with his image. At this point, what you're saying, you shouldn't be concerned about your image. You should be concerned about the truth. Hey, I right. was more about yeah. the market, and I changed my opinion. But he was more concerned about how people would think about him rather than finding what the truth was. Fuck you. Yeah, Manny's asked, why do you think Richard skipped that part? What do you think? I, why did why did he skip I that think part? That I think because Richard, he's well, go ahead. As someone who's watched a lot of his content, especially when he did the video on Tesla and he was very concerned about the backlash and how he had, was chuckling through the video about the backlash he got and that kind of nervous I get the feeling that Richard is the kind of guy that he's kind of like me. He def You have to be kind of an A personality to run a, ver a, a YouTube channel or someone who likes to talk and be around people. But I get the feeling he's also like me, where if you get criticism to a certain extent or you get people attacking you, you kind of want to retreat into your own little corner and just be left alone. Like you can handle criticism, but the way social media works it's not just constructive criticism it's people who want to destroy you and tear you down and so richard i think felt he was walking a very fine line between telling the truth and being personally and vindictively attacked by what we all acknowledge as a cult and so he made 
and 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 to, in, in in distinction from Trey made a business decision and Richard made a, a, a business decision. You know, Trey talking about the toxic situation he was in. R Richard just decided I don't want to have yeah. to deal with that on my channel. I think it's I I think he probably saw it as uh, not relevant to to the narrative that he's trying to tell here. Like he's he's trying to keep it centered around the fact that you know. Yeah, I helped create this, you know, unhealthy. That's really, and that's the other part that he highlights. That's what it says. So I think it's that. I think he's just keeping it, trying to keep it focused, keeping it business, all business, not personal, in other words. But I don't know. It is curious, though. I mean, because probably also, you know, some people. And he, and to it, to the point, he does yeah. show the entire conversation. So yeah, you can read it. You can read it. Right, right, right. You know, it's funny about this. Oh, good to know about the unlisted thing, Richard says. And we we discovered that a while ago, that his videos were not actually deleted. But yet, if you go on YouTube, um, onto a tab that's free, here, this one's free, uh, and type in Trey's, um, doing this uh, one, Trey's yeah. Trades, I know, yeah. Uh, Trey's Trades um, deleted, right? You'll get a million videos. Trace Trades deletes 50 million views. Where are the YouTubers today? Um, this is actually, no, it's not from now. Um, this is not from now either. Trace Trades deletes videos on AMC. Um, you know. So there's at least some of them that have been deleted. Definitely. Oh, well, no, 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 no. They have not been deleted. No, none of them have been deleted. deleted. They've just been delisted. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I can't remember what. Yeah. Why did Trace Trades delete all the videos? You know, so everybody thinks that he deleted these videos. That's the funny thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like they're all in. They're all dunking on him for I being like a grifter and stuff. Is, uh... What? I like how the top video is Morantz, who loves doing that. Oh thing, yeah. Yet he just got done privating a bunch of videos onto his. Uh, on I I didn't delete them. I just put them behind a paywall, guys. It's different. Right. I, yeah. Like I love that. Like, you know, every all these guys are dunking on Trey, calling him blah blah blah. Oh, he deleted his videos. You're just as bad as he is, essentially, because no, he didn't delete his fucking videos. Like, anyway, whatever. Deleted, delisted. You can't find them if you don't know where. To, okay, all right, all right. But there's a difference, though. I mean, it's different. It is different. Like, if he deleted them, that would have been way shittier. But he didn't. He delisted them, so we can still make fun of him. I mean, that, isn't, that's important. But anyway, I just think it's funny that all these people. They all want to be Scotty. They all want to be like us. They all want to be. They all want to be, you know, oh, look, we exposed this fraud, but they didn't get it right. It's not everybody can do what we do. They want to, <laughs> they don't want to expose it because they're not pointing out this rather disgusting culture like what, you know, the punk right. is doing. They just want to be able to pull someone down so they can push themselves up. Yes. Like, say, Morantz. Hmm. Ugh. All right. Let's continue here more of the unhealthy understanding of the market that I unfortunately helped create. It's an example of how someone genuinely interested in sharing information and who believes in their thesis can still contribute to the next set of issues highlighted by- Yeah, but the problem here, Richard, is you're not making the distinction. You see, and, and, and like, I, I like this channel. I don't have a problem with it, but I, you know, this is what I do. Same. I'm just looking objectively here, knowing what actually happened. At one time, he did believe in it. Yes, I, I believe that. I believe that he did. Then he made a lot of money. Then he kept portraying the image that he believed in it. But now we find out that at some point, and who knows when, his we don't know when. Changed. Yeah. Yeah. And his opinion changed, and he did not inform his audience. He didn't inform his audience of that. Genuous. Like. And that's disgusting. It is. And also, I mean, the, the flashpoint for me and the really, the, you know, well, I mean, I, the thing that really solidified it was when he did an interview with Benzinga and said, yeah, I made a million dollars in my option position on AMC. And this was like in 
July or August or something of 2021. Yeah. And he had never, never, never mentioned anything about that to his channel on Twitter. Nowhere. Nobody, nobody knew about that. The way we found out about it was through that, either through the video or through an article or something that referenced that. You know, because all those low quality sites, they all kind of like reference each other or there's a you know video. So it, it was in that sphere that, that it came out. And it's like he never addressed it. You know, I'm sorry. He did one thing publicly. He said one thing. He said he was doing one thing publicly. And then privately, he was doing the exact opposite thing. He told people to buy and hold while he was selling, taking profit directly out of those people's hands. You know, that is disgusting. And I mean, honestly, if if it, if he he's too small of a fish, I understand he's not they're not going to do anything. But strictly speaking, yeah, that he should have to give that fucking money back. I'm not asking for him to go to jail. I'm not even asking for a punitive fine. I'm just asking for him to disgorge those profits. And he that will never happen. He's probably already spent it all anyway up up his nose. Mm-hmm. Or up his wherever, he said he, but he's working at a restaurant now, right? So, he so and doesn't have that money. No, absolutely, and that's don't do drugs, kids. But uh, uh, you know, not only for that reason, but also for 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 uh, um, uh, for this reason right here. What do you fucking want from me? Get off my dick! And I. <laughs> and I and I reiterate that that information about Benzinga, even yeah. if, if it's a big derivative website of generally regurgitated water sewage. Yeah. They did actual journalism, unlike some of the yes. yeah. influencers on YouTube. Yep. They discovered something that no one knew and got and to admit it. The irony is that they it was probably, you know, they put out pro AMC and anti AMC articles this whole time, you know? And so it's fun. And, but, but the apes generally see that, see Benzinga as a low quality FUD, you know, source, but yeah, that is ultimately ironic and it's beautiful irony. That FUD source was the only place where it was discovered or it came out that one of the main influencers was a fraudulent piece of shit. I mean, that's great. I love that. You know, like, because you hate Benzinga, or, you know, the apes hate Benzinga, and the street, and all these, you know, and Jim Cramer, but it was that, those very entities that, you know, should have clued them uh, in, but they didn't I listen to it. To give, uh, I, I'd like to say we should go ahead and finish viewing this. I don't know what sort of time you have, but I got a tip from your favorite YouTuber that apparently Marantz is going over it right now and bitching oh. about it. Bitching about what? About the plain bagel. Oh, okay. Because he, even though he's not in it, he's. Oh, is that why he's bitching? He's talking about Finfluencers. He says he's talking about Finfluencers. He must be talking about him. And oh yeah, right. Because that's how narcissistic Morantz is. Okay, let me. Um, yeah, I'm. I, I'm going to. Let's see here. I need let's to go, go pop- ahead and finish this. Yeah, what let me do right here. Yeah, let me what do we have time. Yeah. Um, hang on one second, because yeah, we can go over there just a second here. I just want to show this real quick um, from this screen. Uh, this is the the, le- the last of it. So that is the big one. So here's what Manuel's talking about here. So this is Richard again uh, messaging with Trey. Lastly, I know a while ago there's some controversy on ZKIN. A few YouTubers had covered it around the same time and turned out that some had been paid and didn't disclose the sponsorship. I know your channel was one of the ones who covered it. Were you paid for that coverage? Okay. And Trey says, I did cover it and was paid and did not disclose that. Yep, and he said it was a couple thousand dollars, and here's his excuse. I had just started YouTube and had some money problems. I was desperate. So to solve some short-term problems, he accepted the sponsorship. Okay, why would they give a no-name YouTuber a sponsorship, first of all? Like, that's odd. Well, I've not, never been offered that. <laughs> I, I would say that he, at the time he wasn't a no-name YouTuber. I don't know when it was. I don't know what the time frame on this, but I know that, it's... That's, that's fair, that's fair. Right. But I would say that you know, it's not an excuse for not disclosing, but you definitely have to believe that some of these junk shitco companies, they look for people like me and you that 
if we were less, you know, disingenuous, like say we were one of these pumpers. Yeah. Look for people who have these problems like trays, trays do, and they target them and give them this amount of money that is, you know, for me and you would be a good chunk of change. Right. And I'm not saying that makes what, Trey did correct or right or moral. No. But yeah. This is the stock market for you folks. Yeah. This is why we yeah. hear someone talk about stuff on the stock market that you shouldn't just trust it blindly. And right. Why every time I do a video about a particular stock, if I have a position, I disclose it. If you know, citations, yeah. I, I, I give that because like, like I said in that community tab post that I, I that I made, I value my viewers more than any money someone could set on a table in front of me. Right. Yep. Yep. So here's the stock. Here's the uh, chart. I got the chart up here now. So I'm going to guess it was somewhere before this. I don't know. Uh, or around this time. Yeah. This this right here happened. Oh, squeezed around the same time period. It was March 24th, actually. Wow. It was uh, tomorrow. or Right before the... One year ago. Exactly. Or three years ago. Sorry. Three years ago. Um Right. So if we were to put those other instances on here, what is it? January 27th? Yeah, put, put AMC like on a line next. Oh, yeah, I could do that. Yeah. Just out I'll of put, curiosity. You know, I'll do you one better. I'll do you one. I'll put GameStop on there, too. Yeah. You, you, you know. Yeah, you know. Okay. So AMC is orange. And GameStop is blue. And the candles is uh, ZK. It, it lines up as like you see it. So you had the first AMC GME squeeze, then the yep. first uh, Z, ZKIN yep. squeeze, then it drops off. You have the second GME squeeze, then the next Z and Z, uh, ZKIN, yep. and then you have the big AMC move. And then here's the big AMC move right here. And, you know, you see ZKIN, uh, I mean, it went up a little bit that day, but uh, it, it ultimately closed down 11%. I mean, it, it started high and, and went low. Um you know, so, and that's the, that's the squeeze right there, June 2nd. So, right. Um, then, let's see, then, uh, let's see, what happened then? Well, we know what happened then. This was a slow bleed out. This is the bleed out period. And you and, see a couple different pumps where it move, moves with it, but otherwise it's dead from here on. Right. And my thing is, too, if you, now we're getting to the point, if you throw the spy on here, now this is like very cluttered, but. If you throw the spy on here, now where you start to see, you start to see the peaks align. Buy a different color because that. Yeah. Is too How about? Games. Yeah, true. How about? Um, I don't know. This green? No, 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 no. How about just fucking white? Green. Thick, thick white. There you go. Thick, white. thick white. There we go. We can. Yeah. It out. Okay. So, this is the spy. Now, this is when you start to see all these pumps line up with each other. Right here this is in 2022. Oh, here's well, here's one. That is the spy has a certain. Well, here's one. None of those are on the spy. So yeah. Here's one. Yeah. Here's one. So and, and what I found was that generally speaking, um, you, you market wide oh, short market. cover rallies, more well, market wide short cover rallies. That's when we would see GameStop and AMC go up. It was when we had short covering rallies that that went through everything. And, and you can, you know, there's way you can kind of kind of deduce it based on, you know, a context at the time, knowing, you know, sort of, OK, this stock uh, you know, has these resistance levels and everything is blowing through all resistance levels. And you look at the uh, com combined tick and it's like everything is going up at the same time and everything is going down together. Yeah, it's 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 a market wide short covering event like right here. This one right here is a great example. This right here. This one, uh, this was in, actually, this was, uh, this was March 28th, 2022, right in this range here. And, you know, you see it right here, the peak. And what happened then? You know, what happened? Um, you know, and that, you can't always correlate things to events or whatever, and sometimes you can. But when I see so much, you know, aligning together like that, it's pretty clear you know what was going on so anyway yeah I, I wish that this that, that the plain bagel video were a little bit more detailed but you know like you said we can't expect him to know real stuff and this all this garbage can we <laughs> right anyway i think generally he he doesn't look into that a whole lot this was his first sort of look into some of that and yeah he had a he probably had a time period 
I don't think he has like a professional, uh, you know, organization that he works for. It's still kind of his thing. And he does probably his CPA stuff still on the side. So he did what research he could. Right. And he gave what video he could. But because of that, he skipped over a lot. of And things. and right. And not having access to all Trey's videos easily would make it right. would obscure it a little bit. Now, Lynn's saying stimulus checks, rally, rent assistance rally, PPP rally. That's true. But the, I'm talking about tw I was talking about 2022 there. So in 2022, you know, there was retail was basically out of the, you know, they weren't trading that much at all. So Wall Street was kind of leading everything around by, by its neck. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Bull Run says a lot of stimmy money made its way to the market. Oh, it absolutely did, one way or another, and it didn't even you know it, it didn't even take um, people directly buying stocks in order for that to happen. You know, I mean, all all of this froth, you know, it finds its way back to the top. I would say if you know, yeah, a lot of it made its way directly to the market, but ultimately most of it made its way to the to the in the hands of you know the top wealth holders one way or another either through the stock market or through you know conventional sales and revenue or whatever because if people didn't put it in the market they blew it on something or other you know and it went to the bottom line sales of walmart for example and that went to the executives so yeah we we were very foolish about that but i mean again the whole thing was i mean what do you think is going to happen i mean and 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 how do you not expect inflation and yada 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 and then oh and then we had a fucking labor shortage so let's kick everybody off unemployment great early you know we'd already allocated the money but no we have a labor shortage and then we had hype you know massive inflation so the whole thing has been a fucking shit show a total shit show and it's for that reason that i say even if we have another 100 year public health emergency we're not going to have the same response god help us if we do but we, I, I don't think we will. I don't think we'll have the same response. It would be so politically, it would be political suicide to allow that to happen again. Both a pandemic and such a fucking botched response. You know, way too, you know, in some ways, not enough response. In other ways, way too much. In other ways, way too long. It's just, you know, here's the thing. They, and I'm, I'm using that very intentionally, they never let a good crisis go to waste. They never let a good crisis go to waste. And I just muted you, Corax, because your keyboard was loud. <laughs> but they never... They, no, no problem. Uh, yeah, no, it's all right. They never let a good crisis go to waste. And I say that that way, they. Uh, but anyway, greed is going to greed. It is. Uh, I was a little bit more here. Appropriate or poor quality information, including recommendations and misinformation. Oh, you don't say. CFA report focusing on beginner videos, they still found Finfluencers who, quote, encouraged potentially harmful behaviors. Videos, for example, that encouraged match betting over investing. Oh, God. Quote, you don't need to know anything about sports. Others offer to teach viewers how to get rich the easy oh. way. Creators also frequently position their yeah. as, quote, gateways to certain lifestyles that may appeal to aspirational values. Yeah. Nice. I mean, I understand all that, but see, that, that that stuff doesn't affect me. I, You know, like, that's, I think I'm too old for that. Like, I don't think that it, like, I'm, I don't look at these people and, and, and want to be anything I like them. A lot of that stuff. Where yeah. you see the people who are gambling on stocks, Gambling yep. on other things, funny enough, addiction is, is a hell of a drug. Right, exactly. Up to someone not knowing any better about the laws and what's required. A lot of the time, it's because the creator knows it's a bad look. Remember Trey from earlier? Well, back in early 2021, he was accused of doing an undisclosed stock promotion for microcap stock ZK International, since he and a few other YouTubers happened to post positive videos about the stock around the same time. Yeah, it's a pretty, uh, pretty positive sentiment towards this company. I am going to be taking a position here. During our conversation, I asked Trey about ZK International. Here's his response. I did cover it and was paid and did not disclose that, correct was a bit desperate to solve some short-term problems, 
so accepted the sponsorship. As I'd mentioned earlier, I cared a lot about what people thought, so opted not to disclose, which was obvious. Ah. As damning as that is, is if you care what people think, wouldn't it be better to be honest? I I, I just don't understand. That, that shows me that this is a yeah. dishonest person at his core. Mm -hmm. His his first impulse was to was to not disclose it. That was his impulse. That was his natural reaction was to hide it. I'm sorry. That is a fucking weak individual that that is a poor decision and that's not a trustworthy person on any level i'm sorry i'm not sorry I, i've never respected this kid i respect him less now if that's possible i don't I, I don't respect him at all he's a piece of shit i've been saying that for three years but now it's like now it's like you know how in modern times science is catching up with like common sense sort of in a way like we come out with these studies that say like oh well you know um eating a bunch of bacon is bad for your heart well really i didn't know that but that's a bad ex made up example but we have things you know like people knew people suspected that cigarettes were bad for your health but then eventually you know they came they were actually able to study it came out with it and now we have some scientific data that shows this well, that's where we're at with these. That's where we're at with Trey now. I, we knew he was a piece of shit. I mean, we had we had our own data, but now the mainstream is starting to catch up, even if it's not quite right. <laughs> you know, it is still the mainstream. Sorry, Richard, but you got a, almost a, almost a million subscribers. I still say the small channels will always, not always, the small channels have a pretty good chance of getting it right when you have a chance of trying to appease those almost a million viewers so keep keep going but i'll i'll keep my less than three thousand i'm happy with that we we, we talk about the small good looking audience that's what we have we don't want a big ugly audience we want a small good looking one you guys are all beautiful <laughs> anyway I, I find it funny not to sidetrack this whole thing but I, I haven't really been paying attention, but uh, Sean, uh, one of the AMC short sellers, Sean Williams on Twitter, his, uh, you'll like his Twitter handle. It's a AMC scam. He's been having this back and forth with one of these Project Popcorn people. And funny enough, guess who popped their head into the conversation right in the middle? Oh. Our good friend number one cuck. Oh. Jesus, you know, having a back and forth, and I've been snickering at it a little bit while. You're oh, okay. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, let's see what we get. perspective on why creators would opt to obscure when they are being paid. Well, why you need to be careful taking anything you see on Warrior Trading. Oh, Warrior Trading. Oh, yeah. Let's see, Jerome Powell. Uh, is that Coffeezilla? I don't know. Or clip art, just clip art, stock image. Um. And okay. From that, uh, Best line of defense that against. Quoting. Yeah, right. So, so that's pretty much all that Trey. Was okay, in. that's pretty much all he was in there. Okay. Um. So M Manuel says it's fascinating that Trey claimed during the message exchange that he didn't know anything about the market. Um. So like where he said that he 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 he. he Right, he thought that he, uh, some of his uh, understandings of the market were wrong, right, right in here. I realized I was wrong about a lot of my understanding of the market and understanding of how retail influences things. Which is funny because remember when he came out with them, I know that Manuel might, uh, Trey came out with like these master classes on options trading. He was like going to teach people how to trade. This was after the Kansas City Five event and they elected they all you know resolved to educate people more which really meant just to indoctrinate them more and keep them ignorant so that they wouldn't learn how they were being taken advantage of you know and wow um felons in prison collected some st tons of stimulus checks true and i always hear about how you know all these people you know created fake businesses and all this stuff and like I, I, I wouldn't have even thought to do that. Like, I guess I just don't have a scammer's mind. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. A boat. A boat. 
a boot. Yeah. He is, and he is Canadian, I believe. Yeah. So, um, you know, no comment there. But anyway, so yeah. Um, hmm. That's, um, it's a basically what I thought this video would be. I find this channel to be, you know, I don't have a problem with the, the plain bagel. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I I've subbed to them and yeah, I I watch their videos occasionally. I I thought I had, but apparently I'm, I'm sure he has a, a production team that helps him out. Or he's non-binary. Either way, you've got it covered. <laughs> but um, but 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 you know, this isn't the first time that uh, I felt like you know there were some details glossed over. But I'll be fair, you know, because I have been paying attention to it a lot more closely. Um, you know, let's make a settlement. Give me 20,000 subscribers and I'll call it a day and I won't make a video uh, exposing you. But it doesn't work like that. <laughs> so, but but I think I deserve more. But anyway, we both do. But anyway. But I also know that the more popular something gets, the, the you know, the yeah. generally the quality declines. And people are more willing to believe something that comes from somewhere that is more popular. Like the more popular something is, the more believable, the more, more credible. It, it but it's be not true. It becomes. Mm -hmm. It might be become some something becomes more popular because it confirms a bias. True. That yep. The general public accepts. Then it becomes a feedback loop, which is terrible. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, there there's a. Um, I wonder if I can show this clip without getting busted. I'm gonna try it. Um, but anyway, so. I, was there any other major topics that I mean I know well there's obviously there's the big one but the uh, yeah. the death in the family but beyond that is there was there any other anything else that you wanted to bring I'm up or curious as to if you do have time if you have to leave that's totally fine but I'm kind of curious what Morantz had to say about this video just okay to humor myself yeah I've got him right here actually so I was watching this from a year ago earlier but. Let's see. Here, so the plain truth. Oh, there it is right there. For you even. Yeah. Just two hours ago. Yep. Okay, here we go. This is it. Hi, guys, and welcome back. Welcome back to Morant's Rants. Plenty of good information, a little bit of motivation, a whole lot of truth. He's supposed to be on no vacation, by advice. the way, with his wife. But he is. He has all the time in the world to yeah. just, you know. That's correct. He is, uh, supposedly. The most iconic failure was when Trey said RC didn't sell BBBY. Yeah, we, you know, we covered that at the time, actually. That was beautiful. Yeah. I, um, he claimed, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll hit that. I think I've got the video, uh, my video, and I'll play for that. Thanks for reminding me of that, Manuel. <laughs> that, that was great. That part right there. Because this video is for the plain bagel. I watched his interview, or his whole video. <laughs> oh, God. Here we go. That's good videos. I understand. He's been around for a very long time. And his name is Richard. He's, he's, he's he got a, like, I love this. When when you do pro wrestling, you, <laughs> when you're getting ready to do a promo on someone. It doesn't help your uh, interaction where you're setting up the match between you two to totally undercut the person. Because if they're a nobody, why should yep. I watch your, your video? Exactly. Or, this, or that, you know, it, it's like, why are we here? So you got to set him up as, oh, he's, you know, he's a good guy. He's been around for a while before you completely cut their legs out from under them. And that's what he's doing here. He's yep. giving these platitudes that he pretends like he's even watched the plain bagel before until now. Right. I bet right. You, he didn't even know who the plain bagel Probably was. Probably not. Discord got their, got on their uh, synchronized period together yep. about how he was talking about this stuff. Yep. Okay. He said, "Fin influencers, right? Fin influencers. This is he calls them financial influencers." And he started naming off all this stuff. And if you saw the study, it said there's two out there that have no promotions on their channel, right? No affiliate links. I've passed up all of that. I don't do any of that. But here's why I'm calling you out, Richard. Because a couple of things. It's easy to sit up there and do exactly what you just did, where you told everyone, you know, the level of education and or if they're certified individuals and maybe they should be making content and no one else or the, we should all just take them with a grain of salt as you called it you know what's the yeah, unfortunate part should. is i did this documentary right i did the interview with james janney and i know you did too i know you're in it 
And um, I know James interviewed you because James Janney said, hey, Marantz, we're going to have a, a um, like a roundtable sit down conversation about GameStop and the evaluation that I have towards it and versus anyone else. Right. I mean, obviously, the whole world thinks it's uh, overvalued. And uh, I would give you a case in point. Um, there's this there uh, reporter named Char this Charlie Gasparino, video? Charles Gasparino. Right. So Mr. Gasparino just tweeted out right now. Is there a fucking um, point somewhere in this video? Oh, I don't know. Probably not, though. <laughs> so, yeah. I would, well, well, let's keep just, going, but this is yeah. just like... <laughs> right. I know. Speaking on behalf of games. It's terrible. Yeah, how valuable is it, this company that makes no money, blah, blah, blah. It's like, look at that. There's a credited a reporter that has a stance, that has a Twitter account, and what does he say? Right? His, his uh, I guess, his expertise and all the documentation behind it states that he's a person that's relevant to give out an opinion. But the unfortunate part, it's ill-informed. Like, he doesn't know the balance sheet. He doesn't understand how much money they just made this okay, quarter. Okay, stop, hundred... stop, stop. I finally get his yep. point here. Okay, first of all, ill-informed according to who? Number two. Morantz. He has, Poor God. He has no, like, don't get me wrong. I'm not the biggest fan of Gasparino. He's kind of a, a con. No, but, no, but he's not. But, right. Yeah. He has I, go, no, I know. Unlike you, you right piece of shit. Here you go. He has no financial incentive as to where AMC or GameStop or any of these companies go. You do. You do. Yep. I mean, boom. That's it. He has no reason to be biased. And if you listen to what they say, most of the time, they just pretty much stick to the facts. I mean, honestly, like... I, I, I hate to admit that, you know, about some of these networks, but I mean, yeah, they give you opinion, but when they're talking about the facts, like here's what the earnings were, here's what the price is, here's what the balance sheet, here's how much money they had, whatever. That's the numbers, the cold, hard numbers. Now, Marantz doesn't like that because it doesn't factor in the fact that they know what the stock's worth. He knows what he's holding. He knows what the true value is. And that's the value of Ryan Cohen, which, okay, I thought you said this was valuable. You, you've you given nothing tangible. You, you've you given me, you're saying you put your faith into a person, a man, one man, if you want to call him that. He's a boy. With these, yeah. This is, what, this is the problem with a lot of these meme stocks, and I had, the, and I at some point will have to have this discussion when I want to sit down and do a video on it about Sorrento that I've been covering. It's like you got into this situ situation because you put your entire faith into the CEO. You elevated him to godhood status like he yep. could do nothing wrong. And when yep. he fucked you over, you got the surprised Pikachu face. Yep. And, you know, the funny thing about that is it sounded like you were talking about AMC at first. You Because you kind of were. Like, that was what happened with AMC. Or Everybody Mullen. Or Mullen. Or... Uh, Lordstown or Mo Motors Bed, or Bath and Bed Bath and Beyond or any of them or fucking Overstock, you know. So the thing is, like, um, the whole point of a corporation, the whole point of a point of a business, a limited liability corporation, is to separate. Well, yeah, to make money. Yeah, first and foremost, right. But also the reason why you, you know you're not operating under you know Scott Allen. Just, uh, you know, with my personal checkbook is because I want to separate the liability of my business interests from my personal mm -hmm. affairs. Mm -hmm. So why in the world retail investors became like pro uh, pr profits and, and advocates for these all these executives and corporate like corporate America? It's so bizarre. It's part of the programming, I think. It's part of the 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 indoctrination that you know creates a cult essentially <laughs> i mean here we come back to the same thing it's a cult you know but i mean you get people like sojka you get people like Morantz. i mean it sounds like they work for these companies it's so dystopian yeah. what they say it's like why are you telling me that i should go buy amc popcorn like that's bizarre it's weird it's fucked up tweet that I made like I want to say a year and a half ago or at the beginning of my channel it's like you know like this is coming from a libertarian capitalist I, I made this post so you know 
it, it was kind of tongue in cheek. It's like, you know, we had all these, uh, all these cyberpunk videos talking about this dystopian future where companies rule the world instead of countries and all the bad, uh, bad, all the bad things that come from, from basically having these corporate overlords run everything. Yeah. No reason to mention that anyway, right. about meme stocks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Let me uh, roll it back. So we get a little bit of context of where we were here person that's relevant to give out an opinion but the unfortunate part it's ill-informed like he doesn't know the balance sheet he doesn't understand how much money they just made this quarter 100 200 million dollars just in doesn't the matter either. but the but it doesn't matter that doesn't matter yeah. that doesn't mean that you're creating value for shareholders in fact you aren't creating value for shareholders doesn't you could stack all the cash at the bank you want that's not value for shareholders i'm sorry dude it's not that does nothing. That's just money for Ryan Cohen to go blow on whatever the fuck he wants to do with his little investments, like, which also doesn't create value for shareholders. You, you just bought into a hedge fund. Like, what in the fuck? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean. Turnaround story in the stock market right now, right? What? But the reason why I talk about this is because, Mr. Richard Plain Bagel, you never showed up to the sit down to have this sit down and talk. Because I'm just a normal guy, Why does guy, that right? fucking I'm matter just... to the context of his video? This is all a bunch of bullshit. Yep. Are you going to get to the fucking point? No. I, t I keep telling you no. It's going on and on and on about his pussy being sore and swollen, and he doesn't like that. He's a narcissist. You know that. It has to be about him. You didn't show up to the discussion. <sighs> guess what, Marantz? Neither did I. And guess what? I was invited before you were. Yes, I was. I was fucking invited by James Janney to go on his fucking documentary before you were, before you even thought it was a possibility. I was asked, not you. I, love, I was. I love how this I love how this discussion never in any way talked about him, was addressing him or anything like that. No, it tangentially had to be about Finfluencers. And he has made it all about him. Like he yep. said, he's a narcissist piece of shit. And the world will be better off when he fucks off of YouTube. Agreed. And, you know, I'm only bringing that fact up that, that he, they asked to interview me because I didn't do it. Um, I had a lot going on. I couldn't swing it. You know, I was traveling for work. I didn't do it. And then, then a, a few weeks later, Marantz was all, you know, blah, 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 blah. I'll, James Janney, ooh, I'm going to post the videos myself like an asshole. I'm going to front run the documentary. But, bro, the only reason he asked you is because I couldn't do it. So just keep that in mind. Keep it in mind. And I've got the email receipts to prove it if I need to, but I, I won't. I won't because I don't need to. But I'm just telling you, you were asked second. You're, you're playing second fiddle to Alkin. How's that feel? <laughs> normal guy. Who can have an opinion or Dick. can have an opinion according to you because that everyone should be leery. That, I didn't even watch the whole video and I know that's not what he said. I, I, I didn't even watch the whole thing and I know it. Wow. It was, it's that you can have these opinions. People can have these opinions, but you better be fucking skeptical about what they're saying because they don't know what they're saying. Correct. I don't know what I'm saying. Scott doesn't know what he's saying. You no. sure as fuck don't know what you're saying. <laughs> that's what the video was about. How yeah. can someone who barely skipped through it with Scott know exactly what this video was about, yet you, who supposedly sat through the whole fucking thing, is so fucking ignorant and clueless. But because, I mean, he's unable to hear it. I mean, it's crazy. Like, he's so tone deaf. He's so deep up his own asshole. I mean, it's it's wild because, yeah, the, the plain bagel saying stuff that we've been saying for years, I mean, in a different way from a different source, you know, and everything else, different justifications and whatever. But it's very much the same similar similar type of message. Like, I, I hate to say it this way, but, you know, do your own research. But, yeah. you know, or don't listen to anybody. How about that? Don't listen to anybody, including us, you know. Don't, but you have to listen to us in this one instance when we tell you not to listen to anybody, including us. So figure that one out. That's a yeah, circular yeah. problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because he has a financial incentive in it. Correct. And he says he doesn't, whatever else. Reason. But no, I can give him money. I can give him money on his fucking page. I can give him money. He's monetized. 
I'm sorry, you're monetized. You are getting paid. You have a vested interest. All right, continuing. Not only yep. the about channel it. being monetized, but from from your investment in GME. Right, but we know that's not going to pay off, so I didn't even consider that. So <laughs> I already discounted that out of it. <laughs> and the people posting videos should be scared, too, because there's legal action on it. None of the above. When I see it, Richard, here's here's the problem that I see with oh, your whole boy, approach. Go. God Towards damn it. Individuals that want to give out information that's readily available to the public. It's how you interpret it. Can I give you the point? You made a video months ago, and I still remember it. It was about Tupperware. Oh and you said Tupperware is going out of business and this stock keeps pumping because it's a meme stock. They're not meme stocks. I don't know why people get this idea that it's a meme stock. They gave it a definition, a title. But in the same sentence, you said yellow freight. But if you know the truth about Tupperware and yellow freight, then you would know that private equity, not only oh, do they Jesus own social media Christ. and pump it via box. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Here we are again. Here we are the fuck again. I knew it. Hi, North Star. Hey, oh, North Star. Screaming into the abyss. <laughs> so we got North Star here in the chat now. How, how's it going, man? Welcome. Pretty good. Pretty good. Just listening. All right. You got any more volume to give me? Uh, you're, you're pretty low. If not, that's cool. Hold on. All right. You. Got you all the way up, so. Um... But while he's fixing that, I'm yeah. going to go on with what I was saying. Sure. This is him trying to move the goalpost like he always does. This is about him redefining the terms, changing what everything's about so he can make it about him, make it about his stupid fucking bullshit, how he can mm -hmm. around, change, change around the narrative. It is classic cult leader be behavior. I don't like what's being said, so let me change around and make it look like it's something else so I can talk about what I want to talk about because yep. I don't like the message that's going out. <laughs> Pretty much. The message makes me look bad because I'm a narcissistic piece of shit. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. We're halfway through. We're exactly almost halfway through. A little over halfway through. And paid. All right, let me, I'm going to take it back. And yellow freight, then you would know that private equity... Not only do they own social media and pump it via bots and paid, paid promoters of stocks, they pump out this misinformation and they utilize, as you would call it, memes, right? No, I just call it social media. But when you start tagging it, just call it a private equity pump. See, this is a private equity play. Oh, this is what they're manipulating people with outcomes, with and they're using equity. people. It has everything to do people. With That's you the real fear. Ass hurt. People it has everything talking to, do to with people. You being ass hurt. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, we'll see the real reason here in a minute. You out this is indirectly, what? and even though he never used your name, your ass hurt. Yep. They want to ban TikTok, just so you're aware. They don't want you to know what I know, and what. Oh my God. Private equities within. You don't know shit. Listen to what he just Not said. Anything. Wow. Be fucking clear about that. Oh my God, that's that's outrageous. Um, this is what they're doing. They're manipulating people with outcomes, and they're using people. People, that's the real fear. People talking to people. This is why they want to ban TikTok, just so you're aware. They don't want you to know no, what I know. And I, no, that and has what, nothing to do with anything. They don't <laughs> want to TikTok because they think that China is using it to in, in, influence. How do I, as a libertarian who doesn't buy into this conservative narrative shit about TikTok, yeah. understand more clearly than your dumb fucking ass what the hell's going on? Well, I just happen to know it in passing. I know why they want to ban TikTok because they think China uses it to influence Americans. Right, right. What? <sighs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I but am... right, 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 right. It, it, no, there's no words. There are no words. It's, it's, it's well, I know. I know garbage. Within every single company that has been pumped out in front of everyone, go look at Carvana. Go look at AMC. Too. Go look at HYMC. Right. Go look at Bed Bath & Beyond. It's called look Institutional at Investors. I mean, why, why is he naming a bunch of zombie companies? Like, he just named a bunch of zombie corporations and it's like, oh my God, private equity is everywhere. They're, they're in Bed Bath & Beyond. Shit, that's the problem. Right. The shit. We, we, interest rates went up from zero to an actual r rate, which is healthy. That is a healthy thing. It is unhealthy for interest rates to be depressed artificially for extended periods of time 
and it allows corporations that otherwise should have died and allowed that capital to be reallocated. It prolongs, you know, this corporate rot and it doesn't do any good for anybody except the people that are, you know, making money and grifting off of it, such as mm, your ass. So shut the fuck up, Marantz. God damn it. Where? Go look at all of them. They're all owned by private equity. The bonds, the leverage, and it's pumped out that way. So Trey being paid money to pump out certain stocks, we already knew this part. We knew GNS is is running that playbook. We know Mullen Automotive is doing the same thing. But my problem that I... Nobody's talking... I want you to look at where most of these stock pumpers are from. And I'm not going to tell you the country, and I'm not going to tell you... Canada. Nationality. Oh, I'm not going to really, do any of that. Sir? I'm just going to ask no, you to do you the there. research. Fuck you. You I, need to shut the I think fuck he's, up, you loser piece of shit, implying that Canada is somehow behind this. Yeah, I don't know. Get, about... get bent over the fit, bit, bed post and get fucked, you loser piece of fucking shit. Fuck you. Yeah, that's pretty outrageous. Apparently, you took all the info from these two reports that you're quoting as your source. Mm. That's by the book. That's 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 the stats that you want to put out to people. Well, at least he has a source. Um, unlike Morantz, who has no source, his source is his faith in Ryan Cohen, which is laughable. So, yeah, all I'm gonna good. Ask you, Richard, I have a series. It's on YouTube. No. No, I, I, I don't even want to hear the name of that series. I, 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 you know, I, I, no, I can't. Now, Manuel's that saying, if you're... Sorry, I had to take a walk on that because, like... No, this, this that's it. That's it. As much as people that's done me to do videos on him, this is why I don't do videos on him. Right. Because it's pointless. By now, his entire viewer base is all the narcissists that love jerking off to him. And it, mm -hmm. it's, it's fucking meaningless dealing with this narcissistic piece of shit that jerks off to himself yep, and, and has a bunch of people in his discord that all part of the circle jerk together and they just jerk off to each other going, Hur! yep, it's pointless. It's fucking pointless. Wow. Look at this. So I'm on trays and under playlists and wow, look at, there are all these pl playlists here. So let's see by the dip. Um, let's see which one has Forex. Let me ask you something. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Uh, connecting the dots, though, like, don't you think it's a good series? Like no. information, informational. No, like, like the bit, the last one that he did on on Big Lots is a perfect example of that. What he did is he put a bunch of names into a Google search and then just started reading articles. He didn't even org or organize it. He didn't even have a coherent narrative. He didn't ha even fact check the stuff he was saying. It was just him ranting and raving on a live stream for several hours and it did nothing to inform anyone about anything other than he's a fucking ignorant moron i mean i didn't watch any of them I uh lately watching it right now hi guys how you doing huh what's that discord that i'm in oh oh, oh gotcha 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 they're watching right now Oh, now I know. Marantz is trying to get out from being, a get clout from attacking Plain Bagel. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The same thing he, here, here's the best part. The same thing he accused me of doing. It's so hilarious. The people that are above him, they all use bots. And they, they, they and, and then the people below him, they must be clout chasers. Yet he does the exact same fucking thing. Right. <laughs> My background slash motivational videos. Now, where are all the actual AMC videos, though? Like, that's what I want to know. Like, mm -hmm. there's a bunch of, like, other stocks here. And he's got one for GameStop, GME stock, two videos. And it should be, it looks like they're all in, in alphabetical order. Yeah. Well, okay, no, they're not because Torch is up there at the top. So I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, um, the skits. Naked ape. I'm looking for pre-market watch list. So North Star. I mean, you think it's a good series? You like connect the dots? Is that your thing? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, yeah, like it's informative about private equity and what's going on uh, behind the curtains of Wall Street and <laughs> and Morant's 
shares this information with us. Uh, the the motive behind sharing all this information, I don't know. And the fact that you bring up like all these different stocks that he's covered, like Yellow Cat or what was it that that trucking business? Yellow, Yellow yeah. Mm -hmm. Truck, yeah, Yellow Truck. All these businesses, you know, like what do you think is his motivation to like cover these? I don't think it has anything to do with any of those companies. I don't think. I don't think it has anything to do with any of those companies themselves. It's it's all just to pump GameStop. I mean, you know, or it, to reinforce his narrative with his audience. Right. Well, yeah. Which ultimately the goal is for that for for to game for GameStop. But yeah, I mean, I think it's. Do you think, do you think there's maybe like a? Is there maybe like a recruiting factor to it? Do you think? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, and and also yeah, like. So he he's he's putting all these names out here like Toys R Us, okay, and uh, Yellow, and uh, what all the quote unquote victims of private equity, um, and I think it does kind of act as a net a little bit because you know Toys R Us was used. I mean, in twenty twenty one, people were talking about Toys R Us about how the naked short sellers bankrupted it. Okay, that was part of the narrative. I mean which is completely ignorant. It's completely, completely ignorant. And we, in fact, we have somebody in our chat here, Model 3 dude, that knows more about this than any of us do, being a former Toys R Us member of management. So, you know, and he, we've talked about it. But, you know, it's, it was used as, a, as, as one of these emotionally manipulative things. Like, they're gonna do to the movies what they did to Toys R Us. You don't want that, do you? Buy and hold AMC, for example. So, I think it's it's it, it's manipulative. Essentially, it's not it's not about he doesn't care about the trucking company. You know, he doesn't care about this or that or you know. I mean, it's and it's 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 not even all centered around companies either, is it? He talks about people and just it's a conspiracy theory series right more or less i mean if you believe you have to believe that this group uh, like okay there's public markets capital markets like the stock market which is public it's publicly disclosed you know you can anybody can invest in any publicly traded company it's all out in the open in that sense and if you if you put a lot of money into something, you know, to where you are a major player, major shareholder, you have to disclose that, yada, yada, yada. And then there's private money, which doesn't have any of that. So you have a business and you you come to me and say, hey, would you like to invest in my business? Give me some money. And you do. And that's nobody knows. And it's all, you know, private, essentially. I mean, it's not publicly disclosed. And it's it's on my taxes, but you don't have act. You can't see my tax return, so it's the same thing that people talk about with dark pools. They think it's bad because they don't they can't see it. Supposedly, they think it's bad because it's quote unquote hidden. But I mean, I, I can tell you, private equity is just money. It's just money. That's all we're talking about here. Funding. I mean, I don't see how that could be evil versus the market not being evil. I mean, if anything, all money is evil because it's all fucking fake. So who cares whether it's, I mean, you're telling me there's no fraud in publicly traded companies? I don't think he's saying that. Um, there's, go to the SEC website. There's all kinds of examples every day of companies getting, you know, slap down with and I'm not just talking financial companies so it's 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 a pathetic attempt at furthering the grift that somehow GameStop is a relevant company going into the future when in fact they're an irrelevant company that won't have a future that's the way I see it and and also spreading FUD and 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 misinformation in a disingenuous way about something like private equity I mean, I have not been shy about the fact that 
my the company that I work for is owned by a private equity firm and it has nothing to do with finance nothing to do with finance whatsoever the, what I what I do but the company happens to be owned by a private equity firm and it was bought by a private equity firm before I joined this company um, yeah are they trying to sell the company yeah sure sure they are but are they are they investing in the business <laughs> you better believe they are so I don't get it it's ignorant he doesn't have any personal experience with any of this shit he's just talking out of his ass are there bad actors in the stock market and in private equity sure are is everybody bad no and anybody who says talks in those extremes is fucking retarded like I'm sorry but that's dumb it's not that's like black and white cult thinking yep and even if he was right about his whole private equity thing which I'm not saying he is I think he's way off the deep end well I don't think I know but like <laughs> you get to the you get to the point of what he's doing with this video with the plain bagel and it's it's an attempt to smear him because he knows even though yeah. he wasn't directly named he knows by association that people would consider him a influencer yeah he doesn't like the idea that someone is telling his viewers potentially hey you should be skeptical of this douchebag yeah go ahead north star what do you got? You there? Wow. Um, jump back in when you when you can. So, yeah, here's his master class, an options and charting master class. Everything you need to know about options, beginner to advanced. I mean, like, so he basically admitted that he doesn't know what he's talking about. I mean, oh, you're telling me this kid here doesn't know what he's talking about? He looks so smart. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> oh, blast from the past. <laughs> I, I thought I was going to learn about options or how to grift a bunch of first-time investors by claiming there will be a short squeeze soon didn't expect to see trey being his usual overconfident less than average loudmouth self <laughs> dang it maybe review dork has the video i'm looking for runs off before anyone sees that i was here <laughs> wow what a dickhead wow, who is that fucking you know, asshole you have more a more purified form of sarcasm than i do <laughs> well yeah it's been re refined over time i guess but anyway <laughs> Three years of this shit will make you a little bit cynical. Uh, uh, it's already getting me to be a bit cynical. Yeah. So, Model 3 Dude says, Toys was not able to change with the times. And mass retailers and online took our stronghold on the toy market. Fascinating. Its operation were further hampered by a leveraged buyout, organized, leveraged private equity firm. Okay, so there's your private equity connection, of course. And, you know, someone who has a negative view, right, if you already have a negative connotation of private equity, well, there you go. Yeah, see, they killed it. They killed it. It's their fault. The thing is, is like, it's not necessarily that private equity bought it off. If they hadn't leveraged the company to such an extent, heading in. Right, exactly. What, around 2007, 2000? Somewhere, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Great financial crisis. Yeah, exactly. Like you, you, you have to ha add the context in that belongs. That's right. Otherwise, yeah. you're just lying to people by omission. Manny has friends in KKR and McKinsey. I mean, you know, I'm I'm not going to name any names, but you know, yeah, leverage is the key word. He says yes, right. I mean, and 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 then Marantz will turn around and say well and see but GameStop's not leveraged and we have cash on the blah blah blah, blah. and you know, Ryan Cohen's a genius investor I can't wait to see what he bought NVIDIA I don't know I don't know okay um so let's see if there's any new videos or anything um hey, oh well the dead update um, 
I, I don't have the time or patience to listen to that stock retail guy. Um, God, I had a question for you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so so some of these uh, fin fluers or fin influencers like Marantz, do you think uh, they should be held liable? Is there anything that could be held liable against them? Or mm. as someone who's looked at the law on that, I mean, it, unless they're being paid or for that specifically, not right for that. Unless they're being paid or they are someone who's an actual like like they're like for instance the the thing that I I really worry about. And why I try and, and and limit my memberships to like things that are directly non in general. It's when you give specialized advice, like you can give general advice. Well, when you give specialized advice, and that's what kind of saves a lot of these people as far as federal re regulation, if I understand correctly. Yeah, I mean that's it's not just like the like newsletter thing, or you post a video. It's I go to Scott and say, uh, you know, I'm unregistered or I'm, I don't say yeah. license part, but as, as a setup, I'm not registered. I'm not licensed. I go to Scott and I say, give me 15 bucks and I'll give you some stocks to pick that will work for you, Scott. Right. Directly. Right. And then he comes to me and I go, here's the stocks for you today, Scott. Um, That's what's illegal. So, yeah. So because, the, because, go ahead. Uh, Corex, uh, you know, I, after watching or after listening to that phone call between Ethan and mm -hmm. attorney Miriam, mm -hmm. it, it just got me thinking like, okay, you know, these, these, these guys are grifting out here. And mm -hmm. I just asked the question about liability, but then on mm -hmm. the other side, when it doesn't work out for these investors and you got project popcorn or whatever, mm -hmm. filing lawsuits against, that have made money or, or mm -hmm. what have they done it's like yeah that's none of that's going to hold water like I, they, it, I think you'd have a much better case if you went for like civil liability maybe against some of the influencers but like again i don't think it'd be very strong because at the end of the day it's sort of obligated to they yeah you. but it's but it's like it's like opening the door for mm -hmm. for these kind of people to go after like they went into the investment as mm -hmm. whatever class investor that they are, they are not secured investors. They're unsecured and right. Non-accredited. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I, yeah. 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 It's like, I, I don't, I don't know the details of the, the whole project. Pop. What, what's your, what's your opinion? I want them to win anything. They how do you, good, you know? yeah. How do you feel? Like, what, what is your position on it? I guess like not stock, but like, what, what how do you, what, how, what's your opinion on this whole, thing that you just mentioned like what, what do you think how do you think it should be like should they be held liable or not i guess is what i'm asking well <clears throat> j just giving the example of how how if if corex comes to you and mm -hmm. like if you're a financial advisor and you've got i don't know you're somehow legally bound to to be like a fiduciary for him then right. you, know, you should be held liable. But these guys getting up on their soapbox and trying to pitch mm -hmm. the stock, they're essentially like like in those those boiler rooms back in the nineties, they're cold calling people and right, right. these shitty stocks. It's kind of the same shit. You know, he, the, he's without a doubt trying to get people to buy the stock for whatever his agenda is. Mm -hmm. And yeah. It's like when it doesn't work out, it, it's getting me thinking like these people are coming after X, Y, Z because they made a bad investment. And it's, N yeah. Like, it's so very close. Gray, there's a bit of a gray line in there because you have people who are like, you know, I don't sometimes like that. these short reporters or just general news outlets who do sort of the same thing, you know, like I'm not the world's biggest fan of Jim Cramer, but do you think his show should be legally obligated or, or like, because I could see sort of the line with someone like Morantz or say like a trace trades or someone who owns the stock. And so there is a material benefit in deceiving an audience about what's really going on. And I can see how that might be equated to sort of a boiler room setup, especially with some of this meme stock pumping where you collectively got a group of people to pump the stock and some of them took advantage at the top and got out while the getting was good. 
not all those people who got out were part of the pump. They just saw an opportunity and got out. Now, so okay. People did get out like Trey with his options trade. Yeah. So it's, it's the problem with it is how do you define the rule for the line? How do well, you have the ability to speak and talk openly about your beliefs on a certain investment, but at the same time, per, it, it, if the goal is to protect investors from mm. themselves. All right. All how, right. How, how do you do that? Okay. Well, let, let me, let me break in here. Um, so, and give you my opinion and whatever my understanding. So, um, it's not anybody's responsibility, you know, to protect anybody else. I, I, I don't believe that it is the sec, you know, yeah, sure. Their, their stated goal is to protect and create investor confidence and whatever else. And we talked about how, We've talked about how the simple existence of the SEC sort of does that in a sense. Um, and that they don't really pass that. They, they don't have a lot of new regulations to come out. And the ones that do are, are, you know, pretty convoluted and it's hard to even understand what they mean. But nonetheless, we have there is a an agency that oversees it. There didn't used to be, but there is. So um, now, as far as like people listening to other people and stuff like that, it's it's pretty well known in, in the investing community that there's no reason to listen to anybody else. Like if you go in to any, you know, in venue, let's say online or you walk into, a you know, back in the day, a, a broker's office or whatever, and you say, hey, guys, what's what's good today? What should I buy today? Oh, there's going to be no shortage of people with suggestions. But should you listen to them? And you could listen to them and you could buy exactly what they suggest and you might make money, you might lose money. But I mean, generally speaking, I mean, every classic, um, you know, uh, or, or like well-known investor over the years has basically said like, no, I don't listen to anything anybody says. I don't want to know what your stock tips are. Um, you know, and I don't like, I'm thinking of in reminiscences of a stock operator, he says this, like, you know, um, I, I don't want to know. I don't want I don't I'm not going to tell anybody what I'm doing and I don't want to know what anybody's doing. I want to be, you know, and have my own thing uninfluenced by any other opinions that might be incorrect. So in that sense, it's kind of a non-issue if you do that, like because it doesn't matter what anybody else is saying. And part of the game of investing and, and building wealth is to weed out the bad habits and adopt the good ones. And unfortunately, that means a lot of people are gonna fail. And if pay, people fail because they listen to somebody who didn't know what they were talking about, that's kind of too bad, so sad for me. Yeah, it's cold, and callous, whatever, but it's not my responsibility. It is your responsibility to be educated. Otherwise, every pauper would be a fucking king, and it cannot be that way. We, ha you know, there are people who are smart and make good decisions, and for better or worse, for whatever reason, there are people who do not make good decisions and fuck up. And my goal is to not be like that. I wanna be one of the successful ones. So am I gonna listen to other people? Probably not. Now, am I gonna be an asshole about it? Say, I don't care, don't talk to me? No, I'm gonna try to be tactful about it. Oh yeah, oh, okay, yeah, good. Oh yeah, I'll look into that, thanks. But I'm not listening and I don't care. So that's the first thing. Um, Secondly, you know, I think that's one of the reasons why I decided to come on YouTube is because I knew that, well, there's there's really no basis for these people to be banned from YouTube. I mean, yeah, you could make a case that they violate policy for get rich quick or, you know, scams like that or whatever. But YouTube made too much money off these people for them to ever do anything. And I know that. So the next best thing is to try to counteract it with counter information or you know reacting against it highlighting how wrong it is all the shit that i tried to do um you know and then it's like okay well before if you search for amc all you would find is the grifters now it's pretty much still just the grifters but not all you know some of my stuff comes up some of some of other core access stuff comes up etc um so, but, but the whole thing was there was no choice. Like if you, if you Googled AMC on this platform, you only got pro AMC stuff and that was wrong. That should not have been that way. So the only thing I could think to do because YouTube wouldn't do anything 
and why should they? They're there to make money too. So I just started putting it out, putting out the information that I thought was missing. So that's the, the other thing is that, you know, if you're looking for information and you only see the same thing over and over, you can either believe it and say, well, I guess this is the way it is. I guess I'm going to go buy this. Or you can say, this can't be right. I'm going to keep looking. I'm going to go to another platform. I'm going to, you know, dig deeper until I find a reason, you know, to be satisfied that this is the only opinion out there, but it's never the only opinion. So I thought that was a problem. And the third thing real quick is the investment advisors act itself, which is the law that governs this, um, uh, the federal law that governs this. So it does uh, pretty, I mean, you know, it, it's maybe ambiguous a little bit, but it regulates investment advisors. It requires firms or sole, I'm reading this from the screen here, uh, practitioners compensated for advising others. So that you have to be compensated for advising others. Must, uh, uh, about securities investments, must register with the SEC and conform to regulations. Okay, now, only advisors ha who have at least 100 million of assets under management or advise a registered investment company must register. So even if I'm a small time, small potato, small town investment advisor, and I have less than $100 million of assets that I'm managing, I don't even, I don't even have to ad register as an advisor, okay? So uh, under this law. Now, sometimes you have to register with a state Sometimes if you, if you work for a brokerage firm or insurance company, you need to register, be credentialed. That's different. That's not what this is talking about. But as it strictly as it speak, as it stands, and I've had this opinion pretty much since the beginning, these guys are not financial advisors. They are, they are not financial advisors. So they will not be prosecuted or, uh, you know, pursued under this act because they're not being compensated for advising others about securities investments. They are, they may be being compensated. They're making money off of ad revenue. They're, you know, they're making videos about other things. People are giving them donations, et cetera. But there, there is no contract that exists between the influencer and the audience member that sets up a fiduciary between the two. Therefore, they're not contractually a financial advisor they have no customers they're not being paid for it so it's just like somebody a, an amateur talking about something which we can do which we want to preserve we want to preserve that right we want to preserve the ability for people to talk about things but ultimately we need people to be educated about them if it's a concern of ours that people waste their money if it's not a concern of ours that other people are wasting their money which I would argue it's it shouldn't be then it doesn't matter. But what matters to me is the fact that these fucking clowns, these fucking grifters made money by lying on YouTube to a lot of people. That's different than them being investment advisors and all the other stuff we're talking about. The fact that they were able to sit there and make shit up, lie, grift, mislead people, make people, you know, caught cause in a roundabout way to for people to buy into something on extreme hope and then lose all their money is absolutely disgraceful and and it should not be they should be shamed off the platform you know really but yeah i know how things are and it's not going to happen but so anyway I, I i you know you shouldn't be able to make an honest you know profit you shouldn't be able to make money off of being dishonest like this so I felt the need to speak out about it to try to take some of their viewers away. That's the only way I could see to do it because nobody else would care. You know, I don't want it to me. That's dirty. That's you're a bitch. If you're doing that, you're lying to people and you're taking their money and you're providing them with bullshit fucking explanations and you're making it actually, it's not just about losing money on this. It's about a complete lack of understanding of how any of this works. They're never going to be able to make money if they listen to these people. So that's kind of the way I see it. I don't, I don't, think, I don't think there's a legal recourse, really. Um, I don't think there should be. I just want them to, I want them to organically just die out. And we're already seeing that 
literally. Wink, wink. So that's my opinion on it now. I don't know what, what you think about that, but I just don't see it, you know. They're not investment advisors. You know, they don't work. They don't, they don't do this professionally. We know that. But that doesn't mean that you should listen to them, <laughs> yeah. you know. And, right. and the big thing about those boiler rooms is that they they styled themselves or were professional bio- advisors. They had some sort of financial credentials and then were going into these hot pressure sh- cells on people. And that's what got them in trouble most of the times. Well, yeah, because they were now pump and dump. You know, they were operating pump and dumps, essentially. Yeah. I mean, and that's another. Yeah. That we're talking about another classification of fraud there i mean we're talking straight fraud so that's a different thing we could talk about i don't want to now because i need do need to run soon but north star i want to you i want to allow you to respond i did did. yeah yeah i did want to address one more thing um just to kind of piggyback on the the ethan phone call yeah you know it just kind of dawned on me like okay focusing on these these influencers that are that are making the videos and it just made me think like um with the rhetoric that's used by these guys and and you can Mm -hmm. clearly see they're hostile angry aggressive and all that it's like um should there be some kind of focus put on like the followers because uh you know we know obviously we know how we feel about about the influencers themselves but the followers it 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 creeps me out like how possibly dangerous and, these people actually oh be. yeah you know go ahead why, go that's go ahead also tied to the influencer as well so yeah. go I'm ahead corax also, also tied no also tied ahead. to the influencer too and well yeah that's i why think it's, it's something covering. it's something that should should be monitored as well you know and oh i'm sure they are i i i bet they are because you know what there's overlap between yeah the people who these these last like the pulled out uh like ulti- these um these these most extreme people that are left and the 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 kind of people who uh did the january 6th attack and i'm not making this up i'm not kidding and i'm not trying to be funny here with this there actually is overlap between those groups not so much in amc not so much in amc but more so in like mmtlp i think in bed bath and beyond maybe in amc probably too but there are some yeah so that i think that is a concern i don't know if it's my place to do that but anyway we'll go ahead corax what do you got maybe there's a maybe there's a level of of recruitment that's happening within these these ranks well you know, i mean that was something, all these different stocks but they're kind of the same people that was something that was brought up in the uh in the in the folding ideas video with the you know the this is financial advice where a lot of these right. Yeah. Yes, the one where he suggest, yeah. he said that a lot of these political politico types on both sides, the extreme left and the extreme right, got into these Reddit spaces and started indoctrinating these people. Right. And that's why I think you've right. seen a lot yeah. of these people that have that have hung on are these extreme ideologues, and it only feeds into this sort of cult mentality that they are here fighting the man and they're going to bring the system down. And you know, you get people like Ethan who has never done anything productive probably with his life. And from the phone calls, unhinged heard, is unhinged, unhinged, possibly dangerous individual. Yes. And he has a bunch of people that are exactly like that. Like I make fun of number one cuck and he likes to put on this persona. Like <laughs> I, I follow the rules and I, and I, and I do, and I would never break the rules and everything yet. He'll make violent threats against people. He'll go and insult these people using hostile language. He'll direct his followers to harass other people. He'll direct fault his followers to try and get the, get, you know, file police reports and stuff like this to try and get authorities to harass these people who've done nothing other than simply Mm -hmm. report on the behaviors that they've been doing. They'll go through their social media profile. They'll try and get, he'll try and get into their personal lives and it's all cult tactics. It's, it's that, uh, that Scientology thing of, you know, any means necessary, fair game. They they call it fair. game. If someone is speaking out against the Scientology, you are free to use any means necessary to shut them up. And that's exactly what, these Project Popcorn people do. It's exactly what, you know, Morantz will try and do. It's exactly what these other people, in, especially in the Bed Bath and Beyond and MMTLP community will do. Any means necessary. They are fair game. Shut them up. 
Yeah. For sure. Um, Put them on a list. Get them on a watch list. You, well, I mean, uh, they have that too with Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> they have a suppressive persons list. Oh, God. That's ridiculous. I mean, and that that's that's directly from Scientology. And, and not only Scientology, but, you know, other cult religions too. Um, what is it? Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses does that. Um, yeah. Let's see. Um, I'm looking for. Well, actually, I mean, do you guys ever? Do you guys ever fear for your safety or anything? You guys get any really weird private <laughs> emails from people? Yeah, I have. Not really. Oh, you have, Scott. Like, I, I yeah, have I have. Big generalized threats. And to be fair, when when uh, when John came after me, there was a moment when I thought about it. But like these, for the most part, like. I would be more worried about the MMTLP or the, you know, Bed Bath and Beyond people because probably very highly motivated. But also, the Project Popcorn also there's people, a difference between really. in the moment too. Yeah, in the moment versus some premeditated, organized yeah. type stuff. You know, mm -hmm. I, I in a couple of these. Channels, I, I to be honest, I, I, some of them, yeah, definitely. I, I, mm -hmm. The thing that I don't fear from Ethan is that it's clear that he does not have the money to mobile himself and like that's you know and and the other the other saving grace too I mean, these, these guys these guys derive their power from their followers same you know? same yeah they do one. they do so i'm not really directly afraid of them and i think most of their most of their followers are kind of pussies to be honest mm. yeah and it's not like scientology where they'll go out and hire a bunch of lawyers or they'll get these private eyes to come harass me or things like that they don't have yeah. the mm -hmm. They blew all that money by right, names at right. the top. Yeah. So the, hopefully they and, never win any fucking lawsuits or anything. So they have the well, money. Not well, that. it hasn't happened yet. Also, the people that that's one of the yeah. big things about this movement is you'll notice a lot of how they try and attack people as they dox them. They do all stuff that they can do from their computer at home. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, oh yeah, they're armchair yeah. activists. They're slacktivists. Uh -huh. Yep. Because because that's how it's. But there's been out. people that have showed up. There's people that have been show that have showed up in real life, though. Well, I you mean, know, for Adam Aaron, work, because he people's... shows up at yeah, at, at, because they've been near. Well, people. and they it's a bit easier for them to do it, or like with Finra. But for the most part, most of these people, how they got into the air quotes movement was clicking a buy button. Do you think they're getting out of their fucking chair to go? <laughs> <laughs> no. Right. Yeah. Well, well true. One thing with Morantz being doxxed and people like showing up at his work. From what he's claimed, people even showing up to his house. Nice. You think That's on the cool inverse of side of that, you think on the inverse side of that, having them, like, if you've ever talked to him, he's really adamant about, tell me your name. You know, just give out this sensitive information. Oh, yeah. Well, he, well, I think that's trying to get to know me. He says that he, he says that he, um, you know, he says that he doesn't uh, trust anybody who won't show their face. Which is a pretty good way of cutting people that's off. A tactic. Like, that's just a tactic. I mean, hey, yes, it's definitely a tactic. It's, it's well, that's what I'm saying. Identify you. I'm trying to no, identify no, it's, yeah, the no, I don't think it's that meltdowners. Even. Yeah, I don't think it's even that because, like, first, it's a way to cut you off. If you don't identify yourself, then I'm not engaging with you. That's true. And that's on true. the other end, which is garbage, though. To me, yeah, exactly what he did with me. As soon as I showed my face, unrelated to him. He was, it, it was a, it was a means to, you know, and it's the reason why I hadn't shown my face for a long time, because I know that cuts down on what they can use to try and attack you. Not that I care what they, they say yeah. about me. I can no, that away. No, of course not. But it yeah. makes them have to deal with my argument and they don't like that. No. Yeah. And I, and it's, it's why I decided that I wasn't going to. And, and also I, I just, you know, it, it is to protect myself and my family, but also I don't, there's no reason you don't need to see me. If you if you if you can't listen to somebody, okay. So also all those people, if you ever catch them listening to a radio again, slap them across the face and tell them, what are you doing? Listen to it. Don't trust that person. You can't see them. Okay. So that's that's stupid. Secondly, I don't want the distraction. I don't want that element of it. I don't want to have to constantly be you know swatting away you know it, personal insults on my appearance or whatever else or the background or anything else. Plus, I don't have a camera, so there's a practical reason. But also, it, mainly because it doesn't matter, and I knew it would piss people off. 
because, oh, well, why don't you show your face? Why don't you just to listen to what I'm saying and go look for yourself and you'll see that I'm right, that we've been right the whole time. They can't do that. But it gives them a nice way to say, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to dismiss you because you're not real. It, it, it depersonifies, you know, the thing, which, um, you know, it's a sign of uh, maybe less uh, critical thinking. Right. So real quick here. We've talked about cult a lot, and I we looked at this Stephen Hassan book before, Combating Mind, Cult Mind Control. But um, it it really is crazy here how how much how much of this that's put laid out in this book, which is from like the late '80s, uh, applies directly here. So it's talking about what's it like to be in a cult, you know, talking about the doctrine becoming reality. The doctrine is reality. There's no room here you know uh for for any 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 anybody to interpret things you know the, the way that they want to or to, to to seek any type of other truth outside of the narrative right members are uh members were told that they would become possessed like that like they would become possessed um if they left the group right the group was a wonderful tool for phobia indoctrination. Okay, so we've seen this. We saw this back in 2021. If you sell now, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. It will be a lifelong regret. You'll never have this opportunity. And do you really want to be one of the, those people who's on the outside looking in saying, that could have been me? The you know, one is the elitist mentality, I think, too. It is. Have this whole yeah, we have so. the information that no one has we know absolutely how the operates they're an elite core they're the ones who are going to save humanity um the group will over individual will this is a no-brainer i hold for you you hold for me the one that's enforced yes enforced on a daily basis um in any group that qualifies as a destructive cult thinking of oneself or for oneself is wrong huh Ding, 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 ding. Sounds familiar. If, if you, you sell before the rest of us, you're a traitor. Now, we have heard also the, some of these guys, just in fairness, they say, well, if you have to sell, then go ahead and sell. But it's always with like a bit of, bit of, little bit of bitchiness in their voice. You know, they don't like it. Individually, individuality even is like bad. Was, even what was pointed out in, in, the, in the folding ideas video. I'm sorry, I don't use his his. Uh, also, uh, Mr. Olson's real name because like um, I, I just know him as folding ideas first. So That's fine. I, that I don't I don't know. Like, uh, price price fixing. We, you don't talk about how high the stock could possibly go because then you're, you know, and mm -hmm. you'll exit at because then you're fixing the price. Right. Um, yeah, I, I don't I don't know. I mean, in my mind, it's more like they get anchored to a price that they've been that has been suggested and they won't let go of it so they think it's worth a hundred thousand dollars because that's what was talked about on reddit in 2021 there's no basis for that for a million dollars no basis for that for boston for sure. yeah ah, ridiculous strict obedience modeling the leader i mean we see this too i mean literally they're literally sitting there you know uh, streaming for eight hours a day and more intense and you see it get more and more intense on that one the smaller the group gets like Morantz is a key. Oh yeah. Bed, bath and beyond his, those people in his discord are some of the worst people I've ever seen in anything. I mean, they are some really fucking just despicable people, deplorables. Like I'll use that word. They're deplorable. One that's brought up on here and I can't think of it. Kyoto, whatever the Japanese guy, he like, I've never seen somebody with as much manipulative shit up his sleeve as that little cunt. I mean, it's a bizarre bizarre one here I, I i point out is the changes in time orientation remember when they did all those they have always had these spaces calls like amc used to have like almost these 24-hour spaces calls yeah. i've only heard about them i've never seen them back in the heyday but they are always doing these spaces calls and mmtlp it's big they have a bunch of spaces called this regimentation about make sure to get out your letters make sure you're talking to your congress make sure you're doing all this outreach up because they need to control you and that changes in time orientation and the regimentation of people's lives is how the cult controls you they take your free time away so you can't think about anything else 
talking about um, the apocalypse being just around the corner. We've seen that over and over. Squeeze next week. Oh, it's coming soon. Is it socks going to be crazy next week? It's the same thing. Some say they're preventing the apocalypse. Others merely believe they will survive it. I mean, whatever. In this case, you know, if we want the apocalypse and we're going to be prepared for it. Um, when you're bit, when you're kept extremely busy, and in, in this sense, it would be when you're kept when your mind is kept occupied, and you see all these videos for days, weeks, and months, every com- becomes blurred. You don't even know. It's wow, I've wasted three years in this already. So yeah, and then uh, also, you know, the future is a time when you'll be rewarded, right? That's when the, the goal is coming. But you get people that leave. You get people that do leave. They, you know, but those people that leave. They the the old predictions that were wrong they die with those people that leave. So when new people come in, they don't even know that you predicted this thing was going to happen months ago and it didn't. But because you're new, you just hear the new prediction. So it's insidious that way. Um, and of course, no way out. There's no legitimate reason for leaving. And we hear this more and more as things get more and more desperate for people. But going back here, emotional highs and lows, of course you know, and manipulate manipulation through fear and guilt. All of these things are, are straight up out of this cult, you know, handbook basically about, you know, helping someone escape a cult. Um, I recognize that this was the case a long time ago. So I've had that resource there. Um, now having said that, um, I just wanted to kind of run through that. It's been a while since we've been through that, but, um, I do need to close this stream and run, but I do want to thank North Star um, for being here and Noisy Corax for being here and uh, just do a round robin here of final thoughts. Noisy Corax, go first. Um, And you can do it. Hey, why don't you start up a stream after this? You all keep going, uh, you know? (laughs) I, I don't know. I, I've got dinner on the mind too right now. Yeah, but like I, I think we did a pretty good job of of covering most of the stuff that we that we were talking about, and that was a pretty good wrap up. And and the only thing I would say is I I'd recommend reading that book. It breaks down point by point, you know how cults operate, and a cult doesn't have to be this big group of people. One of the key things that I took away right. from that book was a cult can be a two party affair, a pimp and the hooker that he manipulates. That's sure. Cult. Yeah. It's a cult of personality. So here's what it looks like in case anybody, you know, wants to see, uh, you know, just how anything is spelled there, but that's what we were just looking from North star. You got the last word, my friend. <clears throat> um, I don't have a whole lot other than, uh, you know, I, I did want to, reiterate again about Ethan and Project Popcorn and it should just be interesting to see how it all plays out. It will. Any possible future court cases filed by another set of <laughs> investors. We'll see. Yeah. That's all yeah. I really got. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Well thanks for um popping in. You know, anytime you're always welcome when we're here. It's open. Yeah. Any any time. Thank you. Both of you gentlemen, thank you. And I will be, uh, you know, moving on with my evening um, very shortly. I feel like it would not be proper here to uh, uh, not to look at one of these. Well, that obviously oh, that. No, it's a Donahue George video. <laughs> Take cover. <laughs> yeah. It, this is a good way to keep an ear to the ground, as they say, you know, um, as far as like what what the idiots are saying. He only put out one video today. He only put out one video today. About thirty-four trillion to take away from the a hundred trillion. Of course. In unclosed naked. Of course, stars. of course. So we'll we'll let this one play out, and then uh, we'll close it down. So, thanks, guys, and I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stop it. I'm not gonna interject. Uh, I'm just gonna let it play. So this will be. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> See you guys. Purposes only. Anything I say is my opinion. Please don't make any financial decision based on anything I say in these videos. That being said, hit the like button, subscribe button, all that YouTube album stuff so you get the videos I put them out. See what I'm thinking, see man analyzing that data. But like I tell every day, the data they release us is false. So man, it gives a false narrative of the market so we can make bad 
trading decisions. Listen, Citadel Securities, Ken Griffin, is <laughs> complaining about the national debt. And this is just my opinion. I think this that is absolutely crazy. I believe he's deflecting. He's wanna he wants to take the attention off of the banks and financial institutions that have over a hundred trillion dollars in debt. Okay? The global debt of these financial institutions, I'm talking about globally, is like three hundred and five or probably more, probably more now. Three hundred and five trillion dollars is a global debt. But Ken Griffin wants to talk about the thirty-four trillion dollar US debt. The thing is, they have so many shares sold, not yet purchased. They have so many derivatives that they will never ever cover. The banking industry, in my opinion, is hanging on by their fingernails, and Ken Griffin wants to focus on the U.S. debt. Ken Griffin knows that Citadel is in trouble, and they hope that the SEC, the DOJ, the FBI continues not to enforce the rules of the market. Because that's the only way that Citadel can win, in my opinion. The only way Citadel can win is by our regulatory agencies, our law enforcement agencies, not enforcing the rules of the market. You guys know that Citadel was fined for violating short selling rules because this is what they do. And of course, they didn't have to plead guilty. They probably made trillions of dollars and was only fined $7 million. It is one gigantic Ponzi scheme. Okay? That's what they are running on the American people. That is my analysis of everything I'm seeing when it comes to Citadel Securities and other financial institutions. Shares sold, not yet purchased, is like the biggest scam I've ever seen in my life. Three years ago, I didn't even know it even existed. But we have been forced to educate ourselves on the stock market over the last three years. <laughs> we really had no choice. They was robbing and stealing from us, and they forced us to educate Ooh. ourselves. The bottom yeah. line is this. Um, I'm going to have Ken to go Griffin ahead and sort of complaining disagree with about you there. our national debt in order to take the attention of the hundreds of trillions of debt of the financial institutions. What you just said. But. I believe is one of the most my insanely opinion, idiotic things I have ever heard. comes crashing down when the music stops and there's not enough chairs for everybody. The bad actors, Naked Shorting, AMC, and GME, and, and other stocks, because they're not just Naked Shorting, AMC, and GME. They're, the focus is just on AMC and GME. When the music stops and there's not enough chairs for everybody, some big dogs are going to fall. I mean, that's really is that the what you're line. saying. Is that anyway, what you're saying? Anyway, please do some comments. Tell me what you think. Why? What is Ken Griffin huh? talking about thirty-four trillion in government debt when financial institutions have over a hundred trillion dollars in debt? Anyway, have a great day. God bless, and I appreciate y'all on this journey with me. What the hell? Oh my God! No way, yeah, yeah. You can't kill Michael Myers! It's impossible! This is what happens when you work to change things. You're being a little bitch! What do you fucking want from me? Get off my dick! You know, if you don't understand the situation, it's better sometimes not to speak and just be proven a complete imbecile in the matter. <laughs> okay, so...
Man, fuck you. I think you a bitch. You understand what I'm saying? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? Or are you saying? Are you saying it? Be, what are you saying? Huh? First they think you're crazy, then they fight you. I don't know. I don't really think that's the case. And then all of a sudden, you change the world. You know something? Like for real, <laughs> little D's, you better get ready for navigating this because they didn't teach this in Harvard. <laughs> get ready for this motherfucker because this is the depression 2.0. This is a digital depression. This is going to be so fucked up. It's not even going to be funny. How much has almond milk taken you down on the evolutional scale? Like, dude, like fucking come on.